Testing one, two, three, four. My name is Walker. It was a sunny morning when Tatum first opened his eyes. The soft light of the morning creeping in beyond his window pane. He thought to himself, do I wear a shirt underneath my vest today or do I just fucking go for it? He opted for the latter. It was successful. Day one. I'm all business up here, you know, very serious. <laughs> Speaking of bugs, I should submit uh, submit an issue on GitHub for whatever this bite is on my ankle, because it look look at that bad boy. And Carla told me I just had cankles. <laughs> she shamed me for my, I do have very thick ankles, it's true. One might even call them cankles, but would you look at that? <laughs> Your ankles always look like that, they're so thick. No, no you do not. My foot's not falling off yet, though, so I feel like that's a good sign. And thank you, Susie, for giving me whatever that magical stick was that she smeared on there. Mosquito milk. Didn't even know you could milk a mosquito. I learn new things every day. It Does that work? I feel like that's going to attract more bugs to my ankle if I smear honey on it. That seems like, I don't know, it seems like some Costa Rican trick that they're like, oh yeah, put some honey on it, that'll help. So many memes. I love it. That is a dank meme. <laughs> it's funny because it's true. <laughs> no, Jerome, I will not be taking that down. Janet finds it really offensive. Come one, come all to the open source stage. We will begin shortly. Perhaps in the meantime, I'll narrate more of Tatum's life. When he reached the stage, he found the vest was chafing slightly. <laughs> good, good to go live. I'm ready to go. Let's do it. Good morning, welcome, Costa Rica day three. It has gone by too quickly already. Perhaps we can extend it slightly longer. Hello to everybody in the audience. Hello to everybody on the live stream. As always, you are here in our hearts, even if you are not here in person. Uh, we're gonna start off day three with a speech or discussion with yourself that I've been quite excited for. Uh, it's Noster Build. If you go to noster.build on your browser, you will find a collection of the majority of images, memes, GIFs, videos that have been shared on Noster. Uh, one of the first questions I had when I was using Noster was, 
how do I make images happen? Like, okay, I can't just upload it in line. Uh, and then found Noster Build. And since then, there's been quite a few developments that you've gone through. Um, I'm sure you'll go through all of those in lovely detail. Uh, but I think this is one of the amazing things about this Noster ecosystem is that there's a problem and somebody just steps up and solves it. And then everyone else in the community is happy to say, wow, this person solved my problem, go check them out, send them some sats, and this value for value economy just keeps growing. So without further ado, please give a warm welcome to Noster Build, and thank you for all that you do, for letting us post these memes. Cheers. Thank you all very much. Oh, this is great. This is, uh, this is a lifetime kind of experience for me, so I'm super excited to be here. I'm Noster.Build. I created the image uploader, Noster.Build, that a lot of you use. I'm gonna be talking about content and moderation today. I think one thing right off is some people are like, well, the whole purpose is not to moderate content, right? Why are you even talking about moderating it? Because, I mean, in all honesty, and you'll see what we go through here is you have to moderate it, right? You can't get a thousand uploads of the same image. You can't get illegal stuff, right? There's certain countries that ban certain things, right? So there's certain things that you kind of have to moderate. It's not the moderation you're thinking of, but it is, you know, so that's kind of why we're calling it content moderation. Quick agenda, I mean, we have 30 minutes and I really wanna open this up more like a discussion on some of the points. Um, this isn't me trying to tell you about how to moderate content, I don't know crap about it. I've been doing this for less than, almost three months exactly to the day. And so it's, I, I, I receive feedback from all of you, right? Everything in Nostra.Build has been from feedback from you all. So that's really what this session is for, is so we can get feedback, not for me to tell you what to do or what I'm doing. So I'm not a big influencer like Walker or Will or Jack. I'm, I'm pretty new to all this, right? So I, I figure since I'm hosting a lot of your profile pictures and memes and all that, I can give you a short overview about who I am. Um, born and raised in the US. Uh, I've lived in Oklahoma, New Mexico, Florida, California, Brazil. Uh, spent a lot of time in Japan. I can speak sport Portuguese and Spanish. Conversationally, I can get by. Uh, I have a wife and kids. Be married 15 years in two months. Um, <laughs> I do not have a religion, but I believe that, you know, there's something because we're here, right? There's some sort of unique energy that happens, right? Degree in computer science, I work in technology, I have a day job, um, and a passion for the arts. If you've been to my site, you see I, I'm, I really enjoy promoting the creators and the artists. I am sick of politics as a whole. I believe both sides have evolved to the extreme worst to what they can be, right? And ultimately, they're all liars sleeping with each other. I mean, I'm just sick of them, right? As I think most of us are. I've hated the banks as, since a child, right? I've always just hated the banks. Like, they would charge mom, like, $29, $20 bounce check on like a $6, you know, back in the 80s, and you know, you're not rich, you're writing $6 checks, and they, and, charge you $20 on like a $4 check, right? That pissed me off. And then I found out they cash the big checks first. Even if the little checks came in earlier, they'll wait and they cash the big checks first so you can have more bounce checks. Like, that's it. And I'm a Bitcoiner. So about Nostra.Build's mission, so you can have a general idea of what our, you know, focuses are. Number one, first and foremost, is to make Noster adoption, uploading, and sharing content as easy as possible, right? Number two is I want to align Noster, uh, align to Noster, right? And all the apps, every, you know, all the projects out there, I want to align as much as possible, right? Be part of the ecosystem. I want to promote and drive Noster building and content creation. That's the like, main purpose if you go to my, the main Noster.build site. And I'm, I'm a big, um, I, I'm a heavily against ads. And I'm gonna go into that later. I mean, a lot of people are like, oh, it's just a AdSense or Google AdSense and I just ignore it or whatever, but I'll tell you why I don't like ads. And then, uh, you know, I have to, you know, maintain Noster.Build's growth and I, you know, have to monetize through accounts, donations, tips, um, types of files we upload. So, I mean, I'm not doing a whole lot of that now. I have accounts and I get tips and donations, but um, my point is I, I don't want Noster.Build to die. So, a fun metric slide, just so you guys can see kind of how we're doing. Um, 
That's, we get roughly 2,500 unique uploads a day. We get over 100 video uploads a day. Um, currently, we have 100,000, I mean, we three months and we have over 110,000 total uploads. Um, I've sold over 100 accounts in this in the last two or three weeks. Um, I think there is a big bubble of people waiting for accounts because it's kind of like going down now, but that's okay. Um, and of those accounts, there have been 2,300 uploads, which makes me very happy. I was listening to NVK yesterday, and there's something extremely satisfying about seeing people actually use your product, right? It's just, it's, it, I can't explain it. Um, you see the graph here? I pulled that, I think, just Friday before I came. So that's basically the graph. And you, just like um, uh, Will mentioned, I think it was Will, Japan's a pretty major user in general. Um, they are with us, Nasu.build2, number three. Um, China's number two, top 10 there. Okay, so I am not the only image uploader on, for Noster, right? There are a lot of different image uploaders, and that is the beauty of Noster, is you can choose your client, you can choose your image uploader, you can choose, you can build your own image uploader. I'm gonna teach you how to do that at the end of this. Um, but that is really the beauty of Noster, right? Um, so this is the order of, I, well, not even, I mean, the first two. This is kind of the order that I would recommend or, you know, people go about it. So if you have any interest or any kind of basic technical skills or whatever, I recommend building your own. It's four or five bucks a month to host. You need a little bit of, you know, need to log into a server and, you know, write a few lines of code. But it's not, it's not um, rocket science, right? You can... You can log into a server and write a couple lines of code, you can build a, your own. If you don't want to deal with that, I recommend going with a supported Noster type upload service. And there's a few. Um, we have nosterimage.com um, that's run by Henry, and, and um, he, he is a huge supporter of Noster, right? Aligns closely to Noster. Void.cat, ran by Kieran. Also, it's the, the main back end to snort.social and also uh, doesn't support ads. None of these three, by the way, support ads. Um, and also Noster focused. And then Noster.build. There might be more out there that are Noster focused. I don't know about them, but free to use those ones too. Some of the pros to those is they're free, they're cheap, they're Noster focused, right? They, we work directly with the devs. You guys can ping us anytime, right? We, we're always trying to provide, you know, re feature requests and all that. Um, you know, still, it's a single point of failure, limited control, right? I technically can almost do whatever I want with your content. And then a third option that some people use and, and would seem like an easy option is like an imager or a tinner, right? Pros are they're free and cheap. Cons, they're big corporate owned. They do support ads, right? Um, often inundated with ads. Um, no dev support or contact on Noster. You know, they, they're not building anything for Noster, right? Uh, you still don't have control of your content. content. So, with that, I'm going to pivot a little. My wife's recommendation was to make sure I clarify what I'm going to talk about for each slide because I kind of jump all over the place. Going off of that whole kind of imager ad thing, I wanted to, to talk a little bit about AI and then AI in ads, right? And so, the, the kind of happy AI slide is this, and, and a lot of you probably know this, but, you know, it's in base. I, I worked at a one of the largest AI companies in the world for four years doing training, so I, I kind of saw under the covers some of this. Um, but there's a lot of good that AI does. I mean, most of the art that we're seeing, all these purple nostriches and stuff, a lot of it is created by AI, right? Um, I mean, AI is in everything from snail mail, like reading addresses, right, machine learning, to traffic lights, to, you know, new things like ChatGPT4, um, you know, it's literally in pretty much everything we do now, right? So it, it's finding cancer, right? When doctors used to just look at a few pictures and think, oh, okay, that, that's probably not it. AI can look through millions of pictures and say, that's a 98% chance it is. Farming. AI can see the weeds and it sprays the weed poison on the weeds. It tells what a weed looks like as opposed to the plant. It's amazing. And they're doing all this today. This is all today. That's a cool thing about AI. So the, the kind of weird, scary thing is the ads. When you start mixing AI with ads, it gets a little weird, as some of you may have noticed, right? You're like, wait, is Facebook listening to me? How did it know that I like that or whatever? And I remember when ads first came out, they didn't click at all, right? They were offering me stuff that I, I Googled like a few days ago that I already bought or whatever. Over the years, 
you know, they, they got better. And uh, you all have probably noticed the ads are getting better, right? And that's all AI, and that's what AI does. It learns about you over the years. It is stupid at first, but over the years, it learns and it literally learns, right? So a couple, I mean, I jumped in, I never go to Facebook. I, because of this, I uninstalled the Facebook app and the WhatsApp. I have WhatsApp, but I uninstalled Facebook because I thought it was listening to me. And I still went to Facebook to pull a couple ads for examples, and I shit you not, like, look at the colors on that tennis shoe. Those are Noster colors. I do not, I like Adidas, but I never search for it. I was like, how does it know, right? Is that a coincidence? I don't know. Purple, I would never buy purple and yellow striped tennis shoes, but whatever. And then I, I say, okay, let me scroll down to the next ad. Little uh, young girl riding a bike. Literally the day before, I took my daughter to the bike shop and we we're looking at bikes. So is it a coincidence? Maybe. Is there such thing as too many coincidences? Probably not, right? I recommend a couple movies. You should see these movies. I highly recommend them. It's gonna, it's gonna show you the light on what AI is doing with ads. Um, Cambridge Analytica was scary, right? If you remember that whole event. In, in very short, what they did is they created a kind of fun app, right, in Facebook that basically pulled, created a, a user profile of kind of, you know, what you like and, you know, what direction you potentially could vote and these kind of things. But it also, grabbed all the friends of friends and created profiles of them. So ultimately had a database of probably tens and tens of thousands of people and profiles like, is this person likely to change their vote? You know, does this person, you know, believe in abortion? Is this person, you know, believe in guns, whatever. Then it would target memes and ads to these demographics to persuade them to vote a certain way, right? And I saw that as like, that is brilliantly disgusting, right? Same thing with Social Dilemma, and, and I don't want to go into it. It talks about all the AI and ads behind the social media platforms, and it has people working that had worked for Google and, you know, Facebook come on and, and talk about that. And I mean, one quote, and then I can go to the next slide from the Social Dilemma, is like, YouTube for kids, they don't have child psychologists and child trainers focusing on your child's education when they're watching the YouTube for kids, right? They're trying to sell your kid toys. That's their goal, right? They're not trying to educate your kids. Time to pivot. That's it with ads and AI. Let's talk a little bit about IP address, addresses and tracking in general. Um, people ask me a lot, can you, can you track my IP address? Do you know where I live? And, and the answer is, is basically yes, I can track your IP address. I don't know where you live, but I can track it down to the city. Um, and, and it's not just me. Everybody can. Every app that you use, every thing that you use on the internet, that person can track your IP address, right? It, it, it's a piece of cake. It's easy. So, so yes, every, all of us can. Any, any, any of us hosting anything can track your IP address, right? Now, the, the first phase of tracking is we can really only track it to the city. Um, we can't really track to the house. That is all blocked by like the ISPs like Comcast and AT&T, right? They have all the address information, the specific home address, but I mean, they can be you know, hacked, they can be, they can have insiders leaking information, um, you know, uh, the government can subpoena them, whatever, right? So then there's another layer of security, you can get a VPN, and that's another layer, so it may look like someone's coming from, you know, Timbuktu and they're down the street, right? But again, you have to trust that VPN provider, you have to, you know, trust that they're not hacked or gonna share information or whatever. So in, in short, yes, all of us on the, the, you know, all of us hosting a service can track your IP addresses. Um, it's not easy really to get your house IP address. And for regular people seeing your pictures, they cannot. I mean, that's not, sometimes you might get scared, if I upload a picture, can someone else see where, where my IP address is? And the answer is no, not, not easily. I mean, unless they're really trying to, you know, find you, but they won't get it directly from the picture unless they like hack into my account and then they hack into, or hack into Nostra.build and then they hack into Comcast and then they can find you which some people can do. Um, I, I wanted to give an example of kind of how easy it is and what I can see there at the bottom. So a couple weeks ago, like I didn't even know I could get this information. I knew that I could get basic IP information that hit Nostra.build. So um, I went into one of my logs and sure enough, you can see in the bottom left there, not only I was like kind of pleasantly scared, surprised that not only, again, I blocked some of them out so you, I, I don't dox some people, but not only do you get the IP addresses, you get exactly what file they uploaded. So that's good for me, 
because if I get a file that's illegal that needs to be researched, you know, I can easily, can easily track that. The second thing is I didn't do that. That's automatic from my Apache server. I'm not trying to track. I mean, I, I think it's good and I think I should have it, um, but I'm not purposely creating a program to go just tracking IP addresses. That's how easy and standard it is. My server just does that. I'll take that IP address, I put it into any web IP address finder, and you can see that person is, for my glasses, I think it's like Baltimore, Maryland. That's basically all I can get on those IP addresses. If, again, if I handed it over to authorities for illegal content, they could probably get a lot more. Pivot again. So that's it for IP addresses. Um, and this, this I'm actually, I'd, I'd like to get some feedback, is a lot of people are talking about, like, why are you on Amazon, right? I, I'm on AWS now, you know, Amazon's the enemy. Um, we have some other options. People have talked about, like, Filecoin, Storage, Day. these are decentralized type platforms. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm working on, again, like, we, we've only been here for, like, less than three months, but, um, you know, the goal is, would be great to be on some level of decentralized platform. Filecoin and Storage J and Amazon, they're all shit coins. This is kind of the problem. Um, and if you look at that, their shit coin graphs, Amazon's the best performing shit coin, and Amazon's the, the most flexible shit coin. And Amazon is scales the easiest, right? And it's easiest to work with. So that's one reason why I'm doing them. Um, another is, and I thought a good analogy, it's like, you know, someone is saying, why are you using Amazon, right? They, they can just take you down, or that, you know, that, I'm like, well, would you use the enemy's gun to save your life? You would, right? So I, I say let's get started, let's get going with whatever we can, and once we get our feet on the ground, we can kind of evolve from there. But I guess a question for you all is, what, what do you, anyone have any thoughts about better places to host or about Filecoin? So I was talking a lot last night, Storage J is, is a legitimate solution. I, I went to Storage J, I uploaded some files there, it is decentralized. Any thoughts? We okay with AWS for now? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, my thought on Storage Labs is that, I, you know, I think they put a lot of work uh, into, you know, the actual infrastructure and architecture of being able to, um, you know, get people to uh, lease out their hard drive space uh, in order to uh, host files for people. It's unfortunate that they had to mint a shitcoin, uh, mm -hmm. you know, during the ICO bubble and that that's how they create the incentive layer. And, you know, I kind of wish that they would adopt Lightning because I think that would be super awesome if you could run a storage node, host files, and get paid over mm -hmm. the Lightning network to do that. So, uh, you know, I think that there, there's something there to be said about, uh, you know, have it, like, decentralizing storage and being able to, you know, have people kind of contribute to build like a storage network. I just, you know, I want to be, I want a better incentive model for making that happen. Um, you know, torrent is one way you can put magnet links, um, but like it really depends on like at least in my view the the purpose of the file, yeah. right? If you're yeah. hosting pictures of cats, or Amazon is perfectly shit fine. Memes or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I mean the problem with storage, J, Filecoin, uh, APFS is that like it's like a big like lie kind of thing, mm -hmm. like because you have a hash of the thing you want, right? But like you have no certainty that it's still being hosted by the people who claim to host it, mm, right? It, you'll probably yeah, yeah. disappear. Right, and that, that's one reason why I like AWS, because you know it's... You know. Well, you can also just like go old school, right? I mean, you can have a server yeah. with all the files in it, yeah. and, and just use, say, Cloudflare, you know, the spooks, as a means of like lowering the bandwidth problem. But you're still hosting the file on a right. real hard drive, right? But you use, you know, a caching service as the way of, of distributing the file without being murdered on bandwidth, right? Right. Um, there is also a lot of uh, uh, like bare metal you can get that's unmetered. Mm. Actually, most bare metal is unmetered. They'll give you one gigabit connection, and that's it. I mean, does it scale to like a billion people? Absolutely not. But yeah. does it scale to a few hundred thousand people on the beginning of something? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, so, so yes, once, once I feel like we can come to like that agreement, at the same time though, like torrent and stuff like that, that's a lot of dev work for, for me. Like I have a day job and kids and stuff. So like I'm on weekend and I, I can barely program PHP. So like torrent would be a little work, but I think that would be like one of the better solutions too, right? Like if we could all decide on a platform like that, then let's do it, right? Let's move towards that. 
Yeah, I mean, the, the, the issue with torrent is that you end up at the same place, right? You're hold, hoping that somebody someone's going to host is, it, is, exactly. is seeding it, right? Yeah, it, it's it's okay to have servers. Yeah, yeah, and and also I think people get mixed up with the term, and I, I like to call these services. Um, not decent, like even people will say, oh, AWS has S3 and it's decentralized, right? Because it's all over. They have regions and decentralized. And I think um, decentralized and distributed, I think people are kind of mixing these terms quite a bit. And I think, for, for, you know, for everyone out there, I think distributed, I think Amazon is very distributed, right? They're probably one of, they're almost probably more distributed than maybe Storage Day or Filecoin in, in many aspects. Storage Day is distributed. They're all, they have distributed infrastructure, but they're, they're still very centralized. Um, you know, if you look at something like Noster or Bitcoin, they're decentralized and distributed, right? So there is no throat to choke or, you know, one person that does everything, right? It's completely decentralized. So I think the term gets mixed up. So I am thinking about this. I'm going to move on, but I'm absolutely thinking about this, and I appreciate any feedback. Um, and then once I think the community comes to a decision, um, I, you know, we can move in that direction. Okay. Everyone's favorite part. Let's talk a little bit about erotica and gray areas. <laughs> this is what I have to deal with multiple times a day, right? And, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not going to put anything up here that hopefully doesn't embarrass anyone, but I, I do want people to see kind of like, again, we do have to moderate to a certain level, right? So let's go through a few examples. And I'm curious if you guys, you know, uh, think, is this, should I, basically, I got to decide, do I keep it the link and let it be seen and view all, so anyone can just log in and see it? Do I keep the link and hide it from view all, so it's still there, but just people can't, I don't promote it on my site? Or do I delete the link, right? Is it, you know, uh, vulgar or, you know, just too much for me to want to host kind of thing, right? Not, not putting Nusser.build in a good light, right? So let's go through. Gyno dolls, and I made all my pronunciations on everything are probably wrong, so I'm just going to say what I think it sounds like. Gyno dolls and animo, anime wifey, right? They're obviously very passionate. I, a lot of you may have seen their stuff go through, and some of them think you think they're spam, but I follow them. And they have, you know, it's, it's, it's very interesting. I mean, gyno dolls is a business. You can buy those dolls, right? So that's a legit business. Um, and they're fake. They're not real people, right? So that's something else to kind of think about when you're hosting stuff like that. Like anime waifu, right? That's all. And I, and I talked to anime waifu. And these are all AI-generated anime, right? And, and if you follow this person, they're very passionate. Just like a lot of us are passionate about our purple ostriches, they're very passionate about their animal waifus. And so am I going to hide their stuff or kind of, you know, censor them or take them down or anything? I, I'm not. You know, I can't. Unless it's a vulgar kind of thing, I'm not. For what they're doing, I'm not. So this one. Keep it, right? It's a masterpiece. Multiple naked ladies, but I mean, I, am I hiding it? No. How about that one? Vulgar? Right? What, I mean, it's a meme. Do I hide it? Do I just keep it in the meme section? It's a little risque, right? I don't delete it, but I mean, in some cases, you might want to delete it. That may be vulgar, depending on the position or what's written on it, right? I, I, it's, I keep it open. I'm not going to delete it. Or I'll hide it. I just, if you go to view all, you can see it. Is it vulgar? Is it a masterpiece? Is it art? Do I hide it? Do I want to delete it? Who, who, would, who would delete that? Who would hide it, but still keep the link, but hide it? And who would just say next, and that's fine, and it's art, right? Th right, and that's what I did. I just let it go. <laughs> Is it vulgar? No. Do I delete it? Do I hide it? Is it the most popular meme template, one of the most popular meme templates in the world? What do I do? Now, I'm, now am I, am I um, moderating dick pics? Is that now my job? <laughs> I don't, what do I do? So, I mean, of course, this, I let it go. It's, it's not vulgar. It's, a, it's, it's part of our culture. So I'm not going to go any further. 
But you, you see kind of, and there's definitely more kind of um, borderline stuff than this even. I just wanted to get some examples I could share, you know, and stream and all that that, you know, people could think about, right? All these questions go through my mind. Absolutely never anything illegal. Then I ask, is this porn or is it erotica? And then, again, who decides on that? Um, if it's porn, if it's like, honestly, a legit consensual type porn scenario and I get them, I, I hide them. I don't want to show that, but I don't think if it's an, like an adult business, I, I don't necessarily want to delete it or moderate or censor it, right? So who decides, right? Is it art? Is it business? So, so with that, <laughs> with that, I want to, I, I want to open up the idea of a community review. Like, and so I, I don't want to be the only person making all these decisions, to be honest. Like, I'm totally glad with I ha making a, you know, admin account level two or whatever and having a group of us that could log in and, and preview some of these and make decisions. And these are the decisions I literally make with every single image. Do I promote it? Which I'd love to do to our creators, right? Do I not touch it? Which is what I do to 99% of the content. I just move on. I have a view all, so if you pay for the account, you can go and view everything anyone's ever uploaded, right? $5 a year. Do I hide it from view all? Do I delete it? And then ultimately, fortunately I haven't had to do it yet, do I report it, right? And, but those are all the options I have to think about for every single piece of content. And I, I, you know, if any of you are interested, please DM me. I'd be glad to be, you know, create a community of us that can review and, you know, talk about this kind of stuff. I don't know how I'm doing on time. I only have a couple more slides, so I, I think we're doing okay. Okay, so this is my second to last slide. I wanted to tell everyone basically how easy it is to build your own uploader, right? And so ton of us are creators and builders. And you may think it's, you know, oh, this is a whole different, you know, world and it's so hard. And it is not. I mean, building an uploader is programming 101, right? And of course, there's a thousand different kind of uploaders and you can upload uploaders that upload whatever file you want or images only or images and videos or you can strip metadata and security layers and whatever. But if you just want to build a very basic uploader for yourself, it's a piece of cake if you have any technical know-how at all. Right, so um, I, I dumbed down mine, but a couple examples of you know how simple it is. I have one page that produces like the choose your file and upload, three lines of code. Right, it's an HTML page. You could you could have Chat GPT tell you how to write it easily, and then the upload back in. And I use PHP, but there's a hundred different languages out there. Um, again, that's like four lines of code. It's a piece of cake. You need to know how to log into a, a server. I mean, you're gonna pay a few dollars, three, four dollars a month to host it, but that's literally what I did Christmas Eve. And I saw all the people asking like, hey, how do you upload? I just built this uploader, why don't you check it out? You can upload too, yeah. Here we are. So I, I recommend if you have any, any kind of, you know, you wanna start a project, this isn't gonna take you months, right? If you, you could do it, I literally did it in two or three days. Um, but you, you could do it in a week or two, something simple. And lastly, I just wanted to go over kind of a, a basic roadmap of, of where Nasa.build is going. Um, one really cool feature that's coming like within the next couple weeks is uh, Roberto, he completely redesigned the entire Nasa.build website. And I'm gonna show it to you right now and it is freaking awesome, but I mean, let me, here, here we go. Check this out. So, and, and honestly, this projection doesn't give it justice because it's also customized for your mobile device. It fits like perfectly on the mobile device. Um, just a very clean look and feel. I get to still promote my creators and promote the builders here. So like if you go into here, and it, it, this is just a front end. I haven't integrated it yet. So you'll see the different builders, you know, like whoever, Derek and Kieran and them. Um, and then if you go to creators, right, you're gonna see Walker and all the different creators. You can click on them and see their images. So it's coming soon, um, but Roberto did a lot of work. I've been working with him for a while. I mean, can we please give Roberto a big hand of applause? Uh, he did a great job. Yeah. Yeah. It <laughs> It's beautiful, it's beautiful. 
And, and so he, it's just like everything, right? Every, we all gave him feedback on like how to make it look good and work good and everything, and, and he built an awesome site. Um, I'm so happy and glad that um, Will has incorporated us to the, his back end there, and I think that opens up a whole lot of like new opportunity for integration. Um, we can do some really cool things. Like I'd like to connect accounts, so account holders can now connect, or not now, will be able to connect to Domus, and they could do cool stuff like, you know, account holders can have their own folder with all their own memes, so they'll have a button, they can pull up their memes right away on Domus, for example. Um, or they can bring up the creator page and, and go through the creator memes and quickly and easily share those. And so some really cool, of course, they're gonna have full access, like, you know, unlimited or whatever their account allows them, space uploads, whatever type files and all that. So way better, cooler integration. Um, I'm very passionate about the videos that are coming in. We have over 100 vi unique videos a day coming in, and there's so much creative content out there, and I can't even start sharing it. Um, so I want a better way to view the videos. I, I bought Noster Talk. I'm not, I don't like TikTok. I'm not a TikTok fan, but I do think it's a really nice way to scroll through videos. Um, and, and so basically I'm, I'm working on a, 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 you know, a newer way to view videos and, and Noster Talk may not even do nothing. I may just incorporate it. I'm gonna incorporate it all into Noster Build videos also, but um, big on improving videos and working on that. Um, the accounts, we just updated and added the creators page. Um, so more integration there with Thomas. And then, I mean, literally, we are just finishing building the website, you know, it's that new. And so I need to focus on optimization. I need to learn how to scale. My bill has grown three, 400% every month. And so we, I can only afford that for maybe another month or two. Um, and, and I think we're, we're getting the prices down. Um, but I definitely need to work on optimization. That's it. Do we have time for questions? Maybe or? one super quick before question tight, before yeah. we get NVK on stage, but it, yeah. I emphasize super quick. Yeah, um, just any, yes? So, something I'm really wondering is like, have you ever thought of the way of, of when you request images or media from a So when you request the images or media from a Noster client, can we have a standard by which in the HTTP headers we say this is a signed message of which NPUB is doing the request so we can know who's viewing it as an optional thing? Yeah, so for accounts, it's a piece of cake. Like if you open an account, yeah, because you, you know, I know who did that. Currently, there's no way. Like currently, it's just a, you don't, I don't, there's no way to do that. We can, I mean, you know, anything can happen, but like I don't see why we couldn't you know, do that for if you wanted to, maybe, maybe making an opt-in option. The thing is, I don't want to necessarily do that all the time or try to find a way to do that all the time because I want people to have some level of privacy. Um, but yeah, I, I, the easiest way is accounts. But I, I, think, I think to answer your question better too is we're, you know, working with Henry too on a standard and, and trying to find a standard that we can all align to that, that does just this kind of thing. So we're getting there. But yes, it would ultimately be great to get there. Let's get another round of applause for Noster Build. Thank you for providing this service. I, I, am, I am a Noster Build maximalist through and through, um, and I don't plan on changing anytime soon. So we're going to keep this, uh, keep this rolling here. We've got NVK coming to the stage next. He's going to be doing a Noster Socratic for us, so keep your minds agile, keep your comments concise, uh, and let's give a hand of, or a round of applause, excuse me, for NVK. I forgot to announce NVK's assistant, Rockstar. Can we give Rockstar a round of applause as well? Hey, do I have uh, Paul in the audience? Paul, join. Will is not gonna make it, so uh, I, need, uh, I need one more here. Pablo? Oh, there you are, sir. Join. All right, guys. So um, 
this is going to be a bit like different and kind of like than the usual Socratic and we're going to sort of maybe poke your neighbor and get him to ask it for you so you don't show up on the stream. Um, we're not like, I don't know how far we can go with topics due to time. So like, we'll try to maybe just keep it concise. If the time sort of flows, then maybe we can sort of like do more back and forth. Um, so it's gonna be a little bit dictatorship on the Socratic. Um, Quick thing, uh, <laughs> if you do not wanna be on camera, just a reminder again, sit in the back quarter of the audience. You're not gonna be caught on the sure. wide angle or the main live stream. So remove yourself from the viewing area. That's um, all. And right now the list is just uh, like a list of like nodes, uh, like uh, relays and clients, uh, software updates and things like that, uh, because there is a nip talk later, a nip tuck <laughs> uh, later on the day with uh, Pablo. So I don't know, like I, we'll, we'll try something here. Maybe, maybe this turns into a questions and asks about like Noster, maybe this just sort of runs through updates and uh, we'll see where we get us. Yes, that is the list. No, this is Windows, definitely. So you're not using Windows? No, no, no. I am one of the uh, shadowy super coders. No, you're not. Then you sin against Satoshi. Like, Windows <laughs> is the standard. <laughs> Are we on the... Oh, look at that. We're, we're just trying to get on, on screen and... Uh, oh, this guy's gotta be plugged in here. Yeah, oh, there yeah, just, just wait, I don't wanna He just out. needs to hide his, uh, his adult content. I mean, I mean, we already broke the... <laughs> BBC, let's go. Okay, wait. Uh, I don't think this is the latest. Oh, no, wait. This is not the latest for me. One second. This one is my latest. Did you try unplugging it and plugging it back in? Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. No, I think you need permission there to... Uh... No, no, no. I need... Wait, yeah. Oh, we're there. There you go. We're there. Uh, maybe do a command plus. Control plus. A little bit more, a little bit more. Scru uh, almost, one more. Oh yeah, I think that works. All right, so uh, we're gonna start with brb.io and that is brb. Uh, <laughs> if you know, you know. Uh, next is Dumas. Um, uh, version 1.2.03. 0 0.0-3, uh, add additional uh, info to recommended relay, add shock animation, add option to disable image animation, add additional warnings, uh, and there's a little things there. Uh, who's using Dumas? Uh, okay, what's we have, uh, there you go. <laughs> we have like a deep penetration here in the market. Uh, any comments, concerns about the last update? Oh, so QRs are not working. So, Will, if you're listening, uh, we have some QR issues. Uh, yeah, I'm sure people let him know. Uh, um, and uh, oh, how do you guys feel about uh, him charging uh, uh, like, uh, uh, like a, a donation membership per month? Yeah, we got a lot of shakas here. Okay, there you go, 50 customers. Um, there you go. Uh, Nosotros, version 0.3.1.8 alpha. Uh, nice versioning. Um, notification center, the notification center now contains reactions and zaps. Hashtags now user can search. Hashtags or tap in the ones displayed in a note. Reconnect to contact relays. 
Now users can manually run a check for contact relays, video player, uh, and search. There were some more improvements there on the previous version. Uh, any comments on concerns or users of uh, Nosotros? I think maybe just make one or two sentence introduction about what those product are would be useful. Uh, maybe everybody know what Nostros is. I don't. You do it. You do it, please. I, I don't. Oh, okay. So Nostros yes. is a, a client that, like, you know, you can use for the social media purpose of Nostro, uh, and it's, uh, I believe, on iOS and uh, Android. Android only. Oh, okay. So I'm confusing the other one. I just read the notes, man. <laughs> uh, I rely on you guys to participate. Uh, and, and this is not a joke. Like, it's a it, that's, uh, I asked uh, a stupid question. No, no, it was, it was a great question. It was a stupid answer from me. Um, <laughs> go ahead. The video player made me think of... Is it done? No. Uh, the, video, the video player made me think of... I was talking to somebody last night about live streaming. Has anybody uh, implemented live streaming on, on Nostr? Like, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't really have to be Nostr native. Just post a live stream and a client can handle it. Is anybody working on some of that? Yeah? Snort has Twitch events? Embeds. 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 Okay, Snort is killing it. They have all the embeds. Uh, yeah, no, really, congrats. Um, I don't have a Snort update, but I'd love a Snort update. Do you guys don't have a, a release? Yeah, do, do you want to give us an update? I, I'd love, like, please, do it. I mean, you can just you can just read through commit titles like here. Right. Yeah, that's that's your version that's update. That's right. Uh, with hashes, please. <laughs> um, I guess the the most recent thing I deployed that seems like not a lot of people know about it is the um, is this fast app donation feature. I don't know if you guys seen that. Um, a lot of people have been talking about if it would be really cool if you could like um, you know donate some sats to the the creator of the app automatically when you zap people. And that's something that we built on Snort like, um, like last week or the week before. So you can pick like a, a percentage of the, your zap amount and it will be donated to Snort. Um, that's, that's kind of one recent feature, I guess. Um, I've been building, I've been refactoring a lot, so there, there hasn't been a lot of like new features recently, so. Plus it's a great domain. Um, What's the question? Can you repeat that? Yeah, you know, it's just How yeah. The I I think it's yes. You just show an invoice with the added donation, right? And then you pay the original, right? It's uh, it's only for fast apps, so it's like you can automatically pay two invoices essentially. So it cr gets a separate invoice from the the donate address and pays that separately. It's not like doing any fancy splits or anything. It's just two separate payments. Walker, sorry, man. We're going to give you so much legwork today. It's okay. My foot's just falling off from a bug bite, but it's fine. It's okay. fine. It's gnarly, right? Yeah, maybe you need two mics, double fisting yeah. for the win. <laughs> you know? And uh, NVK, look how much influence you have in... Uh, yeah, this is Chinese, right? Nice versioning. You called it out, already repeated on Noster. There you go. Um... I really confused him with that one. Yes, joke, did. man. I am. Uh, I'm very confused. Um, it's not on the notes. Um, so, by the way, like uh, for all the people building stuff out there, uh, having like you know a, a summary of your of your releases is very helpful for people who follow the projects. So, you know, you're gonna have fifty thousand commits per version, right? And you and if it's web software, you might not even have versioning. Uh, but you know, if you want people to sort of like keep a tab on your projects, it's very helpful uh, because uh, you know people who keep a tab on these things like me uh, don't have a crystal ball. Um, so yeah, please. Um, Coracle 0 0.2.18 uh, rewrite data storage layer to conserve memory using a custom L L U L R U cache. 
uh, fix bugs, we've had only invalid keys, improved pub key, anonymous login, generate placeholder profile images, fix notifications to complete reliable, to complete and reliable, uh, update license back to MIT. Uh, Quarko is sort of like a, just as they call it, a friendly client. Um, any, anybody uses, has any comments? It's fun? Seems to work well. Rabble says it's fun. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I mean, uh, I wanted to add, yeah, Fia Jeff really loves this client. And when it comes to notes, what I wanted to show is, here is where you pick up the notes, right? Releases. And then you go to specific release. And... Uh, Boom, tags, that was tag. <laughs> where, where did he pick up Yeah, um, your helper? Where did he pick up uh, release notes? So Johnny is the ninja that helps me put together a Bitcoin.review podcast. Uh, and he will dig through your uh, extremely undocumented release. Uh, and he will pick uh, the, the commits that have like, like a, some canonical explanation of what you did. And he will help us add it to the list. Um, would you say like, like a changelog.md file is like best practice? Absolutely, especially if you're doing things that handle people's like money, IDs. It's very nice to have one document where you like add a, a just a summary linking to that release uh, because otherwise you end up with this. Look at this. this. This is normal, right? Like you're adding your commits, but then we can't sort of review this. Users can't review this. So you really want a summary of your release. Maybe maybe we could get the uh, people from the Nostal report to once a week just send you TLDR of what happened. There you go. Maybe maybe we have to do like a separate uh, uh, episode so that like you know people that don't want to hear Nostal. So like there's the Bitcoin one, there's the Nostal one. Uh, go ahead. Just say it out. We'll repeat it. There is a convention to make commits, which is conventional yes. commit structure where you have core, fit, uh, fix, and it makes it super easy to create MD file. And yeah, I think it's well, a good you can practice. Also squash commits too, mm -hmm. uh, but like you know, realistically speaking, especially web people, like they're just gonna like you know, you know, yeah, like just the date. I do that a lot. Like just you know, no explanation. Fixed it. Fixed it. <laughs> No, I, uh, as someone that has been participating in more and more meetups, uh, this really is starting to be like a great thing because if you do a great, good job on your open source project or like any project that's being tracked in Bitcoin or Nostr ecosystem, like you do a good job with release notes, like those release notes will be uh, displayed like Chicago Bit Devs, who yeah, I'm representing here, like. They, they, they show the change log. They do it in Toronto, they do it in New York. So it helps a lot. And you know, there will always be edge cases because like I now actually, Kieran looked at this and I, what I see here is like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 was well documented. And then 0 0.13, we're like, ah, I'm not writing it again. I'll, 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 just, I'll just do like link to commits. You guys figure it out, right? Yeah, yeah, you were like, auto-generate, let's go, Automa automated, you pick it out. Yeah, you know, like somebody was asking, how do you find customers? You know, like, maybe, you know, the meetup, people like your release notes and maybe they use your software. Um, it's nice to know what changed. No, that's actually a great uh, way to think about it. Like, write your release notes as they will be used, thinking they will be used at meetup. And yeah, that's it. Um, okay, so relay updates. Uh, we might have more and you guys inform us. We just wrote this list quickly. So in, in Noster, uh, a relay and client written in C sharp. Uh, do, do we have the person For here? some reason. Get there. <laughs> For, yeah, I mean, you know, like, are we gonna enter discussions about... Uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, no, I, I don't think this is the right medium to uh, enter a discussion about uh, worthy and non-worthy languages. No, no, no. C Sharp is not one of them. I want to strangle you. 
No, this uh, relay is done by our amazing BTC Pay server contributor, oh, it's Cooks. Cooks. Yeah, I see. He cooks so many things. Um, so it's relay. He also in the repository is uh, doing uh, some client stuff, but he definitely wants to get it to the point where it's a really performant C sharp relay. And uh, Cookie, if you are, you're watching this, yeah, we have a meeting when I'm back from Nostrika, so we will be contributing more like together to to this one. Cooks, when are you going to port this to a real language? Uh, a real language. Uh, nah. <laughs> C sharp. <laughs> um, this would be a good time. I, um, um, the Mutiny team has made this uh, really called Blaster. Uh, ben and Tony worked on it. I'm a front end dev, so I haven't touched it at all. Uh, but it's kind of a proxy relay. Um, and it's meant to run on Cloudflare. It's all like serverless and really scalable. But basically, it's publish only. So you, so you add noster.mutinyallywallet.com to your relays, and when you publish an event, we try to fan it out to the top 300 relays on Noster Watch. Um, so typically, it hits like 150 relays. And if you, have pay, it's a, if you have a paid relay, most of those are authenticated by just the pub key of the event, and so paid relays will even work with, with Blaster as well. Uh, it was very useful when I deleted my key uh, on, on Damas. Uh, you know, th there was some undocumented behavior on how that, that happens. Uh, essentially, like zeros, your kind zero. Um, and uh, it wasn't clear to me that that happened uh, because my relay is also broken, so I didn't have like a good place to go look for my stuff. Um, so uh, we, you know, I authored a new kind, like reversing that, that message, and I pushed through Blaster. Uh, without the last vowel, um, and uh, like the whole network saw it, and it was much faster to, uh, in a way, it, it reminds me really of DNS propagation servers, right? Like it really pushes out there. Uh, there is some contention on, on like, you know, that kind of behavior. Is that a good behavior, a bad behavior? Um, I'm, some, I'm here some. as a proxy for the, the for mutiny for team. Me, yeah, for so Tony. you can throw things at me. Yes. No, I, I mean, it like, is. It is spammy in a way, and we're trying to find that right line between being efficient, like opening a WebSocket connection, blasting 100 events at a time, and then shutting that down. Do you realize you hate that? Or is that like somehow helpful? I, I think it's helpful for the time being, but it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> but, but there's a reason people want it. And it's what we were discussing yesterday, is that people want it because clients don't know where to get the event, so you might as well just write it everywhere because you want your events to be seen. You don't know which relays uh, are working and which relays have the data that you want to update, for example. In the, the delete case was like perfect, right? You want the most amount of relays in the network to see your undeletion. Uh, and, and say, for example, you were doing key revocation. We don't have a spec for it. We don't even know if we like it or if it's going to work or whatever. But like, let's say you did have it. Uh, if in that uh, instance, it would be great to have a, a like wide reach uh, uh, broadcast of that message so most relays see the key, revoca key revocation and do honor it because they don't have to honor it either. I, I think it's also, a, there's a case, I, I think where it becomes problematic is when you use it for kind ones and kind sevens and like those kinds where there's a lot of them, right? But I think there's a case for kind zero. You yes. want your profile to be quickly seen anywhere and for 10,002. Like you want people to know where to find you. 10,002 is for the gossip protocol, so it's where you tend to be, uh, your pub key. So yeah. I think for that, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, we don't even have like, like there is like one uh, a client that supports proper gossip, right? Uh, to Coracle as well. Coracle as well. So until like we prove gossip to work, uh, we still need a spam way of doing things. It's extremely inefficient, but so, it is useful. So maybe a, a way to change Blaster would be to have like query params of like which kinds should we ignore versus, because the clients can't really configure that right now per relay, but maybe just the relay URL could configure that. Another I, I think what would be cool, it's totally out of spec, but what would be cool is if uh, Blaster could f f signal on the event that it's blasting, you know, that, in right. some way, so the relay can at least, because right now if a relay wants to defend itself from, from Blaster, 
it needs to t keep tabs on all the other relays. And is this node in a thousand other relays? Okay, then I'm not going to take it. Well, I mean, it could also just be that Blaster sort of also rate limits and also checks that it's not doing the same event again and again. Or the same pub key, for example, I don't let you blast more than one event from this pub key per hour. Yeah, but then you configure demos, for example, to have Blaster and okay, oh, it's yeah, going to... Oh yeah, for sure. I, I mean, see, I, I feel like we're in this stage now of, of the protocol where people are still trying to say don't do something and there's still like mostly people who know each other so they sort of <laughs> okay I won't do that something yeah. but as soon as you have a little bit more adversarial mm -hmm. uh, 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 actors around especially state actors right they will like do all the things you don't want them to do so might as well just bid, build for that case uh, then sort of like you know Try to be yeah. kind uh, to each other. Uh, kind. kind zero. <laughs> kind zero. <laughs> no, I mean, game theory here is like all in favor that people will use Blaster. And that's what I expect relay operators will need to adjust the reality of that. Because, like, how many of you in the audience are using Blaster? Okay. So, see? This You'd be is, technical people. No, no. Only, right? Yeah, but this is why we get the most likes. <laughs> yeah, is because <laughs> is because once you add blaster, like your message is propagated to like hundreds of relays, and now I expect everyone from this audience will be like, oh, I should stop adding relays. I'll just add one, and uh, yeah. Do you have uh, sorry, uh, million there? Uh, do you have any data on uh, the amount of users using blaster? Okay. Yeah, not a uh, repeat. Don't, don't have the data, but it's interesting, like, for something like this, the incentives are there for everyone to use it. Mm -hmm. yes. So, uh, if, if this is being promoted, then the end state is all the nodes are on all the relays. That's, uh, is that's that how what we want? Designed, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, you, you know, you can't prevent that, right? Like, yeah. like well, uh, information wants to be free. Like, yeah. that, that's it. It's just... It is to uh, it is, it's your incentive to collect as much information as you can. But that's where I expect really operators and and like bigger group. Let's see, I'm I'm, I'm listening if they hey guys, have something. Do, do, if they, it, if you are, yeah. Do you guys want to contribute? <laughs> sure, sure. We, we were, okay. uh, on the number front, by the way, we're doing about twenty five thousand events a day. Right now. Yeah, they're like 20% of so all the party. events. It's a party on Blast. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, this guy next to me here is running his own relay, and he was just wondering, I wonder if Blaster is also just posting to my relay. Oh, it probably uh, is. There oh, is very okay. few relays that are not getting blasted. I, oh, is, your, okay. is your relay in like top 100 on... Top, top 300 on Noster Watch. I don't know about top 300. It's uh, SouthFlorida.Ninja. So... We do get a lot of traffic. We did over 80,000 messages uh, a day now. You, you're getting blasted. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but remember, the amount of people using it are few, right? Because right. You, can't, you can't really, uh, there's no web UI for it. So Oops. unless you're adding it as your relay, uh, you know, you had to before use a command line or something to, to, to push a note to it. Right. Man, this is being blasted on live stream. Like, get ready for more events. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are all screwed now. Um, so, so, it's okay. So, it's all good. Um, all right. So, next, next one is, uh, I could just read. Uh, next is the next one. Uh, NEX, a powerful and flexible Nostra relay written in Elixir. Oh, that sounds like a river thing. Um, he's not here. Elixir, that's like the same thing that like WhatsApp scale with basically Erlang, Elixir. Yes. It's the, the people who do uh, routers for Telcom. Yeah. Uh, I, I love how they pump it up, a powerful and flexible Nostra really and Elixir. Like Elixir, you Brazilians, oh my God, you can pump your stock. That's right. Um, okay. Uh, next one is Nostrain, uh, version 2.1.1. Uh, we clearly don't have the notes. Uh, BRB again is just uh, BRB. Why is BRB BRB? BRB? What broke? <laughs> what broke? 
Oh, uh, we can't filter the messages, right? Uh, everything is, is stored in Redis, uh, which is kind of nice. Uh, but, you know, database structure is a bit different than most relays. Um, and uh, things are not getting routed right, so they break. And uh, it needs to be rewritten. Is the plan to keep it on Redis? I, I don't know. Like, eh, there, there's a lot of people working on relays, so we don't want to, like, you know, we have limited resources, right? Like, we got to ship hardware wallets. Uh, What's that? <laughs> it's about Bitcoin. Have you heard about it? Right, yeah. Um, so, we just want to see, right? I mean, like, maybe somebody else with the time and the effort and, like, the intention and the focus wants to build that, they go and do it. The idea was to make a high-performant relay, which it was. Uh, and it also had textual search, which was kind of nice. Um, One of the things I like BRB for, and I'm curious uh, what other people, it's nice to have a permalink that you could share with people that's yes. not client specific. So I was using BRB for that, but then it's down. Uh, do, do other people have like permalinks that they like? Snort. Snort. Uh, like Thomas is using Snort. Yeah, so, so there weren't any when we did that. So that was the intent. So people could search the notes and you could share it on Twitter. So people come from Twitter to Noster and uh, hopefully don't go back. Uh, but uh, Snort is doing a great job with that. Yeah, um, and, and I would add one point on that is uh, Iris. Thank you, Marty, for, because uh, he has those short codes. So what I use now to share my profile, I just tell people, or, or I, when I'm holding a presentation, I put in like iris.2 slash rockstar. And that allows people to like really go to that shorthand and like find NPUB easily. I hope Karen will get snort.social slash rockstar. Um, and what? Yes, but snort has uh, snort.social slash rockstar at snort.social. You know, like you have Nippo 5, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I really want snort.social slash r, but we'll, we'll talk about it later. There, there's also, I wrote uh, my first thing on Noster that I wrote in like one hour for, to try spelt is godnoster.com and you can buy 15,000 15, sats uh, slash Pablo, for example, and that goes to my, to whatever you want. It loads the profile, it looks like shit, uh, but for Nepo 5, it's free, and if you want to pay for Vanity, like NBK. There whatever. you go. We should uh, fork that and put it for bitcoinhackers.org so people can uh, make their profiles again. <laughs> I look junior a lot. Look, look like it. Yes. Um, by the way, uh, we're we're reaching like the the end of it's the <laughs> because he's doxed, a name. That's why. Fully doxed. Uh, the the relay only list. Are, are <laughs> it's it's checking BRB that I owe. That's why. Um, there you go. Do do we have any more relay updates that we did not list that should be mentioned? Anybody? Any relay operators had some updates that uh, could be interesting for us to mention at this part of the, of the show? <laughs> no? Okay. All right. Protocol updates. Uh, we didn't add any. Um, yeah, this, is, this is fresh off the press. This, this is fresh this off is the like press. Very fresh. It happened yesterday. Uh, news and other related updates. Uh, Dorsey provides a 14 Bitcoin grant uh, to open source distributed communication protocol Noster. Uh, a lot of you guys know about that, but uh, it would be nice to add that to the... the uh, I mean, we can do posterity. retrospective on that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Because it is what really, I would think, brought us here. Like, I, I don't know. What was your uh, yeah, reaction when you saw, like, this Nostrika conference coming together? I mean, you and I talked because we were supposed to be in Austin. That there is that. Sorry, look, uh, uh, Parker. Mayor um, Lewis, Mayor Lewis. That's right. Um, I, you know, social media, like, uh, uh, migration, right, uh, from one platform to another. We had, like, Orkut back in the day. Uh, there was, uh, was it, uh, uh, Friendster, you know, all those things. They normally take, like, major events, right, for, for things to happen. And, uh, you know, there were some people using Noster, especially for the social media use case for a little while, but it was very small. And, and I think like having, you know, like a, a big personality come in. Oh, uh, it was, yeah, boring. Yeah. Especially a decent one, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, kind of helps. Um, 
And uh, I think adding funding publicly, adding a lot of funding to uh, development sort of validates the idea. You know, not to us who just build shit because we want to build shit anyways, but, uh, but for the people outside of it, right? Uh, they are like, you know, why should I spend my time and my effort into this new sort of system if it could go away tomorrow, right? Yeah, if it's validated by someone else. But uh, speaking of this event, like how many of you in the audience like uh, s uh, replied to Jack Dorsey that it, he should send like uh, funds to Nostra developers? Yep. Mm. There we go. Uh, is there group. any uh, receivers of, I mean, if you want to be bounties, an anonymous yeah. of the bounties or anything here? Uh, any bounties, some of my cheap bounties? Oh. oh, there you go. Very nice. What was bounty on, if you don't mind sharing? Yeah, so I hope I get the, uh, it was the, uh, most of the, uh, the so it was a bounty by Fiatjaf, and he called it Make Nostra Desk, uh, the closure desktop app, great again. Yeah. Okay. Let's go, Arthur. That's, that's great. I, I'm really enjoying the bounties, you know, like uh, on Bount Sir, BountSR.org. I made it, it was a terrible choice of domain purchase uh, because it sounds great, like it, it looks great, but you can't say it out loud. Um, and uh, the bounties are moving, you know, and people are adding them. Like there is, there is a few sets for you to collect there if you're prolific. Um, and... Uh, um, somebody claimed uh, the long form uh, uh, posting, uh, which was uh, abla.news. Really nice. So fantastic. Yeah, like, I mean, you know, there's, well, there's a one that's been doubled there. I mean, maybe Arc can collect this desktop port. That's an uh, interesting one. But you know, if, uh, if you're Android. a developer uh, and you, you want to make a, a little buck, uh, there is, there's a few, like, good. Um, uh, bounties there, including a very big one for GitHub replacement. Um, yeah, I think that one will need to grow, like in, in size to actually be done, or it will need to be broken down into smaller functionality because like, GitHub's has, GitHub has so much. Yeah, a lot. And I really think it's also a moving target. Mm. So what should be done there is really like some kind of work that identifies the minimum function functionality needed. And then you take existing repository from GitHub, you try migration, like how easy it is to migrate it and all the talk, all the important information. And then you see like, is it working? Because it won't work on the first one. You know, like I, I think just as a transport for diffs, because it's signed now, which is really cool. So here's a little secret that is horrible about GitHub that many people don't know. Um, the <laughs> GitHub doesn't differentiate in the UI if a commit was signed with your PGP keys or if it was signed just because you committed through their web interface without any actual signature on it. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of scary. Uh, it, was, it happened to me the other day. I was sort of being lazy, so I committed from the web thing from my phone. Um, and uh, uh, my my uh, co-founder said, "Hey, uh, you know this this was signed. This was not in any critical project, but like this was signed. But your signature is not on the thing." I'm like, "I did it from the web UI." Oh, <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> um, so just watch out for that. Uh, the commits you need to actually check the commit sign message outside of the GitHub UI to know it was really signed. Well, one thing I would recommend for these large uh, bounties or these complicated projects, or even if you see a small bounty, it's like, I want to work on that, but I bet somebody smarter and better than me is going to do it faster than me, so I'm going to do all this work and get nothing. I think the join market bounty is a really great example of that bounty got really big to make a UI for join market, and uh, a team assembled around that yeah. and collaborated together. They worked with Bitcoin design, so that was a very collaborative process. So. I, hopefully, some teams like that can emerge for some of these more complicated bounties. You know, and, and I mean, one one thing to keep in mind is that like, uh, just do the thing anyways because clearly there is demand for it. If there is a bounty, even if you don't end up getting the bounty, you know, some of the bounties will be juicier, but like, you know, most of the bounties are small. Um, I think small bounties actually attract better quality. The big bounties attract people just seeking money. Mm -hmm. um, so. You know, do it anyways, because you can probably find a product market fit. 
there is clearly demand for it. Uh, and, and who knows, maybe like keep on searching around and see if there is anybody who's interested in working on that and partner up. Um, maybe somebody wants to come and change this site so that it's like a little bit more social and, and like you can actually post a comment on a, uh, on, on a, on a bounty saying, hey, you know, I'm interested in working on this. Are you going to make a bounty for that? Sorry? Are you going to make a bounty for that? Uh, maybe, maybe there, there is. There is a bounce, bounster uh, mic wrap. Uh, actually, Fiat Jeff just posted uh, recently a bounty, not a bounty, sorry, uh, uh, a link to somebody who made a bounty site on Noster. So hopefully my site gets deprecated and then I don't have to host it anymore and somebody just carries the torch. <laughs> It'll be great. <laughs> um, go ahead. It's right there, I think. Which it's is different from, from, where, from what you have. I think he added some boundaries which are not on your side. Okay. Which, which are on the new, sorry, which are I, on I the mean, new Noster side. The level of, uh, of uh, uh, curation I do is uh, uh, blind click <laughs> on merge. Do you have the name of that Noster bounty site? All right, does anybody know what that's called? I'm sure that Google will find it. All right, yeah. we'll Google it. The name of the Noster bounty app. I, I, it was it was a few weeks ago. Yeah. Actually, it might have been just a couple weeks ago. Um, so yeah, guys, this is a good place for you to find. Even if you don't like want to like work directly with the person who posted the bounty, look at these bounties as like things. That there is people out there that want. So if you're looking for ideas to code that are not just like another social media sort of like client for an Oster, uh, it's interesting stuff. Um, uh, what else? Uh, next, uh, Twitter announces policy banning promotion of other social media. This one is a little bit old, but it's worth mentioning in this conference because it was uh, it was fantastic. We uh, got that reversed, yeah. You, you know how uh, <laughs> how uh, uh, they essentially told everybody about this completely obscure protocol, <laughs> Noster. <laughs> did Noster anybody what? get did anybody get censored on Twitter for talking about Noster? Nice. I did nice. it. I even paid for a blue check, and then they blocked me from search on all uh, U.S. Okay. Well, for all U.S. users, and blocked from tagging as well. So that blue check was really worth the eleven dollars a month. <laughs> you know, uh, with the recent updates on Twitter, like say, like the last like month or two, I, I, I'm starting to believe like Elon purposely wants Noster to win. Uh, it, it feels very deliberate. Uh, oh, there you go. Thank you. Uh, okay, so the Noster bounty site that's built on Noster, right. which is the correct way of doing this, um, is uh, nosterbounties.com. Uh, so if I see most of the bounties end up showing up there, maybe I'll, maybe I'll 302 my website to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but we, we have closing Noster bounties, but to get back to what you were saying, like you're still banned on Twitter? Like, was was never banned, um, well, was never suspended or anything, visibility. but I, I had somebody tell me like, hey, I can't tag you in anything, and when I go to search you, it doesn't show up even though like I'm following you. But strangely for uh, users in the UK, they did not have that problem, it was still showing up fine. So I don't know how Twitter deals with that, but US users were unable to. Yeah, because now you're in Twitter limbo, and that that's what I'm trying to get. Like, did you get a resolution or your account will now be suspended, not suspended, but like reduced in visibility, Infinitely until yeah you. Well, you're kicked your out of the sins. cool kids table. Yes, yes. You yes. know they put you on the corner table. Maybe some people see your stuff. Maybe they won't. It's unclear. <laughs> they yeah. really shouldn't see my stuff anyway. No, no, we should. But there is a question over there. No, for for. Yeah, yeah. Because for me, that's that's really the big thing on Twitter. Like for a lot of people, they talked about unpopular topic, and they're like, okay, COVID, and they're suspended like reduced in visibility in like last two years. But yeah. Let's go, sir. So I'm, I'm Chief Monkey. I shared a, uh, some laser cut art on Twitter. It was a, a rabbit down a rabbit hole and a Nostra's head coming in. And I just bigged up Nostra. And it's a two tweet. It was, they deleted the first tweet for about five days and then it came back. But it killed the tweet. As soon as it got retweeted, uh, immediately, they deleted it. Yeah? 
Just the mention of Nostra. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think they kind of became aware of the Streisand effect and sort of stopped. Uh, it, was, uh, it was great. Uh, the clients list, uh, I'm not going to go, like, these are known clients. I just wanted to, like, have them uh, for the audience. Like, you know, Nostrica is going to probably be seen by people that never heard about Noster. So, so these are, are some clients. Um, 30 minutes? Ten. We only have 10 minutes? Okay. Uh, oh, what, what, I think maybe we should cover the, the Nostra integrations or sh should we do questions? How you feel? Um, well, let's just, do you guys want to do questions or do you guys want us to, uh, to, to talk about like integrations? Integrations? Okay. Uh, questions? All right. <laughs> integrations it is. <laughs> Market demand. This crowd loves integrations. Yeah. But, you know, democracy has been gained, so, you know, it's just, it's a cheap lift of hands. Um, <laughs> cheap lift of that's hands. That's right. It either sends apps or it doesn't count. Um, okay, so Nostra integrations. Our Orange Peel app, you can now copy Nostra pub keys. That's cool. Uh, that's an app that lets you sort of like uh, uh, socially uh, orange peel people. Um, Fountain, uh, 0 0.6.5. Cool. Uh, Noster Zaps, uh, um, now on Fountain. Fountain is a, a pod 2.0 kind of uh, uh, app. So uh, you, you can receive boostergrams. You can receive essentially sats. People can stream the sats or send you sats. Um, and, uh, and you find income as a podcaster. I can attest that you can buy uh, alcohol and uh, meals with some of the, the, the income that you make on a pod. It's kind of fun. It would be very nice if Fontaine actually does boostergrams as subs so that you can yes. do stuff I've, like command on the boostergrams. I have a feeling that's coming because it's a lot more efficient so to put the text on a note than it is to put the text on a lightning <laughs> transaction, <laughs> right? Uh, maybe it's a much better transport. Um, and you can interact that's right. beyond font. That's right. You can, yeah. Uh, although you can reply to a boostergram. Uh, yeah, but it's its own thing, right? You have to give right? that money back. It's its, it's own weird. thing. It's its <laughs> silo. It's there. Yes. It's like you, do, you don't see it. You see it if you're part of the splits. No, but I mean, yes. you see it like you're using Fontan and you see the comments yes. there. But yes. we are all in this yes. other place. Yes. All the communication should live on Noster. Yes. Uh, that, that is, uh, it's actually quite incredible, right? Because uh, say, for example, you have your, your blog and you want people to comment under. It, it's, it's, it's a no-brainer. If you Jeff posted that, like, you know, a few lines of JavaScript, it's yeah. like, boom, all the comments on your, on your blog can be Noster notes. Uh, and uh, big win there. Uh, Cashew, uh, 0 0.9.3. Uh, that's an eCash uh, 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 project by Kali. Uh, pay to Noster NIP5 support makes it super easy to send eCash to other Noster users. Uh, and then you have a multi mint, uh, send sats to any Noster pub key, send sats to Cashew. Well, that, he just explains how to do it command line. Yeah, and shout out to my man Kali. Um, since I gave everyone a tip on, on Blaster, you know, how to increase reach of your notes. We can also give a tip here on how to have infinite zapping of your note. Did you see that uh, NIP57, like, discussion, like, on PR? Me and Kale, like, uh, unintentionally collaborated on, on boosting my notes. So, I don't know, you, you didn't see that? No, I, I missed that one. You missed that one as well? Let me, let me just open the PR. I will say I'm really liking the like the NIP5 and zapping all together as kind of an identity. I mean, NIP5 is like a place to go, a little bit like a really dumb dig. It's DNS. Of here's how I want to be paid. So when we have Bolt 12, we could do that. We could do Lightning address. Yep. We could do you know a pay names on there. Uh, it's 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 fun that for Bitcoin products to finally have a way to have a contact list. Well, another cool thing too is that. Um you, you can do it anonymously as well. So, so there is a way to do the zaps anonymously, yes. uh, which is very nice. We're Bitcoiners and sometimes anonymity is great. You know? Maybe it's a cat picture that you don't want anybody to know that you liked, but you still wanna <laughs> like, give the maker of that cat picture a zap or two. You know? uh, 
It's uh, what is it? Uh, a zaps for nips. Zaps for nips. <laughs> um, yeah, we're going to get a lot of that. But um, the the way this PR started was uh, it was discovered like okay, you can you should check if your donation to certain URL like okay, is it legit? And it was something that you, Kieran, and uh, William collaborated on. Is like how do you ensure uh, authenticity of zaps so that you know like it's actually uh, hitting intended recipient and it was like hope that you can do that but you see like a lot of changes Andre also chimed in he was like uh, wouldn't work in all cases and then they were trying to add extra validation but then me and Kala came in so you can see like my uh, <laughs> my note got boosted supposedly by 3.81 million sats but what actually wash boosting wash boosting i mean actually i didn't even need to do anything because people were like wanted to zap me and i didn't want to like get sats so i've added Kali's donation address in my profile so people were like oh rockstar i zapped you i'm like no Kali is the one vibrating you know it's his address but what then he discovered is because his address is on my profile he just like zaps like my notes receives all the sats back and what I receive in return is supposedly like I'm so popular you see that I uh, have 3.8 million sats like in donation so it's like infinite money glitch oh, yeah. and this is where I uh, you found it on the no uh, I, I, something I'm separate. about to change topics on yeah yeah no no, no 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 let's let, let's finish this get, it, get it out but the, yeah get it out the the point here is that like I expect that there will be a service that will really like provide value and like uh, having authenticate like whether these zaps are real or it's all just like washing and uh, like these these numbers need to be real you know if we do it right we should be able to zap wash wash zaps in a way that is you know kind of legit too <laughs> could you speak a little louder yeah sorry? Yeah, you have mic. Mike. I can't hear you. We, it's hard to Sorry. hear. Sorry. The same way you have one person per like, you could just have one person per zap. Um, the number, right? You know, people want to sort of re-zap. I mean, it's... it's uh... No, the, the problem is also like likes now on Noster are super easy to be faked. You, you just generate a new key pair and you like send like event. And uh, reboost as well. Like all you need is another key pair. And... I was actually thinking whether I should like, spend an afternoon and code something and then open source it to everyone. Like, you know, you want 1,000 likes on your post. Yes. Just like, do it. Because okay. then we resolve the problem. Okay. You, you know, that's normally the best way of resolving these things. Just make something that ruins the future and then everybody has to fix it. Yeah, I should have. Like, like break a Lindy. Exactly. <laughs> um, I, I just wanted to, yes, on the one. Zap topic, uh, Ben the Carmen ran some analytics on Zaps, and he says 95% uh, of users have their Lightning address set to a custodial wallet. 91% uh, of all Zaps by volume have gone to a custodial wallet. Uh, basically, that's Wallet wall of Satoshi is the clear winner with 50% of users and 67.5% of the volume. So uh, a few weeks ago, it was 85% yeah. Wallet of Satoshi. So, so this is actually a great segue to also Albi. Um, the, who, who here uses, you know, please don't lift your hand if you don't want to be recorded about this. Uh, how many people here use custodial lightning wallets? Uh, how many here use like also self-hosted or quasi self-hosted wallets? How many use only non-custodial wallets? Okay, that says a lot about Lightning. Nobody lifted their hands, by the way, uh, for... for Wait, maybe I misunderstood the question. You're saying who uses both and then uses, uses only one? Yeah, the exactly, other. yeah. Right. I only use self-custodial. Only self-custodial. Yeah. Ah, uh, that's, that's a good one. How about the only one? There you go. That was who doesn't want to be recorded, um, yeah. You know, it's okay. It's a different set of trade-offs. You know, like, we should shun you if you put your Bitcoin in exchanges. But Lightning, you know, I feel like it, it's, a, at least personally, I feel like it's okay. 
uh, small you know, amounts. It's small amounts, and you know, then you have your privacy thresholds. Different wallets do different things. Hopefully, well, Mutiny my, helps. With I think the my privacy. biggest my biggest fear right now is a, a rug pull of a lot of small amounts. So it's a it's yeah. not a big impact to each individual, but it's a it's a headline of. Bitcoin being rug pulled, and we're used to like laughing at other people for being rug pulled. But we already are. Uh, like Lightning is rug pulled as a service, right? So like everybody's paying fees. You know the fees are those sets going away. I mean it, the fees and I, are the rug you weave that, along the way. That's right. I mean, you know, um, it, it, it's kind of like a good thing. It's little, right? And we don't. They, you know, a lot of wallets say it's for the fees or whatever. You don't know, right? And as long as the economically speaking is very tiny, there's going to be leakage. It's just, it seems to be part of the, how like lightning game theory works, right? Um, and uh, okay, so uh, Albi is a fantastic tool if you use uh, Noster because you can keep your keys on it um, for the browser uh, clients. And they also offer uh, full, uh, uh, custodial lightning uh, uh, node. Uh, I used that for the pod and I had never had any issues with it. Uh, liquidity either direction and it connects to Zeus. Uh, shout out to Evan. Um, I won't read their specific uh, releases here. I'm going to move on. Uh, interesting projects and I think this might have to be the last section. I'll, I'll try to go through a few. Uh, all right, so uh, Primal.net, uh, Nostra client and Relay with heavy caching and analytics. Oh, it misspelled. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, M of course I misspelled. Uh, <laughs> I committed from the phone. Uh, phone commits with wet fingers. Uh, there you go. Uh, click on the Explore tab. So this is interesting. Uh, so far, the only place I can get that data uh, and it seems to be uh, legit. Uh, any, Milian, it's your project there. Uh, any comments, concerns, or anybody have questions about like doing analytics on Noster and caching on Noster? No, oh, okay. If, if not, then Milian, maybe you can uh, yeah. say like your motivation bef before focusing on this first. It's like not usual client focus or like, Oh, I'm going to focus on zaps and whatnot. It's analytics. Why, why that? So the initial uh, motivation was to make uh, the most kick-ass client possible, to make everything very fast, uh, which led us to this idea of caching services. Um, the, the first thought is, OK, well, that's a centralizing force, and you, you don't want to necessarily um, keep that closed. So what, we, what we're doing is, uh, we connect to all the known relays and we connect all of the content in real time. As you can see there, the, the events are kind of streaming in, in, in real time. Uh, so that works really well. If you kind of browse through the, through the feed, you will see things are loading really quickly. But again, uh, the uh, trade-off there, it potentially, if you keep it closed and proprietary, is that you become a centralizing force. Uh, for uh, for the networks, so obviously that's not good. Um, and uh, the next logical step, obviously, is to open it up and um, keep it open, both in the sense of uh, opening up the source code, as well as the spec, so that uh, anyone can stand up uh, caching instances and uh, with, with kind of minimal effort and and kind of modest hosting budget. Would you consider a, like a paid API? Um, so currently, we're just thinking about uh, giving that away. So I spoke to a number of other client uh, makers, and they, they're, they're, most of them are interested in using something like this, and some of them actually offered to pay. But uh, the way we're thinking about it currently is we, are, we would just open source it and let people uh, stand up their own instances. And if you play that out, because the incentives are there to build something like this, to, to, to use it, these types of things are very useful. If you play that out, I think we end up with many instances, many cache instances, probably hundreds uh, of the entire network, which then actually makes the network more resilient. Um, so then, since we had all the data, and most of this data is actually served from the RAM, uh, the next thing we realized, oh, well, we can actually do um, 
kind of effective analytics on top of all of this. So that's another big rabbit hole, and you can see the very uh, kind of the, the initial take on on the types of analytics we want to do on the Explore uh, tab. It looks like you're not logged in, so so uh, this instance doesn't probably have your your. Uh, uh, extension okay. for I, I think it's in? broken because none of our user IDs are trending right now. <laughs> yeah, so that's correct. Broken. And no worries, I'm logging in right now. Let me copy paste my private key. Yeah, Let's that's right. <laughs> Let's but go. put it on a note. Just give it to me. <laughs> Just give it to me. I'll, I'll get you. I get you logged in. So anyway, uh, that's kind of the the the, the idea of. Uh, Getting all the data and having it avail highly available in real time opened up a bunch of possibilities, and we're just at the beginning of uh, utilizing that. But we're excited about um, open sourcing this in the coming weeks and letting everyone else uh, have some fun with this as well. I, I hope it's not C sharp. It is actually Julia, and we love Julia. Not a lot of people have actually heard about it, but we, we really love our um, choice of backend technology. It's kind of this uh, somewhat exotic language for scientific computation, but it has um, it, it's proven amazing for what we're doing here. It's extremely fast. It has a multi-threaded async runtime. Uh, we love it, so, so happy about okay, that. Okay, so niche language, they really love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, Nostor, uh, safe Nostor key storage. Oh, so this one is actually useful if you're using um, like uh, on iOS uh, and you need a, a place to store keys to do browser, uh, uh, blou use browser clients. Uh, it's, it's, it has some extension with Safari. I used it this week. It, it worked. Yeah? It was great. With like, actual Apple Safari? Like actual Apple Safari. I, I, I went to the Nostor website. I installed it. Then you have to go to settings to enable the extension. Once that extension is enabled, if you're on a Nostor site, uh, you like where five like, stars down at the bottom where you like change your font size, but down in the URL bar, the the extension might pop up or it pops up a little menu and you can click into the extension. Yeah, Apple it. Apple makes it very intuitive how to do it. There's like <laughs> ten <laughs> steps that you need to you got uh, this. once. You've got this. I believe in you. <laughs> yeah, because they probably don't want you to add <laughs> extensions. <laughs> but very very cool. Now you can do browser uh, uh, browser HSMs, right? Like you can have a key storage solution that's actually safe without dropping the, the hex on the, on the tweet. And I think this is exactly how hardware signer but Ben Arc also works, right? It's just you handle that event in your favorite language, JavaScript. Yeah, sign event. Um, okay, but a blog stack. That's, that's another very cool one. It's, it's, it's just like Hubla.news. I didn't know they had that at the same time. Uh, both of these are doing uh, long form notes. Long form notes itself, uh, is it uh, NIP 53? 23. 23. 23. Uh, and the uh, cool thing about those is that there is a, a, a convention for how to replace that note with an updated note. So, you know, because notes, you can only write them once, sign them once, right? Uh, nothing on Nostr is uh, deletable or editable, editable. So we try as clients to just pretend we're doing that. Uh, what's cool about the, the uh, NIP uh, 23 uh, long form note is that um, you say you, you, you publish your very long note um, and then you wanna edit it, you can sign a new note saying that this one is the newer version of that previous one uh, and then it shows up there, like magically, uh, uh, as the, the new default note. Uh, so you can have proper blog editing. And we have so many more things to go through. Look at this, NBK. But oh, yeah, we, think... only, we only have one more minute, so. We're yeah. going to need a new conference just for that. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, stay with us until the end of the day. We will be talking about that. But anything else you want to cover or? No. No, I, I think that's it. Like, you know, all I ask is projects sort of like uh, try to add uh, more sane release notes, even if you don't have release versions. Uh, try to let the community know about your projects. Um, I will personally try to make an effort at covering more Nostr updates. 
on Bitcoin Dollar Review, but I might make a separate one so I don't trigger the people who are Nostr have Nostr derangement syndrome. Parker. Uh, Parker. <laughs> uh, Mayor Lewis. Yeah, Mayor Lewis. Um, but uh, no, this is exciting. I mean, and, and we don't even cover here, like probably, like this is probably, no, 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 yeah, I, this is like 10%. Oh, NDK uh, is coming, right? And, yeah. and Spyro is going to fund it. Uh, there we go. And uh, right, Steve Lee? Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, this is maybe 10% of what's going on. There's a lot going on. Uh, and, and thank you so much for listening through this and uh, all your questions. Thank you guys for helping Thank you host. all. Woo. Sorry to cut you guys off, because I know that could have probably gone literally all day. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate you guys. We're going to uh, jump right in the next one. Max, if you want to come up just to get set up. So one of the things that I think has been a common theme throughout this unconference has been how do we actually monetize? Um, how do people Check. keep the lights on uh, while providing these great services and products that we all use and we all love? Um, one of those ways is just with value for value through Zaps. Uh, but Max Webster, who's our next speaker, is going to be walking us through Noster and venture capital and taking a little bit of a, a different approach to that. Um, so I think it should be a really interesting presentation here. Uh, and again, Clearly, money is always a problem, right? And people need a way to keep the lights on and feed their families. So, uh, do you, you plugging in or are you just chilling yeah. there? All right. We're just freestyling today, guys. Awesome. So, without further ado, let's give Max a warm welcome here. Take us away, Max. Thank you. Thank you. Well, first of all, how much fun is this conference? I think this is probably the most fun conference I've ever been to, right? I mean, Costa Rica is gorgeous. Everyone here is building the future. Like, I, I seriously can't imagine a better conference. And it's, it's cool, because like, when you come to the first year of this, you know, it's still a lot of hackers, still a lot of people that are just tinkering. Every year, it'll get a little bit more developed and maybe a little less uh, authentic. Hopefully, we can keep a lot of that authenticity. But this year is special, so really happy to be here. I proposed this talk mostly because I know that Nostra is primarily open source, which I love. But I also know that open source can be difficult to fund. And I know a lot of people are thinking about what sort of models are going to work in the future for open source to create sustainable businesses. And so I wanted to give some of my thoughts on how I'm thinking about this going forward with venture capital, um, which, to be clear, I think is not necessarily the right move for many projects, maybe even most projects. Um, but I don't think that it's mutually exclusive with doing great open source work. Um, so I wanted to cover a couple of quick things and then just quickly turn it over to the audience for any questions you guys have. I wanted to cover a little bit the thesis I have and how I see this uh, evolving, why I'm so excited about Noster. I wanted to mention a few of the, uh, how I think about evaluating early stage projects. I think that's probably gonna be useful for you guys as you think about potentially raising. And then I wanna talk about some of the business models and business types that I'm excited about. Does that sound good? All right, let's go. So first of all, in terms of the thesis, what I'm so excited about is, you know, I feel like we're rebuilding the internet right now. Uh, I really do, and I think that it's not only that it's going to be a much more open internet that people can hack on, as we're seeing with Nostr, but it's also an internet with native payments built in. The way I think about it is we have three new protocols which don't have to work together. They're all incredible independent pieces of technology. But when you loop them together, the super network effects that form are just, I think people are going to be shocked at how many new kinds of applications are built and how much we're able to increase the pie of global commerce. I think orders of magnitude. And so those are obviously Bitcoin, right, which is the decentralized protocol for money, amazing, or value. Lightning, the decentralized protocol for payments, amazing. And now Noster, the decentralized protocol for messaging or information. Each of those are standalone incredible pieces of technology. But when you put them together, Lightning makes Bitcoin useful. And now with Lightning payments, you can have sustainable business models for things like clients and things like uh, relays, which means we can actually scale this to a global scale. So when you put them all together, it's like a very magical thing. And I'm, I'm super stoked. In fact, I pinch myself sometimes. It's like, how does everyone not see that this is the new internet, right? I feel like we, we're in on this little weird weird secret, uh, and it's very exciting. Um, so yeah, but that's, that's the fun of being early. So when I think about you know, funding early stage projects, um, 
and this hopefully is useful to you guys as you're thinking about potentially whether or not to raise money. The first thing is you have to understand kind of like what you want. If you don't want to go and build a big business, that's totally fine. Um, I think that, you know, historically doing donations uh, has been difficult in open source software, but it's easier now than ever before with things like Zaps and Lightning Network payments, but it's still tough. Um, so that model can work, and I hope we see a lot more sort of solo devs that are able to get independent funding from the community. I think there's going to be a lot of new models. Um, shout out to my man, G Sovereignty over here, who's come up with NOS Rocket, which I think is a really cool way of thinking about, uh, the way I see it is like, what is the 21st century corporation natively in the internet built like, um, where those that are doing the work own the shares. I think it's an awesome idea, and I hope we see a lot of experimentation around that. But I think in the short term, we're also going to see a lot uh, of traditional open source business models work in Nostra as well, right? And so when you think, what does it actually mean? Open source business models, you know, there's a lot of big companies like MongoDB or Elastic where all of their code is completely open source. And these guys are essentially able to monetize through hosting services for big businesses, right? And so the way I like to think about it in open source is that nothing is actually ever technically free, right? I think about if you want to use that software, you can pay for it in one of two ways. You can pay for it with your time and talent, or you can pay for it with money. And for those of us here, you know, we're all into tinkering, probably want to pay for it with time, super exciting. Big businesses don't have as much time, but they have a lot of money, right? And so I think that's a model that, uh, frankly, is going to get much bigger in traditional software as all software goes open source, and you're able to give everything away for free, but essentially handhold and host for those who don't want to do it, right? And I think really big businesses to this uh, tune of unicorns and decacorns can get built that way. In the traditional lightning world, uh, I've invested heavily in a bunch of those type of projects, things like Ellen Bits, um, which I think is exploring that kind of a route right now. In addition, though, in the Nostr world, we have new kinds of services that you can potentially tie into your application or client. So now, you know, in the old open source world, there were no native payments, but now we have native payments. And so you have the potential potentially to integrate a wallet that could be custodial into your app that takes a cut of all of the uh, payments you do. You could do it non-custodially with something like the Breeze SDK, and, and there, you know, you're able to potentially take financial uh, cuts from things like routing or swap services, which I think are going to be much bigger in the future than people realize. And then on top of that, you also have new opportunities around data and analysis. And these are the business models that I'm actually most excited about. Um, I put out a, uh, a paper last summer called How to Disrupt Google. And my primary thesis of this paper is that when you can attach information to value, when you can upvote a piece of information with real value, that's a much stronger signal than Google's PageRank, and that's a really, really powerful primitive. Um, what was missing, though, was the public social graph, which we now have with Noster. And so as we see people experimenting with the mashup of value rank and then this open social graph, I think there's going to be all kinds of new analytics plays, search and discovery plays, and uh, this is the thing I'm most excited about. So if you're thinking about any of those particular questions around essentially building the next Google, that's what I'm most excited about. So anyways, that's just to give you guys a flavor of some of the different kinds of business models and things I think are interesting and could both be open source and extremely aligned with Nostra values, but also could turn into potentially very profitable businesses as well. Um, in terms of what I think about as I'm evaluating a company, because I think this could be interesting to you guys, you know, I have a fund, a very early stage fund called Hive Mind Ventures. We typically write checks like 250K to a mil, so very, very, very early. And I like to invest when it's just one, two, maybe three people tinkering, but tinkering with the right space. And so I'm less concerned with business models because I think we're so early in Nostr that all those things are going to emerge and you have to be very, very nimble. Like those who can be the most nimble are the most likely to win is a big part of my thesis. And so I basically look for three things when I'm investing. I look for people who are insanely smart, who have great taste, and who ship fast. Because again, I think speed of shipping is probably the most important thing here. Taste, intelligence, ship fast, and that's it. And so that's kind of my strategy. I love to play pre-seed. I will do some later stage stuff as well. But in the pre-seed stage, it's all about the person and are they asking the right questions and how fast can they move. Um, so anyways, that's an overview of how I think about venture capital, how I think about how it can mash up well with open source. Um, but I wanted to turn it over to you guys, see what other questions y'all might have. Um, and uh, yeah, I know we have a, a couple other investors in the audience as well. So, um, you know, I. I think it's great that we had this opportunity for everyone to get to meet each other and, and ask questions. So, yeah, w what questions do you guys have? Okay. <laughs> oh, and th this, is, this is Andy who has another venture fund called Ego Death Capital as well, and they're also investing in Bitcoin and, and Nostra. 
And DK, I don't know if you want to, yeah. Sure. So uh, in the past, I don't know, 20 years, there have been a few really uh, obvious examples of how open source software has been kind of grown at scale and built big businesses. Yeah. And, you know, kind of in traditional, let's call it traditional enterprise software open source models. And I wonder if you have thoughts around how those models may play out again or be relevant here, or if you think it's going to be all kind of the lightning payments and kind of fees on payments or sort of what the mix might be. So th this is what's so exciting in this early stage is that we really don't know yet, right? Um, I'll make sure you can still see me there. There's a lot of experimentation that's going to happen, and I think some of the models will be the exact same that we've seen in the past, but other new models are going to emerge as well. I think one thesis I have, and I know uh, one, of your, one of your friends um, at OSS Capital is very bullish on this idea that in the future, all software in the world is going to be open source. And I agree with that. So I think actually we haven't even seen the tip of the iceberg for open source in traditional software. Open source is strictly more efficient. You know, the way I think about it is no matter how good you are with a particular company and no matter how much money you have to hire, you're always going to have more good developers who are not working for you. Right. So in the long run, I think open source has to win at the like sort of uh, the base protocol level. And so we've seen some big companies that have emerged just doing hosting for open source products. WordPress, MongoDB, Elastic, these are just a few examples. And they've been big wins. But again, I think we're just scratching the, the tip of the iceberg with how many companies will be open core companies, companies building on open source projects in the future. And now, you know, I think in the sort of Noster world with Lightning, I think hosting and service are still going to be really good models that work. But I think now we have this additional new primitive, right, which is payments. And when you have payments built in through Lightning, there's the opportunity to take a cut from these Lightning payments or to provide additional financial services around them. That could be done custodially or non-custodially. And so if you think about it, imagine you have a client where, you know, uh, like something like Domus, um, I don't know if this is the right idea, but if they had a custodial wallet, right, you know, Will could potentially take a small cut of every zap that goes through there. Even if they did it non-custodially with something like the Breeze SDK, which I think will continue to mature, then he could still take, you know, by opening a channel to them, the routing fees and potentially, you know, uh, a fee on any swaps that he provide for them to get between layer one and layer two. To that point, I actually think that the big winners in a lot of Lightning and Bitcoin is still going to be exchange. And I think Noster is going to reveal this to a lot of people. I think Coinbase was kind of the AOL, right? Like what they did is they did exchange, but they did exchange between all these tokens, which are ultimately on networks that are intranets and will die. But the big exchange opportunity there is still both between layer one and layer two, Bitcoin and Lightning, and then any other assets that come on top of layer two, a layer three. And so I think a lot of Noster projects can potentially use those lightning primitives and the exchange services to monetize open source projects. Thank and the you. one thing I would add on that is I think Noster in general, what, what a business model looks like on an open source decentralized protocol is going to be very different. So all of Web 2.0 kind of got stuck in these really like fixed business models and there wasn't that much room for innovation in business model. And now I think it's, to your point, like it's so exciting to see potential innovation. Um, we've seen it in companies like Discord, for instance. They are a very, very profitable company um, and you don't have to pay for an account. They don't give you advertising. They basically have this sort of subscription model where you get certain benefits, um, which are fun, like badges, things like that. And people are more and more willing to pay for value that they receive. So there's a big trend for people willing to subscribe to things, to pay for a freemium version because it's like fun and better. Um, and so I think there's a lot of kind of thinking around that, I think also on transaction fees. So I think it's really exciting to think about technology. Like obviously that's incredible what's going on right now in Noster. And it's also this opportunity to actually think about business models and what's going to be engaging, fun, exciting, and, val and, and providing value. And it's going to be not so much around like creating a monopoly that using network effects, which is effectively what a Twitter, what Instagram, Facebook have done, and then they're basically giving you what provides value to them, so extracting value. You're not going to be able to do that on Noster. You're going to have to think about how you provide value and what value you're receiving in exchange. So it's really about providing a really amazing user experience that people actually just want to pay you for because they love it. Um, and that's really where I see kind of this 
huge amount of value creation coming out of Nostra because now you actually have to provide value to people for them to use your product. And one more thing that um, on the transaction fees I think is important is I think it's very possible in an open source world, you know, the margins are going to go down a lot, but that's okay because the absolute numbers are going to go up. And so your take rate on some of this stuff, you know, in, in the fiat world is like 3%. Maybe in this new world, it's an order of magnitude lower, but the size of the pie is a thousand times bigger. And I think that's what people, you know, still haven't wrapped their head around with the potential with Nostr is I, I think Nostr is what takes Bitcoin Lightning mainstream. And so as you see all these new experiments come out, think about, you know, the internet. I think one thing that people got shocked on is how big internet companies were. I think people underestimated the size of internet markets. But that's like with six billion people that can't participate. And that's without micropayments. And that's without all these new weird business models that we're gonna dream up on Nostr. So I, I think to me the big thing is just the pie is gonna be so, so, so much bigger. Can you talk about your recommendations of what should you bootstrap versus VC specifically within Austria and open source? Yeah, I mean, I think this comes down to a personal question. Um, bootstrapping has a lot of advantages, right? You own the company, you can kind of do whatever you want. And then obviously it means you have fewer resources to pay yourself, to get a team, to you know test faster and get it off the ground. Um, I am of the belief that we'll see some venture-backed companies that get really big with very small teams, right? Like WhatsApp had you know, fewer than 10 people, and I, I think that's possible. Um, but I think that, yeah, I mean, the reality is if you try and build a venture-backed company, and you are essentially saying, we want this thing to be big, we want this thing to be something, you know, as a just back of the envelope math to understand how venture capitalists think, whatever check that you know, I'm gonna write into a company, I need that to be able to return the fund. Okay, so just to give you an idea of the back of the envelope math, have you guys like, are y'all familiar a little bit with how this works, show of hands? Okay, so back of the envelope math, if I put $250,000 into a company and I have a $21 million fund, I need that company to at least 100X in size to be a venture backable opportunity, right? And so that means it needs to get really, really big. And that's just like very simple math. If that is shooting for something that big is not of interest to you, and that's totally fine. In fact, I think 98% of projects are not gonna be venture backed. Um, but I think that's the kind of thing to understand is from a venture capitalist mindset, we have to return the fund on every check we write. And so whether or not you kind of wanna sign up for that is, is, is a kind of a personal decision. The benefit of taking VC obviously is you have resources to experiment and hopefully you know, people that will partner with you help you make the right connections. But at the end of the day, I think it all comes down to what you want. Yeah, I would just, I, I completely agree with everything. Um, I would just add, um, with venture, it's like, it's rocket fuel is how we think about it. And why that's become really the predominant way of funding in technology is at early stage of technological development, there's so much competition. And so anyone can just hack around, can build something. And so if you have one company that has venture, capital, they can actually then hire a team, they can go to market, they can actually bring their technology to market. And as we all know, it's not always the best product that wins at the end of the day, unfortunately. Often it's the product that was able to get their product in the hands of consumers before any other product was able to do that. And so it, it, it's to Max's point completely, if, if that's what you want, you wanna be like the biggest company in this space, you wanna win, you wanna dominate it, that's awesome and then potentially venture works for you. Um, and if not, if you want to create a hobby project, you can create really great cash flow. You can create a business that really sustains you, brings you a lot of income. And maybe the best way to do that is bootstrapping. I know on my team, like the three GPs in our fund, all of us have bootstrapped businesses, ironically. And there's a huge amount of value. So it really depends on the project. It really depends on. And I think also like what, what you said, we at least, and I know you as well, like we really try and support founders so much. And so I think there's also like that support that comes with having a venture partner. Like for us, it's a partnership. We want to help our founders to be successful in whatever way we can. Um, and so I think if you're if you're a solo solo entrepreneur, I've done that. It's really tough. And having someone in your court that's there to help you whenever you need it, um, that's also I think what what is a benefit of, of venture. Totally. And one more thing I wanted to add on this just came to me is 
a certain profile that I, I like is if you're an open source project and you're on the fence on should we turn this into a company or not, maybe you should, maybe you shouldn't. But I am comfortable with the risk that in open source things can get really big really fast. And so if things can get really big really fast, I'm of the belief that even if maybe you know building a company wasn't always your first um, your first goal, if you get big enough, there will be ways to do things like hosting and support. And so if an open source project can grow fast enough, like I, I, I'm comfortable with that risk as well. I'm gonna add one more thing actually, which I think you'll definitely agree with, <laughs> is make sure you have values aligned investors. Um, that's super, super important because you're gonna be invading on business models, making all of these decisions, and you want investors that support you in those decisions and that you're really upfront and making sure that like you're aligned. So we look for entrepreneurs that are aligned on values with us and we think that entrepreneurs should work with us if they believe we're aligned on values. I, I find it interesting as I'm, as I'm listening to this that there's some, uh, some implicit assumptions that I hear in some of the language, which is almost like if, if venture capital has, needs to meet like a 100x return, for example, to justify it, when does it, we look at the distinction between vulture capitalism and venture capitalism? When the intention is to extract such a great, much larger amount, in order for that, you need to establish priorities for expansion and to be able to extract those resources for the system to justify the initial investment, which automatically determines a certain mindset and approach to a project. And some of the things I heard were like, you know, if you want to start a small project or a hobby project, that's great. But if you want to go really big and you want to dominate, right, then you need the rocket fuel to get there. And doesn't that kind of feed into some of the same kind of mindset, extractive mindset that is a generator function for the kinds of, uh, for the kinds of systems and ways of operating that these kinds of open source protocols could actually be a solution and answer to when you really get on the grassroots level. And I don't want to be naive about it. Like you said, you're coming from a business world, but you know, I think it's interesting to look at what are some of the generator functions that lead to some self-termination if you're playing a finite game versus an infinite game, yeah. right? In an infinite game, you got to have a different value set. And so when you have rivalrous dynamics in a system of finite resources, what tends to happen is that you start to lead towards a, f a form of self-termination in the long term. So how do you think of that, like if, if, if say if something like Noster is trying to play an infinite game rather than a finite game, but it has to adhere to the rules that work well in finite game systems, how are you going to reconcile that with something like with, with venture capital? Is there another way outside of venture capital to meet the needs that's somewhat of a hybrid that's not like, well, if you want to bootstrap it and be mom and pop, then you know, you're only going to be this big, or you need to post for a 100x return to justify investment, What's that alternative kind of solution that's an infinite game approach? I'm kind of interested in that. I don't necessarily agree that it needs to be an infinite game. I mean, even Bitcoin, we invest in companies in the Bitcoin space. I think it's naive to think that Bitcoin is going to exist indefinitely. I certainly think it's going to exist for a very long period of time. Um, but everything, technology, civilization, humanity, society, all moves in cycles at the end of the day. Um, so I, I don't... And maybe we're like not speaking the same language in terms of what, what we're saying. Um, I do think that we as a fund, and I think you're the same, all the funds in the space, we're investing on open source protocols and there's a reason we're doing that. That's because we are so aligned on values. That's what we wanna see in the world. The whole reason we're creating the fund is because we want Bitcoin to win. I see Nostr as being an incredible application of Bitcoin that brings Bitcoin everywhere and it's totally values aligned. And so we're having to think differently around how businesses will work. Um, we're having to think, I guess, to what I was saying before, it's no longer the approach of traditional venture or traditional businesses of how can I create a business that has such big network effect that it effectively has a monopoly in the space and therefore I can extract value. That's just not gonna work. The only way that I will be able to build a business that is able to receive value from customers is by providing value to those customers. And I see that as a really, really fundamental shift that maybe a lot of people, and we're just starting to really appreciate what that looks like. Um, and so it's really about 
to build a business that continues to be successful, you're going to have to continue to deliver to provide value. And that's what we're looking for in founders and businesses. Yeah, I, I would say to your question, it's a great question. And you very well might be right. Um, I think that, you know, I mentioned what, what G Sovereignty is doing with Nosrocket. Like, there will be new forms in the future, 10, 20, 30 years out, that maybe are more cooperative like platforms. And I think that's going to be great. I think the reality, though, is that to get from here to there, you know, we, we exist in a certain set of, uh, you know, conditions right now, right? And so people that are looking for ways, and especially like for me when I go super, super early, a lot of that money is, hey, I want to quit my job and hire a team of like two, three people. And I hope we find ways to do more of that with open source. There are great people doing a lot of open source donation, you know, today. But, you know, if you talk to someone like, you know, I was talking to Ben yesterday with Ellen Bits, like taking a very small amount of money there allowed that project to accelerate very, very quickly, right? And so the way I think about it is, one, I mean, you have to, you know, sort of align with your investor on this. Um, for me, when I'm investing in a lot of these open source projects, you know, I am investing kind of with eyes wide open, right? I know I'm working with, with sort of idealistic hackers. Like at the end of the day, before I was a venture capitalist, I was a fan of all of this and, and I still am. And so I think that the way I look at it is if we're taking enough bets on enough of these projects, some are going to get so big so quickly that even if they're not extracted, right? Like a project like that, I don't think is extracted at all. They're literally giving everything away for free. But there will inevitably be, you know, use cases, businesses that say, listen, we just want to pay for this thing, right? And I still think in a pie that large, you can still generate incredible returns. And so that's the way I think about investing this. If I'm investing in enough open source projects at the early stage, we don't need to like hustle to be super extractive. Those that find true product market fit will explode on their own. And whether or not, you know, those founders want to take future venture capital, maybe they do, maybe they don't. Um, but I do think in the future, there will be new models that arise. It won't be this forever. Ha and, and I would love one day to be put out of a job by the community here. That would be freaking awesome. Um, I, I sincerely hope that happens. And I think it will. But I think it's going to take time. And so the other thing I would say is just one thing that I would maybe, you know, push back a little bit in, in your question, your language is the only way to get 100x return is to be extractive. And I think that's wrong. I think that is sort of the old model of thinking, which is I win, you lose. If you think about sort of the infinite game analogy, if you are providing enough value, as you said, to enough people, right, you will be able to get really, really huge revenue streams that are not extractive in nature. And I know that's a totally new paradigm. I know that that, you know, right now it's just words. Let's wait and see what actually happens. I know there's a lot of reason not to trust VC based on what's happened in, in years past. Um, but that's what I hope happens. And I truly believe it's possible in a world where a project like that can get paid natively in SATs for hosting. I think, I think you can get some really big outcomes. Okay. Oh, okay. We want to wrap up whenever because I know, I know we've got, got a great one. Maybe we'll do one more question and then uh, we'll hand it over. Yeah. I was the closest one, so I get it. Uh, all right. Uh, so following up, up on the previous question, which is an important one, and you kind of answered a lot of it already, um, but I just want to kind of share my casual observation of the VC ecosystem, that uh, uh, specifically the VCs that uh, focus on Bitcoin only type of uh, businesses. Um, uh, when compared to other venture capitalists, which we can also call vulture capitalists, I haven't seen a pattern of um, behavior that um, uh, drives towards maximizing the, the, the amount of value they can extract from it. So um, I'd like your take on um, how you think about uh, supporting companies that are pursuing some sort of monopolistic uh, position in the marketplace, uh, which inevitably, if they're successful, inevitably kind of implode the whole space and the whole uh, sort of um, the, the value that's been created uh, by everyone versus uh, businesses that um, kind of grow the pie, so to speak. And uh, you, Max, you mentioned, uh, you know, the, the, the pie might be a thousand times bigger. so. So, uh, you know, that works for everyone. Uh, so, uh, given uh, that your, I think both of your funds are uh, focusing on early stage companies, and Noster obviously is an extremely early stage technology, how do you think about returns and how do you think about the timelines 
for, for those returns, as well as kind of um, supporting or pursuing monopolistic kind of uh, strategies versus growing the pie. I think on just the timeline point, um, this is gonna take, you know what, I have no idea. <laughs> is, is the short answer. I think we're all, the pace of acceleration that's going on in Noster and Bitcoin at the moment is insane. It's pretty hard for us to comprehend. Jeff, my business partner, Jeff Booth, Jeff Booth, apologies, um, always talks about this kind of exponential curve and humans are not able to comprehend what an exponential curve looks like. And it really feels like we have exponential growth in Noster right now. So things could play out really quickly and our fund is set up for the long term. So we want to give founders the time to build out a business, to figure it out, to, to see how the ecosystem develops and give them the time to, to build what they want to build um, and to see it out. In terms of monopolies, um, I do think throughout history in almost every industry, there has been a natural tendency towards a winner takes all. I really genuinely think that building on a decentralized protocol like Nostra could change that. And I would really, really like to see that happen. Um, and to your point, there could be a few winners in each in each um, category that are constantly competing and hence able to really, are required to provide that value and, and you're not going to have a monopolistic um, environment anymore. So that's what I would love to see. Um, and, and it's just going to, time's going to tell. Um, to answer each of those, time frame for me, I have a 10 year sort of time frame for my fund. That's the, the rough idea. Um, I hope it goes much faster and I think it very well could. I think we're definitely on an exponential. I do think there'll be some stops and starts, right? I think we're probably right now like seeing like the mosaic phase of the browser. Um, now, is it gonna take two years to get to the next one? Is it gonna take two months? Like honestly, we're moving so fast, like who knows? Um, I hope it's two months. I think it very well could be. Um, and then I guess in just in terms of the, the life cycle, I mean like, look, I, I have a traditional fund, right? I raise from LPs and then they have certain expectations. Those expectations are roughly 10 year uh, returns. The good news though, and this is something that I would ask for all of your VCs, and I imagine it's true for a lot of the Bitcoin VCs, um, I mean, the vast majority of my LPs are down for the cause, right? And so this is, this is the thing, like if you're, if you're working with funds and LPs that maybe are more in the old world, then they have a different model of thing, a different set of expectations, a different risk profile that they're comfortable with. If you have a group that's already extremely orange-pilled, extremely nostril-pilled, wants to see this thing succeed, they probably have a lot of Bitcoin, so they're going to do well no matter what happens, then that's a very different risk profile that we're able to take. So that's just kind of one set of considerations to think through. Um, in terms of the monopoly question, the way I think about this is it doesn't really matter what I think. Like, at the end of the day, and my buddy DK, who asked the first question, he's over there, he has a beautiful phrase where he says, gravity wells exist and gravity is gonna go where gravity is gonna go. It really doesn't matter what I think. Like a venture capitalist coming in and saying, let's you know, make this thing win, like eh, maybe on the margin it can help a little bit. Things are gonna win or they're not gonna win. And I think it's gonna be based on the conditions in society at that moment, right? And so there are certain business models and certain projects that trend towards centralization and there are certain that don't. You know, my best guess is in the future there will be, I don't know, 10, 20 re relays that are really big. Um, but, you know, the, the beautiful thing that I'll say for all of this, with the relays, the clients, everything is, they're switching. There's easy switching costs, right? If someone gets too abusive, the beautiful thing about building on top of Nostra is there's a built-in check and balance. And that built-in check and balance is you just leave, right? And so as long as that exists, we're all good. Now, I do think when I put on my VC hat, right, like I have the Nostra super like cypherpunk fan hat, which is great. And then as I put on my VC hat, or of course I would like to make great returns, then I think about, okay, well, where is gravity gonna flow that natural monopolies exist? That's why, as I mentioned, I'm extremely excited around a lot of this data analysis and some of the search and discovery stuff. I think there's many reasons to believe that's the case. And whether I like it or not, I just, I think it's reality and that's, that's what I'm betting on. And I think with that, uh, we'll turn it over to someone w way more interesting with a lot more projects. So thank you all very much for your time. Thank you guys so much. All right, guys. We're welcoming back, I think, an open source stage veteran at this point. Um, <laughs> 
I, who I'm sure probably wrote some code in the couple minutes that he was sitting down. Did you? He did. Um, <laughs> so that's pretty incredible. Uh, quick, wanted to just give a, uh, a shout out to the remote production team. So it's uh, Play Full Screen. Uh, they're in Vancouver, Canada. Um, Nathan, Ustani, and Patrick. Uh, can we just give them a round of applause for enabling this, this live stream and everything else? And as always, to our on-site AV crew as well. These guys are here working hard. They're not leaving the camera, and we appreciate you guys. Can we just give them a quick round as well? Thank you, Rob. So a lot of the focus on Nostra and the discussions around it are involving social media, right? Um, you know, and even just the, the original write-up on the protocol itself is talking about a lot of other social media implementations, why they fail, uh, you know, don't, don't really solve any problems. Um, and why Nostra is better. But uh, Pablo's gonna walk us through some non-social media use cases. So give Pablo a warm welcome back to the stage and we'll get going. Thank you. Water. Hey guys, no slides because I didn't finish them, sorry. <laughs> so uh, I think I'm gonna riff a little bit for just explore the idea of non-social media Nostra. Um, I've been told that my joke doesn't land. I'm gonna try it anyway. It's Speaking, <laughs> speaking about non-social media Nostr is like speaking about the non-tongue part of the cow. It's like this sliver of, like social media is so small of what Nostr is, it didn't land for, for what it's worth. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay, um, so Nostr, the, the social, media, social media use case for Nostr is it's very obvious. Um, I think someone yesterday said that people keep saying that they could have written Twitter in six hours, in a day, and that they actually wrote in like six hours or something like that. It's 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 very obvious. It's a very simple use case. It's very understandable. The data model is very easy. Um, so it's a, it's a good place to start. The demand for something like this is 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 there uh, in some way. I mean, we're here, and social media and is all that exists right now for the most part. Um, but I think the, the interesting part of, of Nostr comes after we abandon this idea that we think Nostr and we think Twitter experience. Uh, it, it's not. Uh, Nostr is just a way to send back and forth messages that you can trust that they've been written by uh, a pub key. And then we infer that a pub key is someone that you know, we trust or we know or whatever. Um, the, the idea that we get with um, what excites me about the non-social media uses of Nostr is that when you have data, so right now with what's been called Web 2.0 is all these silos of data, right? So you have Amazon data, you have your YouTube data, you have your YouTube identity, maybe it's tied to Google, and maybe you can take that Google authentication. But we have these silos, they're very permission, uh, you, you need access to an API if you want to see what video someone posted. Um, and it's, the, the, there's a lack of data fluidity, right? The data is contained here, and whatever you build on YouTube has, doesn't inform what happens on TikTok, and doesn't inform what happens on Amazon. It has nothing to do with what happened on App Store. Um, so completely siloed. The idea of fixing this or um, allowing data to go from one place to another is not new. Um, it's, it's been there for literally decades. And we used to call it Web 3.0 before Web 3 became something else. And we used to call it Semantic Web, which was a horrible, horrible design. It was never going to work, um, but we tried. Uh, I, I, back in the day, I, I did some projects on, on the semantic web, but it was kind of hopeless. The idea that was that an Amazon would structure the data on, on their website in a way that someone else could go in and see the price, see the image, see the category, see all this data. What's in it for Amazon? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Did they do it? Of course not. Um, because why would they serve this data to someone else? So, Semantic Web was the promise of integrating all the web and all these silos together. It went nowhere. Um, 
So we ended up having these the second class citizen developers where we end up having to scrape the data. So if you want to see Amazon products somewhere else, you need to go in and get the, the page and try to parse it and then this understanding and it's, it simply doesn't scale, it doesn't work. It becomes a, a whack-a-mole kind of um, uh, problem where Amazon is trying to stop you, it just doesn't work. But what happens when this data becomes liquid and you can use like, for example, I, I wrote a, an application called Ananoster where it's like a Craigslist, but the Craigslist pod, the Craigslist style post can be seen or could be seen on, on Damos, or you can comment on, on something that you found on, on, on this Craigslist style site with your Damos application. You can keep a, have a conversation of something that is happening somewhere else, some, somewhere that is in non a Twitter experience. So we saw we start seeing all this meshing of these different use cases. And this is what attracts me the most, because I think there's going to be a lot of second order effect innovations happening when we get the Amazon data and the YouTube data and mesh it together. What comes next? And, and I, I honestly don't know what comes next, and I think that's what's exciting about it. Right now, we could not get the network effects of YouTube and multiply by the network effects of, of Amazon. I, I mean, I'm speaking about not so much network effects of users, I'm speaking about network effects of value. Um, so that's why I'm so um, curious about what's going to happen. I think it's something that could happen in the next year or the next two years, we could start seeing some, some slivers of um, people imagining what will be possible because of this. Um, and I, th I think I, I heard Parker on TFTC, I, I don't know if you guys heard him saying that Nostra is a distraction. And I, I think that he's completely wrong. And the, the non-social uh, media uses of Nostra are the opposite. They are an absolute accelerator of using uh, Bitcoin as for, for its utility. Because we've been, tr for the most part, we've been trying to tell people um, organically, we, tr we told people that you're going to get rich because you buy Bitcoin or that you are going to hold this, this Bitcoin and just keep it there, but, or, you know, go study Austrian economics and you'll become a Bitcoiner. And it's like, no one wants to really read human action. It's just like, just face it. So Bitcoin, Bitcoin through Noster has this awesome utility, it's an in protocol native form of payment that allows us to explore and integrate payments in all these different applications for nothing. It takes five minutes, what it used to take before Stripe, it used to take months to get a merchant account and all these things, but now it's just part of the protocol and it's going to unleash us so much innovation and you see, feeling that utility of Bitcoin, I think it's going to orange peel more people that all companies and all authors and all people we've been able to orange peel in the past decade. Um, oh yeah, and one thing, this is the last thing, and then I'm gonna get Nicolas, uh, MBK was around here, okay. Some people here to, to riff a little bit about non-social uh, media use cases. But one of the things that interests me the most is how, because of how Nostra works, we can build these small, very tailored niche micro applications that give value to replace whatever you're doing on Facebook groups or whatever is similar to Facebook groups. Um, I don't use them, but I, I, there's a word schooling communities using Facebook groups to coordinate. It's this one generic interface that allows people that want to explore this one niche thing um, to, to um, coordinate, to find each other, to collaborate. Because it has to serve the same application, Facebook groups has to serve for um, world schoolers, rock climbers, skaters, whatever it might be. It has to be extremely generic. But we can build something specifically tailored towards world schoolers, build something that is more valuable than the Facebook group, because it's easy, because we can build specifically for that. But it wouldn't work without Nostr, because without Nostr, you need to create an account, you need to find users. There's a lot of work that comes beyond the, just the development of an application to make an application happen. With Nostr, all those problems, the hardest 
problems of launching something are taken care of for you. Um, which allows us to just build for that specific use case. And we don't have to sell Noster on decentralization, censorship resistant, people don't care about that. We don't have to sell Bitcoin on the world is crumbling. If you don't have Bitcoin, you're gonna die. We can just build something that is 10x more valuable than Facebook groups for one community. They won't even know that they're using Noster. They will just happen to see that at some point, their um, world schooling, I, I work school clearly, I work school my kid, uh, but they'll, they'll see that the application that they use for the world schooling coordination is interoperable magically with their, this other interest that they have. And I think that's where sparks will start to happen. Uh, what, what Andy was just saying earlier might happen in two months. It might as well could be. It's, it might not be hyperbole. We need these specific use cases to start feeding the fire. Okay, Nicolas? Nicolas? Come up. Uh, oh, yeah, questions. Yeah. I was just wondering about like private groups versus public groups because I really I can see a lot of interesting use cases, but like where you d d Nostra might be the easier way to build this app for this very specific purpose. What about the cases where maybe I don't want them to broadcast to the world, or or or, or that might be a, a rug pull when they find out that they've been broadcasting this to to BRB.io. Yeah, I think I mean that comes back to what we were talking yesterday about uh, how I see this split where relays stop being commodities, and you could perfectly have this one application that is talking specifically to this relay. Because for, for mainly for these type of use cases, one of the key issues is discoverability, right? So you want the discoverability, and then once you've found the people that you want to interact with, you can take it to an encrypted group uh, DM or something like that. Um, but it solves the, the, the seeding issue, which is usually always, always the hardest. That's why people use these horrible, horrible interfaces of Facebook groups. They are just terrible at what they do. It's just there's nothing better that has network effects. So the interoperability that you talk about, <clears throat> it ultimately comes from the fact that users control their private keys and they can port that across different applications. For like everyday users who you're talking about who might not know they're using Noster, what do you think is a solution for private key management that doesn't just involve them taking that and plugging it into every application that they're using? Like, what are your thoughts on how that's going to evolve in the future? I, I have some theories, but I don't know. Um, my theory is that at some point we'll have some kind of um, browsers that take care of that for you, and when you're ready, you can take your keys in some very simple way. I'm, I'm not sure how it's going to evolve, but I think that's the cool thing that we can experiment with, you know, 10 different, 20 different um, implementations of how to solve that problem. That's, all the key stuff is clearly a problem that we need to solve, and I'm quite hopeful that we will in some way, um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think for at first for onboarding people, we might find ourselves with just you go to a website, you don't even see keys, you don't know that the keys are happening, but you can take them afterwards. And hopefully someday we'll have revocation, so that <laughs> you're not wrecked. Yeah. All right, shall we? Kola, she's sovereignty was here. Oh, there you go. Okay, come here. MBK, MBK to the stage, MBK, y you want to riff on non-social media use cases for Nostr? Sure. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's the stand-up. Oh, it's the stand-up? <laughs> you are the stand-up. Okay. Okay. Hello again. Okay, so yeah, um, yeah. What I, what I want to explore is um, your takes. Like, I know you are interested in one, and you are building one, non-social media use cases for for Noster. So.
So why don't you guys, what, what I'm interested in is why what you are guys are interested in is not, oh, the, uh, oh, the Noster bandwagon. What's special about Noster? Why use Noster? Okay, I can start. Um, so I think there is a huge need for Bitcoin to succeed. It's peer-to-peer -peer trading. And we saw last month or two months ago, there was one of the main exchanges that was Bitcoin only, local Bitcoin, that was shut down. And when you think about it, the main reason is, like, like they were doing huge volume five years ago, like $20 million per year. There was one of a significant exchange. And I think they get eventually replaced by other platform like Paxful or Binance Peer2Peer, -peer, which is the biggest peer-to-peer -peer platform today. And they just get more money because they are not necessarily focused on Bitcoin. They, you know, you on board to their platform because they say, hey, you know, we sell you Bitcoin, but you on to the platform and then they sell you all this other, you know, shitcoin stuff. And this is how they make money really at the end of the day. And so it, it may think about, okay, is there anything we can do on this for peer-to-peer -peer platform to succeed? The challenge is one platform, if you're Bitcoin only, you will never get as much volume as, you know, if you're selling a thousand coin. And so this is a pretty challenging problem. And it's also super important to understand that you don't need any of that if you're living in the US, if you're living in Europe, you know, you have liquid exchange. But if you're traveling in developing country and there is no exchange with another book, you need a thriving peer-to-peer -peer platform. I've been traveling in, in Morocco and in Ghana over the last couple of months, and I, I, I try to, okay, I have Bitcoin, I need cash, like how do I get it? And going through the experience is extremely important to understand how people that need Bitcoin the most in developing country, like what are they dealing with? And I think a solution is to use Nostr. The reason is what makes those platform very powerful is that if you're a trader, the way this works is like, you, let's say you want to sell $100 worth of Bitcoin, you, you go to this platform and there is no order book, so you need to look at a list of order and you say you need to choose who you will be trading with. And the main way you choose is reputation. And so you said, okay, this trader, I've made maybe a thousand trade, you know, it's like a 4.9 star, you know, every trade is very fluent, this guy is very fast. So you're like, you know what, I would work with, with this person. And the reputation, you know, which is what you, when you talk about Amazon uh, uh, e-commerce website, like it, it's very related, it's, it's, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, the, no, why I think Noster is the right solution because there is a embedded reputation system on Noster. You can create your end pub and then you can trade with this. You can build a reputation and people can then comment on that. And if we make maybe some nip, uh, so, some nip for for a trading use case, like we can really see, okay, this person is a real guy. You know, he is connected with other people I know, so he's probably reliable. And we need this reputation anyway for you know any other e-commerce platform or generally you know see is it a legit zap you know so we need to build this reputation system so for me it's it's almost a given that this is coming you know some people will bid it I know if we put this peer-to-peer -peer exchange on Noster the good thing is initially probably what I think is there will be dedicated clients right that are dedicated to say okay you know I I want to sell Bitcoin I want to buy Bitcoin for my local currency. And over time, what I think is there will even be generic, maybe clients that will integrate this NIP and say, you know what, I'm, I'm on Damus, but like if you want to exchange fiat currency with someone else, like it's very seamless. And if we do it like this, then it will really become peer to peer because there is no longer this centralized platform that manages reputation. A, a, a funny email I received after local Bitcoin shut down is Paxful saying, we can help you import your reputation into Paxful, right? And, and if you build on Noster, no, you're no longer dependent on those platform for your reputation. Like you own your reputation, you can move it from a platform to another one. And I think this is a thriving, you know, peer-to-peer -peer is a thriving use case. I think we need that. There is a reason for why we're thinking about it in El Salvador. So in El Salvador, we, we have a, a product called StableSearch which allows you to have stable value for the Bitcoin you receive 
But we're missing the last mile. We're missing the step where, okay, I have $100 worth of Bitcoin in my stablestat account, but if I'm a merchant, I actually want to convert this value into physical cash because most of the vendors I work with do not accept Bitcoin yet. And we need to bridge this last mile. And the good, fi the good thing if we are able to do that, it will incentivize merchants to accept Bitcoin because typically when you sell Bitcoin on a peer-to-peer -peer platform, you sell it at a premium. And now if you say to a merchant, like, not only you can accept Bitcoin, because you know, maybe you will have new type of customer, you will have the more wealthy tourists coming to the country, but also you, you have a new product you can sell, now you can sell Bitcoin, and you can sell at a premium, right? And I mean, this is the case in El Salvador, but if we're able to you know, crack this in El Salvador, if we think about Africa, for instance, people are used to buy and sell mobile money credit, and there is all these local uh, shops everywhere, there is millions of them where you can buy and sell credit, and it will be so much better to be able to buy and sell Bitcoin for like $5 at a time. And I think Nostar is a solution to this problem. Yeah, I mean, think about Nostar as sort of like a, like a, a great decentralized broadcast system, right? With a portable identity. So uh, w what is trade, right? Like you're posting out there something that you want to sell, right? And, and like somebody can reply with like an offer, right? So you can make your bids as a thing. And, and, and that is true for almost any kind of information. So I'm pretty excited about like the fact that you can make, say, a replacement for Substack, right? Substack, what is Substack? It's not like email as you know it. They're just filling up your inbox with stuff that you're interested in, but you're not having a conversation back and forth. Um, so you can create exactly the same thing for free <laughs> and, and push that, but also you can't be censored because it could be uh, sort of re-relayed or stored somewhere else by many different relays. Um, and, and that is true, for example, for open source software, right? Like you can make a offer of a patch with, with Git, so you have the Git diff, right? And you make an offer of that patch and the project maintainer may take that patch uh, into their system. Um, you can do that, say, for example, with uh, Cam Girls. Uh, <laughs> you know, like, uh, what's the name of that thing? Um, There's a huge site. Only fans. Only fans, right? So you can, we don't have a paywall standard yet, but it's going to come. And people may have content that they want to sell, so they're going to make that offer, and somebody may make a, a bid to it, right? Um, and, and, like, they don't, they don't get censored anymore, right? And that could be education in some countries. In some countries, maybe adult content. Uh, I mean, you know, like people are gonna use this for many different things. Um, and because you have the reputation and the ID, you, your, 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 your identity is truly yours, just like a Bitcoin wallet. Like you have the private keys to the ownership of, of like proof of ownership of those coins. In, in Nostar, you have the proof of ownership of your identity. So you can really carry that through every, uh, every use case, uh, is being the market, being the substack, being the only fans, all these things. Um, and you may have multiple identities, right? Maybe you don't want to mix your only fan identity with your uh, substack financial macro reports. Um, and, 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 like, and it's impossible to know who is who, right? But you may want to build two sort of different um, identities. Um, what else do we have bounties for? I mean, there's the GitHub bounty, there was the blogging bounty, somebody's building Ghost replacement, yes. So I, I forget, I'm, I'm really sorry to the person who's building it uh, that I forgot his name, but like one button you press on GitHub, it starts to like host your, your blog system that the notes don't need to be hosted uh, they just live on Nostar relays and they can be pulled by any client. So we essentially we go back to RSS feeds. We can take that because again, it's this broadcast model. Um, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's kind of exciting because it's like endless. Uh, things I don't think we're gonna see a lot is DMs. It's not a great platform for that. Uh, you know, maybe we fix it. Yeah, but like, it, it's not like ideal. Yeah, I think um, the fact that you're creating metadata just for yeah. using DMs. It's more like I have this thing to say or ask or do 
and I push it to the world, right? Uh, and, and the clients will learn to interpret that in the correct format. Is it to show it as a picture? Is it to pull video and audio from some other place to show it to the user? Is it a comment? Um, it's, uh, you know, smart clients, dumb relays is one good way of looking at this. Uh, and it can be private, it can be decentralized, and it can be dis distributed. Right? It, it's the three of them. You can have, say, uh, say for example, you're Microsoft, and you decide to be a little bit less evil, um, and, and you adopt Noster, and, and you have, like, offices all over the world, and you're tired of using Jira, which is crap, um, and you want all your people to participate and see something, right? You can have your private relays, for your corporate stuff, because you can, you know, erase it if you want to, um, and and work that way. You, and maybe the people can transport their identity from, like, inside Microsoft, and also because Microsoft can register your pub key and let you see the contents from that relay. Um, that's true for markets. Maybe you have to pay a fee to be part of your market, right? Uh, and and that relay that does some of smart little things that that solve your problems, right? Uh, anyways. It's pretty endless, the amount of ideas. And, and I think we sort of, we're still thinking dumb ideas. Um, yeah, we're, I think we're still thinking level one ideas. Yes. We haven't thought of what is possible because of this model. You, you know, Jack had a, a, like a good line like a while back, which was uh, at, the, at the pod. Like he said, uh, we're still running away from things. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we're building the things like that exists. You know, we did that in Bitcoin a lot in the early days. Uh, you know, we're just sort of like trying to replace the stuff that we don't like, but it's going to be really cool once we start building the new things that were simply not imaginable yet. Yeah. Um, is, it, is this working? No. Oh. That, okay. Yeah, I think ultimately what it comes down to is that um, Bitcoin is not fixing the world fast enough. Where civilizations collapse exponentially, we're <laughs> probably much closer to it than we think. The money printing is coming though, everything is going to be okay. <laughs> so, um, so I think Nostar is a way where we can, so, so like an, an ASIC miner focuses energy to a pinpoint on SHA-256 and that's what secures Bitcoin. I think Nostar and combined with Bitcoin uh, gives us a way where, where we can focus human action in the same way towards solving problems that we need to solve right now. Yeah, I, I mean... You know, this kind of like, the, the part that dawned to me as like, you know, there's this Nostra thing that people are doing some cool shit with it and I'm like here in my Bitcoin world, you know, I have free, like freedom money, right? But the problem with freedom money is that if you don't have freedom communication, you can't trade. Yeah. Like you really can't, like I need to talk to you, we need to come to an understanding, you know, if that is shipping instructions, if that's how much my product costs, is that like, you know, the specs of my product, whatever it is, but we need to to communicate in order to trade. So, you know, it's, you need freedom communication and freedom money to sort of win. Free, freedom is the ability to do interesting things with other people. So yeah. I think that's yeah. right. Yeah. All right, we need to wrap for the next one. So thank you. Thanks, guys. All right, so uh, people have different ways of making entrances, uh, and some are, uh, are more memorable than others, but uh, Samson Mo has just decided to join us uh, via helicopter, literally just got in like less than an hour ago, and now he's up here on stage to talk about Noster and nation state adoption. So please give Samson an, a welcome to the stage, and Rockstar, welcome back. Let's welcome him, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Samson, mic check. Uh, is this thing on? No. Okay. We get help. Boom. Hello? Yeah. Okay, it's on. Now it's better. Hello, Nostriches. I've been waiting to say that. <laughs> Woo! Let's go, Nostriches. So, strong program, day three. Oh, my God. Uh, I know everyone is excited for NIPS IRL, right? Yeah. So, just, just a heads up. All the guys will be kicked off from the first two rows. Carla will make sure of that. Only like women prepared to be in the first two rows. Everyone participates. 
But before we get to that, we have a lunch. And before we get to lunch, we have our special guest, Samson, here, a Bitcoiner and CEO of uh, Gen3. We're here to talk about your work that you're doing, uh, most interacting with like nation states and politicians lately. And we need to talk about like Noster in that, um, in that view. So Samson, how are you? Like, not bad, doing, just not bad. tired, jet lagged. Jet lagged. Um, Noster, what does Noster mean to you? Like now that you look at someone who has been in Bitcoin for so long, now you see this new wave of Noster. What are your thoughts? What are your observations? What is your feedback? So uh, I'm bullish on Noster. I've been on pretty early, not the earliest, but uh, I found my way there. And uh, I've done a lot of playing around with it as well. I think it's an important part of infrastructure as we move forward. Because if you look at um, the grand scheme of things, you have Bitcoin, and then that gives us sound money. But that's only one piece of the puzzle for improving human civilization and freedom. So if you have money, but you can't spend the money, you still have some problems there. So I see decentralized protocols like Noster and also Keat and Hole Punch as the other part of the equation, which is allowing us to communicate and coordinate the sending of value. Um, I mean, you could use things like Blockstream Satellite or shortwave radio, but I think having social media and communications through things like Noster are an important building block of that future. So if you go and look at things like um, political protests around the world, right? One of the common ways that they crush dissent is to limit their ability to spend yeah. money. So you might have sound money, but if you can't get to a protest, you can't spend money to get somewhere, then it's almost as if uh, the sound money is not valid. And I think the same principle applies to communications too. And we see this time and time again where communications are cracked down on by governments and politicians around the world when things get you know, tumultuous or not to their liking. So having something resilient like Noster will prevent that kind of dystopian future from happening. Yeah, and for me, I, I was talking with a lot of people actually on this, like how Bitcoin was always, for us, Cypherpunk's holy grail. Like if you have that digital like, e-cash and it will allow us to create new technologies. And when I look at Noster, it's like almost like Bitcoin was needed as a stepping stone to this protocol. Uh, to like impact it because as you say Bitcoin is yeah decentralized money Noster decentralized communication and it it's even more important right like yeah. what, what are your thoughts well you need both as I'm saying so I think moving forward it's important to make uh, Noster more resilient to attacks so I think relays present an opportunity to censor because it's just one address. But as we are talking about earlier, there's ways to circumvent that. But that's more of a cat and mouse type of game, right? Like, uh, like say, a, a great firewall <laughs> were to try to censor. They can block things like the Damas relay or any other relays that are publicly known and very popular. And of course, you can do other things to circumvent that. But I think at the end of the day, we, try, we need to try to get um, more people running relays, almost like a full node. So if you look at using a relay, it's like SPV, right, in Bitcoin architecture. If you can get more people running their own relays really simply on their own computers or their own servers, then the network will become harder to attack. So is that also advice for our dear Nostriches in China that are getting yeah, blocked? Like maybe they should run relays and then connect to outside. What do you think about that? approach? Well, I think everyone should try to try to run a relay, especially if they're in a country that they're prone to censorship, because that way you have a, a backdoor. But similar to what we we're talking about earlier, I think there has to be some improvement on the protocol on the communication side, like talking about the DM. So DMs are encrypted, but they're still reliant on sharing the same relay, correct? Yes. So again, if you're running your own relay, that's less of an issue, but maybe there needs to be additional levels to the protocol to handle things like in forwarding communications through other relays and doing that anonymously. Yeah, like masking the message so that you can't see it's a DM, but you can see, hey, relay forward this message, this destination, and that's it. Because right now in Oster, if you're DMing with someone, the whole network knows who you're DMing with and it's not the best experience. Um, 
So let's segue that a little bit into AI because the way that I see Noster is you, we should get to the point where your Noster feed is the feed that's best for you. It's not best for Twitter, it's not best for Facebook, it's not best for TikTok. It should be a feed that's best for you and allows you to become the best version of yourself. You have particularly strong opinions on like how AI can uh, help there. Like, is there, is there any work you're doing with Gen Three Labs on that, as a, or no? Not immediately. So Gen Three is working mainly on yeah. Aqua, uh, Bitcoin Wallet that supports uh, Bitcoin and liquid assets. But um, I think the whole problem with AI is that it is centralized, right? All of the technology that we build generally tends towards centralization. Um, in an ideal world, we'd all have our own sort of AI running like our own Bitcoin node or our own relay. So it's custom made to interact with what you want, right? And curate things that you want and know who you are without you sharing information to another party. But you know, I think we're still early in the AI development stages. So maybe that can be a trend that happens. Um, but maybe that's going to be needed to be paired with some some better microprocessing tech that can compute stuff on your phone or on a, a node at home. But in generally, the technology, in general, the technology we built comes back to bite us ourselves in the ass. Um, if it's so easy to use something for surveillance, like cameras are used for surveillance. The whole internet infrastructure is built in a way that promotes surveillance. There's tons of metadata being leaked all the time in, pretty much everything, right? So I think Noster represents a push where we're trying to actively leverage the technology in a way that is beneficial for ourselves. And instead of backing ourselves into a, a man-made prison where you know, we're surveilled constantly. Yeah, we're in closed garden of Facebook and we're just a gardener there. So is it maybe a combo of Bitcoin node, relay, personal AI? How do you see that? Would, would that be the dream? I think so. I mean, we've got to get Will to start working on that tomorrow. Oh, yeah, Will, another feature request. Now, um, can you tell me more about uh, Gen 3 work? Like, w what is it that you're focusing on? I know it's like Bitcoin, I know it's Lightning, I know it's Liquid. Uh, any plans to tie that yeah, with Noster, or it's mostly like wallet for now? Well, it's a wallet for now. So we took over the Aqua wallet from Blockstream and we've been rebuilding it. We paused for a couple months and now we're about ready to restart development. But it's basically a liquid wallet. And one of the key defining features is that we want to have um, li liquid USDT prominently featured. So you have Bitcoin, Lightning, and then liquid USDT. And one of the goals there is to take away tether volume from the shitcoin chains like <laughs> Ethereum and everything else and getting people using that. Woo! But there's a, like a lot of people are, are really negative towards Liquid, but Liquid is basically eCash, right? It's a, a federation and they cannot censor your transactions and all the transactions are confidential. So if you're using Liquid Tether, it's already eCash. And I think that's really important for the LATAM market. So our goal is that we're going to try to wean people off of using shitcoin Tether and using you know, Tether on sidechains. But at the same time, Jan3 is also known as the nation state Bitcoin adoption company. Um, because we've done some work with El Salvador, uh, we're working with Madeira, Mexico, and Prospera, and maybe Costa Rica, who knows. But uh, Fingers crossed. what we're trying to do is um, educate and work with politicians to roll out a Bitcoin strategy. And that could be a number of things. It could be a Bitcoin law, uh, declaring Bitcoin as legal tender. It could be recognition of Bitcoin as a foreign currency, because it is the currency of uh, El Salvador. Um, it could also just be working with them to adopt Bitcoin in general, maybe through merchants or businesses, because there are countries that don't have capital gains taxes. So if that is the case, you can already use Bitcoin as legal tender. There's no requirement to declare Bitcoin as, as something because the barrier really is cap gains, right? And if we can lower that, then we can restore money to being money. And I think this ties into a lot of incentive alignment with nation states. So nation states, that are prosperous tend to be the ones, either they're printing the money, like the US, so they're, oh, they're, like the, they're the source of the money, so they can do that. But they can survive rapid inflation and fiat money printing. 
but countries that are downstream, that are using the US dollar just as the adopted currency, they just suffer from the effects of that inflation and the money printing. So it makes sense for them to opt into a Bitcoin standard and shift gears, and that is exactly what El Salvador did. So we hope to try to get that message and that line of thinking uh, to other countries, but basically getting them thinking along the lines of restoring money, letting money be money. And I think Costa Rica, we've been doing a lot of research, uh, Edwin, he's my head of marketing here, uh, about what uh, the economy looks like, the energy mix and things like that. But, um, you know, I think Costa Rica is looking for money right now and they're entertaining the idea of global tax, which I don't think is a good idea. So we hope to speak with politicians here and get them thinking outside of the box because we're accustomed to this system where the only way for government to operate is to tax the population. But actually that's not the case with money no. printing, right? The money printing outstrips all the tax revenue by far, by orders of magnitude. And there are examples of the world in the world where you don't need to tax the population. If you're an energy rich country, which Costa Rica is, you can mine Bitcoin. So if you take the example of uh, the UAE, the Emirates, yes. if you're an Emirati, you get paid, you don't pay taxes. And I think this can be a model which a lot of the world adopts because we're still in the phase of Bitcoin adoption where you can still mine Bitcoin. That's not gonna last forever. So the countries that can go first and mine Bitcoin and turn energy into money and prosperity are going to be the winners. So this is kind of what we're trying to no, get people a, on. It's, it's a great message actually. Uh, and for me, it's just a hope that as you're talking with those governments and politicians, there is also a realization that um, just can't control the flow of information the same way you can't control the flow of money with a local currency. So um, when you do look at Nostra as a protocol and like, uh, what would be your message for politicians similar to like, okay, there is a Bitcoin strategy, what would be the Nostra strategy? Well, I'm not sure I would bring up Nostra just yet. So if you, you remember wouldn't. like way back on Bitcoin talk, uh, some people wanted to use Bitcoin to collect donations for WikiLeaks or something like that. And Satoshi said, you know, maybe not yet. Let it mature a bit more. So I wouldn't thrust Noster into the forefront of those discussions yet. Um, but I would start to kind of get them thinking in the direction of money is now information, information is money. And you can't stop information. You can try. Um, you can erect a firewall and block traffic and do all sorts of things. But I wouldn't say, like, you can't stop Noster. I don't think that we want to pick that battle just yet. But um, getting them understanding that you can't really stop Bitcoin and CBDCs are not an option either will lead them to the, what I believe is in the inevitable conclusion that you, know, you have to move to a Bitcoin standard. And accepting that and accepting information is free kind of makes it a no-brainer that Noster is also going to be dominant in the future and you should not try to censor it or stamp it out. Yeah, you can't beat it. Beat it, like join it, yeah. Um, CBDCs, what are your thoughts on, as I said, everyone saw that USDC turned into USD CBDC, like <laughs> overnight. W what is your thoughts on that? Well, I think a lot of countries are looking towards CBDCs and whether they understand that it's a bad thing or not is hard to say. But the net effect is if you push for a CBDC, it's limiting freedom and it's li limiting economic potential too. But the biggest challenge is I think most governments don't consider the entire implications of any particular system that they want to implement. And I think COVID is a good example of that. So they yeah. thought, we'll implement COVID screening at the airport. Well, the airport is a very delicate system that barely functions as is. And you overlay one more element of work, which is you yes. have the people at the counter screen how do they verify information and make sure it's correct? How do they know all the different protocols in every other place? And this is why travel was so bad because they didn't consider the holistic system. Now, I think it's the same case for CBDCs. They haven't really thought about how they're going to implement it. But the only way you can do a CBDC and have adoption is to mandate it and force it on the people. But the pitch is optionality, which is, this is good for you. It's, uh, it makes your life easier, you know? It's, it's good for Thank your Thank you, Samson. But people quickly figure out that that is not really money, right? Because you've eroded the value proposition of money by taking away 
the privacy, the bearer aspect, the ability to freely transact it. So anytime you do that, money degrades and it'll fail eventually, and that's why fiat money fails, because it eroded over time to become the hollowed out shell that it is today. But at one point, it was good. It was a bearer certificate to redeem gold, right? And you could just take money from anybody, and there's no concept of using money as surveillance. Mm -hmm. But um, a CBDC is all of those bad things rolled up into one, and it's never going to work. And we see examples of this. So Nigeria's e-Naira, um, there's like 1%, less than 1% adoption. So now they're yeah. moving into uh, demonetiz demonetization, like preventing people from withdrawing cash and using their, their own money. And I think even in China, which they have a very good lockdown on information, yeah. there's very slow adoption of CEVDC, right? Because people in, generally, in general know what money is and they, they like money as money. So they, you might brainwash some people yeah. And politicians may come to an, the wrong understanding that this is a new innovation and it competes with Bitcoin, but it doesn't. Uh, yeah. And they can find out the hard way or we can try to educate them. And that's one of the things that we try to do too. No, thank you for that work because we didn't even touch on the fact that as you roll out CBDC as a, as a government, as a country, there's a completely new honeypot, like troves of information that now can be stolen by shadowy super coders, hackers, and then used against your citizens. And this happened not with money and like transactions, which, which would be even worse, but it happened with medical data. It happened in those cases, and we haven't even touched on that. But we're close to the time. We haven't touched on a lot of topics. Maybe we'll, you and I will do another panel. But for this one, is there anything that we haven't covered that you want to cover? Happy to talk about whatever you want to talk about. Okay. Uh, BTC pay. Let, BTC pay. Oh, everyone is seeing the shirt. Well then, everyone, please round of applause for Samson. Thank you. Thank you. And let's continue conversations at lunch. You, you all online, lunch as well. See you. Everybody, just a heads up, after lunch, uh, there is a whole NIP afternoon. Um, we're also going to be hearing from the uh, representative from the Human Rights Foundation Bitcoin Development Fund immediately after lunch, so you won't want to miss that, followed by endless amounts of NIP talk. So we'll see you back here after lunch, and thanks for a great morning. Cheers.
mamma mia
the people around me were, what they wanted, or what they were trying to do.
this. I, I do what I can. How, do, how does the how does it look? We're twins. It's okay. Uh, so we'll get started here uh, with a message from uh, the Human Rights Foundation's Bitcoin. Welcome to Nostrica, day number one. We're just gonna give an intro and then we've got a special guest, opening talk, Nostra one on one. And it's gonna be exciting. As you can see, it's a wonderful place. The opening ceremony is happening right behind me and it's in the middle of the jungle. This is the workshop stage. It's massive. Feeling great. We're, uh, we had a good start this morning. Lunch is on time. Talk to me at the end of the day. We'll see. Pura vida. <laughs> First few talks were good. So a lot of it just goes like this, woo, right over my head. But you know, I'm starting to have those like little Noster downloads, like I have for Bitcoin, and just seeing how big this can get. It's a new technology. It's starting out. It's nice to meet the people in, per in person, right? It's hot and sweaty and a lot of fun. First day was amazing. Uh, it seems like everybody had a great time. We had some great talks, and uh, I think everybody's feeling pura vida. Pura vida. Pura vida. Hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, to those here, hello again. To those in the live stream, as always, you are here in our hearts. We're gonna kick off the afternoon session. We've got a lot of NIP talk coming up. Uh, we've got uh, a lot of the ladies of Noster who will be joining us after this next session uh, for a nice panel up here on stage. But before that, we have Arsh from the Human Rights Foundation working with their Bitcoin Development Fund. Uh, he's gonna break down for us kind of what they do and then also how people can take advantage of this fund that's going out there to support Bitcoin development, open protocol development, and all the great work that the Human Rights Foundation does. So please give Arsh a warm welcome to the stage. Warmer, come on. Thanks, Walker. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Arsh. I'm from the Human Rights Foundation, um, and I'll be giving an overview of what the Human Rights Foundation is, uh, what we do, why human rights matter in general, why Bitcoin matters for human rights, um, and then a brief pitch of our Bitcoin Development Fund and our Oslo Freedom Forum towards the end. Um, so the Human Rights Foundation is a 501c3 based in New York, and what we do is we fight for human rights and civil liberties um, and authoritarian regimes. Um, and what differentiates us from other alike 501c3s is our um, exclusive focus on authoritarian and closed societies. Um, and a lot of us may not know this right now, but over 50% of the world lives in an authoritarian or closed society, meaning that over half of the world lives in a place where doing something simple as criticizing your government or you know, organizing a protest can get you thrown in jail or worse. Um, and this is obviously a huge problem, right? N not, not because all of us in Bitcoin and Nostra who are passionate about freedom and, and care about human rights and should care about human rights um, think that it's an issue for people who are expressing their freedom of speech are being oppressed. Um, but it's also an issue because human, because authoritarianism is at the root of many of the causes in the world today. Um, so authoritarianism is responsible for 
97% of the world's refugees, 79% um, of active conflicts, 18 out of 20 of 20 countries with the worst access to basic drinking water, 90% um, of the lowest ranked countries in combating human trafficking, and nine out of the 10 poorest countries in the world are all authoritarian regimes. Um, so the problem today is that authoritarian regimes are using money as a weaponized tool. Um, they basically found out that, hey, if we can control um, the money, we can basically control people themselves. Um, and you know, we have two examples of this um, on the screen uh, where the Hong Kong Free Press's um, bank account got shut down uh, because the local regime had shut it down. Um, and they went to BitPay uh, and they got censored off BitPay as well. Um, and they moved to BTC Pay, which is obviously much more um, superior. Um, but, but yeah, like, I mean, some of the, one, one of the solutions to this is, um, is, is Bitcoin, right? Because Bitcoin is obviously, it's censorship resistant, it's, it's decentralized. Um, so it can provide a, a way for people to use um, Bitcoin as a, as a tool in these regimes. So, um, for example, when there's police brutality protests going on in Nigeria, um, I in the United States can open my Lightning wallet um, and send some sats their way um, as a donation, you know, from 5,000 miles away. Um, so th the solution's awesome, um, but once again, a lot of people um, in the human rights world who understand that authoritarianism is at the root um, is, a, is a root cause um, of, of, of all the bad things that happen in societies. But what a lot of people in the human rights world fail to understand is that monetary freedom um, is also essential um, to human rights and, and freedom in general. Um, so just to recap, uh, human rights defenders are facing increasingly um, increasing financial repression in, in forms of frozen bank accounts, um, restrictions on foreign funding, payment surveillance, demonetization, debasement, et cetera. Um, so they're using Bitcoin as a tool. Um, and, and obviously while Bitcoin is, 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 is great and it's being used as a tool, there's a lot more to be done to build on top of it, which is why we at the Human Rights Foundation have our Bitcoin Development Fund, uh, where we support developers, um, education, and open source projects. Um, so some examples of grant recipients are um, you know, a seed signer, you know, li lightning wallets, hardware wallets, uh, Bitcoin core developers, open source payment processors, uh, BTC pay, and now as of more recently, um, Nostra developers, and this is what we want to see more of um, as well. So, um, I also want to take an opportunity to uh, discuss our Oslo Freedom Forum, which is from June 13th through 15th, um, and it's in Oslo, Norway, and we're basically um, bringing together uh, the world's most uh, active activists, um, entrepreneurs, journalists, etc. Um, so to learn more, you can go to oslofreedomforum.com, and um, and yeah, to learn more about a Bitcoin Development Fund, you can go to hrf.org/backslash/devfund. Um, and if you're an, if you're a developer or know an open source developer who's working on Bitcoin or Noster, uh, please feel free to come talk to me or email us at dev.fund@hrf.org. Thank you. Sorry guys, I was just trying to figure out if my foot's gonna fall off or not. Um, so far, so good, I think. Uh, we'll, we'll stay positive on this one. Uh, so are we, are we ready to go for the, the ladies? Do we need a couple more minutes? Okay, you guys, we'll take like five minutes here um, and then we'll kick off with Nips IRL. Uh, we're gonna have quite a full stage up here um, and we're going to hear from some of the women who have been on Noster uh, the longest and contributing in many ways, whether it be creating content, helping organize this conference, uh, or just trying to spread the good word about this incredible open protocol that brought us all here today. So we'll kick off in five minutes with NIPS IRL. Thank you.
Manchester. This is the only time I'll be on stage for this, just so I don't get feedback from this mic. Uh, Rob, we ready to we ready to roll? Okay. So, this is Nips IRL. Thank you to all these women for coming on stage. Can we get just a round of applause for these ladies who are using their voices to bring attention to Noster? Now I will move back. Feedback okay here? All right. All right. So. Uh, Love to just start out. Hello, ladies. This is nice. What a beautiful view we have here today. Um, Nips IRL. Uh, I'd love to just start out with, like, let's go right down the row here um, and start out with just introduce yourself, maybe a little bit of your background, what brought you to Noster, um, and we'll start there. So jump right in. Hello, everyone. Um... Right now, I'm supposedly testing the privacy badge. I don't know if it's working, but um, if it's working, all of the people in the, in the virtual audience shouldn't be able to see my face. I don't know if that's true. But I do know that uh, being part of a women's panel means that we tend to care about things about women and the safety and privacy of women across the globe. So I think that having technology like Nostra is, Im is important, or Nostra, <laughs> like Nostra is important for, um, for human rights and for protections against censorship and all those things, just as Bitcoin is. So um, that's why I'm here. Hi everyone, um, I'm Susie, Susie BDDS on Nostra. And, uh, and I think what brought me to Noster, Twitter sort of, uh, you know, I'm well past middle age and Twitter gave me a forum. It was very liberating that I could be more of who I am, honest, authentic, what I thought until I realized how much I was being shadow banned and censored on Twitter. I was drawn to that with Noster. So I'm on Noster for a love of freedom and for a love of shit posting basically. So that's why I'm there. <laughs> Um, I'm Carla. I'm kind of like the internet weirdo. Living meme is what I like to say. Um, I work in the two-way radio industry for my fiat mining job. It's a family company that uh, my dad actually started 30 years ago when he escaped communism. So the freedom of sharing information has been a very large part of my life, just considering my background. and. I'd be lying if I said Bitcoin didn't get me into Noster. Like I started on Bitcoin Twitter and I heard about it there and I loved what was happening with payments and I was like, yeah, I'll check Noster out. But as a creator on the side, having been, had videos taken down on TikTok and you know, shadow banned on Twitter, it just got more and more urgent to have decentralized social media, especially when you're trying to speak truth in an insane world. So yeah, I'm here to try to do just that. Hi, I'm Mads, and um, I got on to Noster by following a lot of people on Bitcoin Twitter and maybe Bitcoin Telegram, if that's a thing. And it's, it was really cool. I stopped using Twitter almost completely immediately and had really no problem with that. It's much happier on Noster, in my opinion, and their, the algorithms are not there, which is nice. And yeah, I, I don't know. It's been great. I like zapping people. I, I like receiving zaps. And yeah, it's, it's, it's been really interesting. to. It's something that's really cool to actually, you have to work a little bit if you're not technical to figure it out at the beginning. Um, so I've learned a lot. So I'm Marce. 
And actually, my friend Eugenio got me into Noster, so big up to Eugenio. Um, I'm a communicator. I love freedom of speech. I'm from a third world country. Welcome to my country. And I know how hard it is to be able to always say what you want without being censorship. And I feel like in Costa Rica, we have freedom and I want to preserve it. And for me, Noster is that. Noster will give us a chance to preserve our freedom. It's so much work that we need to do, but I'm so happy to be here to be able to do it. Hi guys, I'm Roya. Um, on, I joined Noster because of the, um, I was searching for freedom of speech for people in Iran, including the women who are censored. And as people have been up here saying, just freedom of speech and censorship. I also ship post a lot, so sorry about that. Um, but um, other than that, I learned Bitcoin through Noster when I joined. I didn't know anything about that, which was really cool. And everybody has been so kind in teaching me. So now I want to use Bitcoin as a protest in Iran. So other than that, um, that's about it. So I ship ways, post, and say serious things at the same time. And I'm an 814 zapper, so. So I had to be part of Nostra because as I say in my bio, I live at Damas headquarters. Um, so inevitably I was learning a lot about it through Will. Um, but once I started to use it myself, I realized, you know, following people like Roya and Carla and some other people along here. It's so much more than just a fun little project that Will was working on every weekend and every evening and sometimes annoying me with uh, before my coffee, as I like to joke about. But now that I'm here, I'm here to stay. And my goal is to just help people get on board, um, help with any technical things that you might not know because I don't know anything technically. So feel free to message me, you know, include me because I'll make sure it gets to the right people and uh, excited to be here. So thank all of you for that. Um, I think just like a really interesting thread amongst all of these is like just the ability to freely speak, but not only to speak, but to be heard. Um, and that's something that as a uh, straight, white, six foot three blonde man, I don't usually have to worry about, um, <laughs> but women around the world do. Um, how do we bring more women to Noster, especially, you know, as some people mentioned, sometimes the technical hurdles ads are a little bit more daunting. Um, what's the best way to onboard more people in general, but just uh, specifically more women who may need this most? And Roya, to your point about trying to find tools for freedom of speech in Iran, I think that that's really powerful and that's why we have open protocols. So how do we make that more accessible to people? How do we open the door even wider than it already is? This is to anyone. Zap nips, get it trending, that's how. <laughs> On Twitter. Uh, my technique seem, uh, tends to be, I'm going to shame you. Because the most common uh, barrier to entry to Nostra that I'll hear, for, especially from my friends on Twitter, is I just don't want to learn how to do it. It's another, you know, another social media, no. And it, I, I don't want to learn the technical parts of it. And I was like, dude, I'm a 52-year-old dentist and mom of four. Get the hell out of here. If I can do it, and it wasn't easy in the beginning. I didn't have a profile picture forever. And if I can do it and figure out how to upload these memes and videos, then you can get an account. So that's my technique. I think, um, well, Matt says that she left Twitter because why not, right? But I think that we should be a bridge and make sure that we're still on there until we can bring enough people, um, especially as women, we really need to be where other women are so we can bring them on board. So for me is just make it fun, show it that it's fun, show that we do this kind of thing, that we have spaces just for us and that it's safe. I've heard a lot of women be like, oh, but how am I, what, what if there's like nudes and what if like all the things that I don't want to see? Cause well, yeah, we get spam, but it's work is being worked on, there are solutions, we can do it, and we just need to translate that into other social media and show it like, hey, you'll be heard here. No one's going to tell you no, so. This is maybe a more specific, but this is something I did with my girlfriends, and like I wasn't kidding when I said zapping nips, because I took a screen recording of receiving a zap and sending a zap, 
and showing the post and like the zap count and I sent, I texted it to my two girlfriends and it was that, that they were like, hell yeah, I wanna get on that. But it was just a video recording of zapping working and sometimes that's all the incentive you need. Uh, for me, it's just showing the ladies in Iran that it's safe to be on without being arrested and how to, you know, get on there like safely, like share, share them. Everybody knows VPN's there, but just make sure that it's safe and that it's not something that, um, the government can look at and like arrest them and how to be anonymous and just show them it's a social media that they can communicate freely at a platform that they can communicate freely without anybody getting in um, and you know getting them in trouble for it so yeah I think for me as a designer um, I think sometimes as women we grow up with unspoken cultural barriers and there may be some women in the audience who are hearing this and they haven't even realized that there is that barrier. For me, it happened recently when I realized that I've been sort of in Bitcoin and now in Nostra for a while. And I've just been in design and haven't really dove into development. And I think a big part of it was this thought of, no, I'm a designer, I'm a woman. And now as I look at all of these developers and all of these products, I think, wait, I can do that too. If I've learned design on my own, why can't I do that? So I think as women, it's about giving ourselves the permission to do that, not to self-censor ourselves, and also to realize that our voice is important and that, it, that if our voice isn't out there, then people will not see our perspective. Uh, <laughs> I think this. This is how we get the word out and continue to do so because a lot of the, you know, talks over the last few days have been fantastic and um, something we just chatted about over dinner was where are the women and people are asking that where are the women, um, so we put this together because we felt it was lacking and I think it's it's valuable so if we can continue to do that both conferences online however we're going to spread the word that will naturally create this momentum so thanks for being here. Thank you for that. Um, so, Noster's notes and other stuff transmitted by relays, right? Is there a particular part of that other stuff that you're particularly excited about, uh, or that maybe has the potential? You know, talking about Marcy, what you said, bring, uh, still being where women are, um, being on these other social platforms. Uh, you know, not just Twitter, but let's say Instagram. Um, Noster has the ability to do anything that any other social platform can do, and a whole lot more. So is there a part of that other stuff that you think can be focused on that'll really help to drive a larger scale adoption of it and just to, again, like many have said, just to show how fun it is? Uh, for me, the other day they did a presentation on ARC, which was the telegram service that was being made um, for like the Noster, I'm pretty sure. I'm not technical, so I apologize. But um, um, since telegram is monitored heavily by the regime in Iran, um, even like uh, it's really hard to speak freely on there, even to your family, to my family and all of that. So the fact that that's being built to be able to speak freely with the, is so important. And I think that'll get more like the other stuff that'll get people so excited about it. Got my parents really excited about it. So yeah. I think a current challenge is the sort of We've been trained in these discovery tools with Instagram, with TikTok, you know, we scroll, we swipe, there's algorithms feeding us things, but we're seeing all this new stuff all the time. And I don't know about you, but I'm never on the global feed. And it's sort of nice to have it as this bubble, but I think as we, as more discovery tools are built out, I think that's definitely gonna help with getting more people on boarded because as it is now, you know, I got my girlfriends on there. One of them still checks in from time to time and the other one, you know, kind of checked out because it's like, we all know each other. She's like, oh, the community is so nice, but you know, it's a little bit insulated. So I think as those tools get built out, that's where we're gonna see a lot more onboarding. I think what really excites me on Noster is that everyone is promised a voice. You have a voice, but you're not insured to reach and not everyone should be in to reach. And I really appreciate that I'm able to curate my feed, that I, I've seen some garbage on there that I don't wanna see, and I don't have to. So uh, it excites me that I'm no longer 
um, pushed by algorithms as to what I'll see, but I'm in charge of that. I'm in charge of my own content and what information I allow to be absorbed. Um, I, I think other stuff would, zaps would fall into that. I know they're already here. I'm just still really excited about them. And I, I'm a Bitcoiner, so I love that there have been people that are here this week who have come up to me and I found out that they actually were on Noster, saw people doing zaps, thought that was super cool, and then jumped in, into the Bitcoin world and are fully sold on it, like fa faster orange pilling than I normally see. So that's very exciting to me. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's just such a seamless thing and glad we have that and I hope that we keep getting cool things like that. I don't know what's next though. I, I think, well, I'll just take a few seconds here. I think I agree and I tie in with Matt's thought of, I arrived at Damas, using Damas first before the Lightning, the NIP57 came in and it was such a big change. So I, what I'm hoping for Nostra is that I will encourage more creators to come in, to have a platform, to have a place to show their work and to be zapped for it and also to have some control back in their hands on how they use social media and anything else that comes after it. As a creator who has, you know, had lightning tips enabled on Twitter, never made like hardly a single tip, but having it per post and the zap so easily, it's just night and day difference. So creators should, I mean, the incentive is there. It's there, it's proof of concept is done. Just to, uh, to get back to kind of orange pilling through Noster, I know Roya, I, I heard this from you, you were not a, a Bitcoiner prior to Noster. Could you just maybe tell us kind of your story of how you got on and then what that experience was like kind of discovering Bitcoin through Noster and in that new context? Because this is like a, a whole new paradigm for bringing people onto Bitcoin, another open protocol. So I, I'd love to hear from you on that. So primarily my brother told me about it and um, then I realized how important it could be in Iran but then I was like wondering what they, everybody was always talking about Bitcoin not always but like very prominent and I was like uh, I know nothing about this and they're like you're like an exotic bird let's hear let's tell you everything that you need to know and like it would be like 10 people just going step by step there's a guy on there named Pat he showed me the Bitcoin book I don't remember the name, I'm sorry, <laughs> but it's like that prominent book and a, yeah, and it was really um, like awe-inspiring to me because I didn't actually, I actually thought crypto and Bitcoin were the same thing. So I was just like, what is this? And um, um, people just told me step by step how to open a wallet and like, um, and then I got addicted to zaps pretty quickly after that was implemented and now I'll just sit there really bored and just zap all day <laughs> and it's really fun and it's just, uh, really important once I realized how important it was and that the media was showing such negative um, things about it and that's all I saw. They never, they always talked about the downs and never talked about it, the ups. So um, everybody being like, you don't actually need to buy Bitcoin, but I'm gonna tell you about it. Nobody sold me anything. Nobody like told me you have to do this. They were just like open and not gatekeeping about it and very kind, so very nice. I think that's huge, especially just like compared to some of the toxicity that you see on Twitter. Bit, I think Bitcoin Twitter might give Bitcoiners a bad a bad rap at some point. Uh, sometimes it's uh, granted that's still where uh, most of the the normies or pre coiners, whatever you want to call them, are. But so your experience on the whole was was positive. Nobody was shouting, you know, shouting over the top of you like non toxic. So positive. Yeah, so positive. They're just like um, all you need to know is that don't get into shit coins. So because. <laughs> you're new enough that you don't need to get into that. And I was like, okay, but that's not, like the only negative thing is like uh, the shit coining. But like, other than that, like never any toxicity other than like, if I don't know something, people were like, what, you don't know? And then they teach me right away positively. It's amazing. That's something I noticed too, where, you know, you have someone get on Noster and they're new and this person was like, oh, I'm just like a boomer. Like, what are these zaps? Like he called himself a boomer. And, you know, you have 10 people, like a lot of names that are, you know, in this room who are, like, helping him out, comments, everyone's so willing to help. And now he's like, wow, like, I have this wallet of Satoshi, and this boomer is using lightning. And I'm like, that is more than, A, 
most of the world can say, but even people on Bitcoin Twitter who don't know how to use Lightning. Like this boomer who just got on Noster is using Lightning before Bitcoin Twitter LARPs. It's true. Oh. Uh, well, one thing to add, I'm not sure how he started this reply session, but um, as, as far as like Zaps and just Noster kind of being better than Twitter, I think with like the really bad, annoying Bitcoin maxis on Twitter, you know, your reputation is even more important, I think, on Noster than you feel like with a Twitter account. You can just, you know, I guess you could still spin up a ton of Noster accounts and do one thing at a time. Someone actually made something for that. But, um, you know, it, it's when you get, when you know you're getting value for your content, you think even more about your posts. So there's not just as much of that, like, stuff you just kind of want to, like, weed through on Twitter. It's easy. And just PSA, because this did come up in multiple conversations, you cannot, like, delete yeah. or edit. <laughs> I was going to add to that, though, <laughs> that you can't delete, but also that I feel like it's safer on Noster because we all are just excited. And, like, Bitcoiners are always excited to talk about Bitcoin. And so that's why we are so excited to have you around <laughs> because you're amazing to us and you want to hear us. And I think on Noster, you feel heard. Like, Bitcoin will, like, just ignore my tweets if they can. And, uh, I mean, Twitter will just ignore my tweets if they can. But on Noster, like, it doesn't matter. The other day I put, like, I don't know what badges are. Is it too late? Like, I was so confused about it. And I'm like, and I'm scared to ask about it. And then, like, boom. Ten people told me what they are, how to get them, how to have them show on my feed. So yeah, that's that's Noster. It's a cool place. Uh, you can like also like it's more you get you get actually like the zaps. If you're positive, you're gonna get zaps. So people feel a need to be like positive in the community because if you you're negative, you're just you know you're you know you can make a funny meme and everybody loves it. But if you say something like really rude or mean or toxic, nobody's gonna care or just ignore you, you know? And I think um, there's something about this community that makes it so special because it's not just one product, it's a protocol. And that means that whenever there is an issue, because I'm sure there'll be issues down the road, we've faced plenty as a community, then it's nice that you can talk to developers and they can improve on it and everyone can share ideas and everything moves so fast because of it. I mean, this wasn't even possible two months ago, meeting in real life and having that today, it's pretty amazing. And seeing all of the different clients being developed because there's just such variety and uniqueness out there that I think people just don't quite understand just how big that's going to be. There was never a Mastodon conference that I'm aware of. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to add, um, I was never a poster in any, any social media whatsoever, and now I am posting all the time, as you guys can see, and people think I'm funny. It's amazing. I never thought I was funny. And so, you know, so that's what I've been encouraging, you know, friends and family who are hesitant about it. It's, it's a positive community. You're not going to, you know, you might run into people who don't like your jokes, but then you'll get zaps and you think, well, okay, fine. I'll keep going, I'll keep going. That's exactly what I was gonna say, um, Vanessa, is I've met so many people here and online who told me they have never once posted on Twitter, despite being on for years. I even met someone who I consider a brilliant dev here during um, Nostrica, who told me he didn't post on Twitter, but he posts on Noster. And I, to me, that's exciting that it is empowering people who feel you know, bold enough because what a fantastic community that they feel like they can share now. I love listening to you all. <laughs> there is so much positivity and hope and openness. And I feel like, like this is a small little conference that sprung up over the course of a couple of months of just people getting really excited and you know, Will and Jack talking and something that uh, Will has said multiple times is that like, he just wants to make things that are fun. And that's what fun is what brings people to, to anything, right? People want to have fun. Girls just want to have fun. I didn't even mean to set myself up there. Um, but I guess, uh, 
how have you seen for those, you know, uh, Vanessa, you weren't really active on other social media. Roy, I'm not sure about you, but I know the rest of the ladies in the stage were um, like more active on, on Twitter before. And just in general, I mean, how have you seen your behavior, I guess, change? Or what do you feel is the, the difference between posting something on Twitter, like, and maybe trying to work for that algorithm versus posting something on Noster? Like, do you feel you can be just more organically yourself and, and that you're actually rewarded for that? Um, has there been any negative experience where uh, that wasn't the case? And you're like, oh boy, I shared a little bit too much of myself. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. I want to go first because, so I am always thinking that no one wants to hear what I have to say. So this is a big challenge for me right now. Um, so on Twitter, I'm always like scared, right? And I know I can delete stuff. So that's also like, I think about what I'm putting and sometimes I even delete it because I just like, no one wants to listen to this. But then on Noster, I can delete it and I still put it out there and people actually think I'm funny, right? Like, what? <laughs> Why? So, yeah, Noster has been like a safe space and for someone who's always scared to say whatever because, I don't know, I just, I guess that's just something, like how we're raised, I think that's something how we're raised as women a lot, like that we have to be cautious and we need to know what we're saying and we need to be nice and polite and strong and sweet and whatever, all that stuff. And Noster, yeah, I don't have to care and I still do it and people think I'm funny and sometimes they send me saps for things that I'm like, really? I wouldn't pay for that, <laughs> but yeah. I think with no it's like we're also starting from the same place and while this may seem like non, like an inconsequential detail, the fact that you don't see follower counts immediately, I think is, it's like an even playing field. It's not like, oh, like someone with 1.2 million followers, like, oh, I'm scared, I'm gonna censor my, it's like, no, we're all starting from the same place. We're all excited, it's all new, we're all fresh as daisies, versus Twitter where it's like, oh, well, that's an established so-and-so, and like, that, I think that lends itself to more authenticity because we're all in the same boat. Yeah, if, you, if you're having trouble like loading, which happens occasionally, depending on, how you're accessing Noster, you may just have no idea who you're applying to, which is it's fun. Um, but, but yeah, I, I don't, I was not a tw Twitter poster. I mean, I've posted a few times. I've retweeted a bunch of stuff, but you know, not, not my own stuff. And um, cause I don't know if why particularly, but maybe just cause I didn't expect I'd be heard there. You know, I feel like a Noster, someone sees it every, like someone sees everything I post, which, should make me think more, and maybe I'd have less typos, but we'll find out. But like, it is, it's weird. I feel way more welcomed and like, I can just ask, I ask a lot of questions because I'm learning Noster's very complicated and techy to me. So um, yeah, I, it's really interesting. And I really enjoy the part of it that where I'm actually having to learn to use it. And I get to, I think when you see things implemented that, like, you know, ideas come about on Noster and then they build it, they, the, the devs, um, then, then you get, to, like, you understand more of the process, um, gives you a little more insight, which is cool. Uh, on Twitter, I would spend, like, hours doom scrolling because when you're on your feed, you don't really go to post, you go to look at what's happening. And so I would spend hours doom scrolling and I don't do that on Noster. I feel so free to, like, free from that constant state of doom. I mean, I'm 22, child of the internet, so like, that's what we grew up doing. Like, I was on Twitter since I was 12, so like, you know, I would go and just doom scroll every day, what's happening in this country so far away from me, I'm gonna like, sit there and be a, like, very anxious about that on Noster. I just feel kind of free from that doom scroll, and when people talk about events around the world, it doesn't feel as like, um, like, it doesn't um, give me as much anxiety. I feel more like it's easier for me to like take in. So yeah. Interestingly, I'd say I'd say people will probably be shocked if you follow me on Noster. Uh, I I tend to be more thoughtful on what I post on Noster. I sort of brain I was brain regurgitating anything that just any whim that came into my mind on Twitter, 
And now I feel like, okay, I just don't want to gum up everybody's feed with, you know, a picture of boobies or something, even though I do that. So I, I do put a little more thought into what I, I post on Nostra. I think as things get curated a little more and we can, the feed gets <laughs> that, I'll go back to the way it was. So. I was just going to say, when I first started posting here, which again, I don't, never posted before, I kept giving my phone to Will and saying, what do you think about this one? Like, is this, is this worth it? And he's like, don't ask me that. Just do it. Just do it and see what happens. Put it out there in the community and see what you get back. And that has given me a lot of confidence, not just on the app, but even in real life, meeting everybody here and feeling more confident about talking about it and what we're hoping to do with it and the future and everything. So it's, it's amazing that it has that power. Yeah, I think Nostra is conversational. You know, it's kind of raw, imperfect, <laughs> real time. And it opens up conversation in ways that you didn't think were possible and with people you didn't think were possible. So it's a good, it's a good protocol. Um, I'd like to leave this up to y'all because it's not, not my panel. Do you want to open it up for any comments from women in the audience, perhaps, or any questions that there might be? Um, this may be a, a good time for that. So if there are any women in the audience, Mills? Okay, so one of my burning questions that I'm trying to answer while here is how would you explain, Noster to a normie that doesn't maybe have a preconceived value for decentralization. So they don't know Bitcoin, they don't know why that's important. How would you, like elevator pitch, describe Noster? My quick answer would be tell them they can get payments for posts. I mean, it, it's really cool. They can just, and it's like seamless once they learn it. Then they'll have to come learn about Bitcoin. But for, at first, you just say, hey, come post and send people, people send you money. I basically just say, imagine it's like Instagram, but instead of likes, you get money. And like, that's obviously very high level and not at all, but for a normie, it's like, okay, I can get that. Like you could post a picture of your foot and get money. Yeah, that's exactly it. The other day I got... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we would only Noster feet. <laughs> we, we did get the domain footster.com just to have it ready. Carla. Thank you. I think your feet will be just great right now. <laughs> even got zaps for these disgusting troll feet today. So if these feet can get zaps, I can't even imagine what all of y'all's feet could get. Wow. Yeah, the other day I got like an amazing zap and I just looked at my sister. And I'm like, whoa, like, look at this. I just got enough saps, let's go for lunch, I'm paying. And she's like, I wanna be able to do that too. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> be on Noster. So yeah, tell them that you get paid for shit posting. <laughs> I, I think another way to approach this is also the thought that because it is a protocol, it'd be like being able to choose or to use all of the platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at the same time and not lose your followers. I don't remember who was talking yesterday, but he called them friends. I thought that was cool. Uh, I think it was rabble. Yes, I like the word friends better. Anyway, so if you could log into any of them and still reach all of your friends, because I have friends that aren't on Nostra and I'm not on Facebook. So it's one of those things where you miss out on the conversations. And if they just knew that it's possible to use any Nostra product in logging with the same keys is pretty cool. Um, no, Pers I, um, I'd say in my age group and like the suburban mom, it, it is a hard sell. And um, one of the things I always say is, so I was, for the first time in my life, I've never gotten in trouble. I've never been suspended or any from school or gone to the principal's office. But during COVID, I, I was um, banned on Facebook and it was shocking. And so when I told my friends I was coming down here, the first thing I got was, are you trying to get a job with them since you're retiring and no? But then the second thing was, you know, I said, it, it, this is why it's important and this is why you should join. It's gonna, you know, I was, remember I was banned on Facebook and they said, but if you just didn't say that, if you just didn't say those things, you wouldn't have been banned. And I said, yeah, boo. And, but I said, okay, so here I am, someone who 
got vaccinated. I, I, got, I went and, and got, um, I was a vaccinator. That's how indoctrinated I was. And here I got banned. I said, so if me, that could happen to, there's some opinion you have now that it could happen to you. You just don't realize it yet. Two years ago, Susie would n never have believed that would have happened to me. It's only a matter of time. And I said, that's why it's important that we have this uncensorable protocol and why you need to join. Personally, I like to tell them about the no ads and no algorithm, and that really excites them because, uh, you know, you go on anything, anything, and there's ads, and there's now, like, algorithm algorithms for everything and also if you're just not looking to get viral or whatever and you want a community an actual community that this is the place to be this is the place to be my elevator pitch is a little different obviously um but it's just basically try it try it please give me your feedback as i mentioned earlier i can get it to the right people we can figure out how to make this easier and, you know, obviously that's worked and uh, kind of gone through uh, channels of people that I know. And it's exciting to see these people that literally have, you know, my mom will mention the other day, she's on it, you can find her. She's getting zaps all the time and she's loving it. So I think uh, if we can continue to do that as a, as a group, it'll work. Okay, so I say, oh. I say um, if Twitter and Facebook had a rebel baby, that's what it is, and it's badass. <laughs> Any other questions from the ladies in the audience? Or Mills, you got another one? No. <laughs> or anyone at all? I guess we can open it up to men now. <laughs> we gave the ladies 45 minutes. That's probably, you know, that's all they're getting, I guess. There could be a last question. Um, where do you hope Nostra is going to go? Good one to the moon. <laughs> well, I was say saying earlier that, um, well, you probably understand me, but we come from the third world. But to me, Costa Rica has like no army. We're supposed to be free, freedom of speech. Everyone's supposed to be happy. We're supposed to be the happiest country on earth, whatever. That doesn't happen anymore. And something that I've noticed lately, um, I'm about to get censorship, but our government <laughs> recently has been just shutting media down, right? Uh, they pick who can speak, they, they pick who can go to the conferences, they pick who they talk to, and they're so close-knit, they don't let anyone in. So, to me, this is what we need, and I hope that I can get my whole country on Nasser to be able to speak what they want to speak because I have never been so afraid of being censored like I am now with the way things are looking here. So for me, it, I've seen what it's out there. I've seen what other countries are going through and I don't want my country to get there. We don't need to be more third world than what we are already. So yes, this is it. This for me is something that I need to push down the throat of everyone to be able to, to keep being able to say these things and not get censored. I think as many people have, you know, discussed like the censorship resistance use case side of things in media and information sharing is like the most obvious use case. I was also trying to think of other use cases and that kind of took me down a journey of like, well, not everything needs to be distributed and decentralized because just because you can doesn't mean you should because that also affects performance, right? One thing I think is gonna be really cool and that's been discussed at this conference is marketplaces. I think that's really important. Um, but I think what's also nice about it is it is so early that I don't even think we can predict or conceive how far this can go. And that's what I think is the most exciting part of it. When I was eight years old, we were in Iran for this um, summer, the whole summer of dealing with family. And at that time was the Green Revolution. And 
for that, the Twitter was really big in helping um, spread the word for that. And I was only eight, but I could see that, and that got my dad on Twitter and all of that. So we all, we all in Iran, we thought that that was gonna be the way to freedom. As you know, it's now 2023, it's been kind of hard. They kind of blocked Twitter completely, and then back then, and so Nostr to me, just the way it is, um, decentralized and nobody owns it. So I think that it's gonna be a, a powerful tool that um, we thought back then was going to help us towards freedom, and it's going to help us, now this can help us towards the freedom of speech that we thought Twitter was going to be in 2009. And for me, I think it'll be about how Nostra could empower both developers and the people who use Nostra. So this idea of the value for value culture and the idea of being able to control how you want to handle your own Nostra, it will be important down the road. And I really would love to see that development is supported, but that people also have access to Nostra, especially because since it's um, a censorship resistance, then it'll be important for people who don't have the funds to say subscribe or support a project. So being able to balance that will be an important challenge. I, speaking of the development, I r really hope that the development and of tools and things on Noster is like continued to be talked about on Noster in the open. I think that's super cool and I think it also, if someone's thinking about making something or want something made, you put it out there, someone's like, oh, I, I have these talents. And then I didn't realize anyone would think that would be a useful thing, but here, I'll make it. And it, it's, it's very exciting. I think, I hope that that continues because I think it makes development go faster and there's more collaboration and I think it's awesome. Bill has another one, if you guys are cool with it. Okay, so I, I don't know what you, if you, how you would describe Twitter's incentive model, but I've heard some people say it, it's kind of masculine in nature because the more inflammatory, the more kind of aggressive posture tends to feed the algorithm and perform better. How have you noticed, and, and I know there's been mention of positivity, but is, would you say that Noster is more of a feminine frame or that there's just more of a, a ability for both to perform, or have you noticed any of that in, in comparison directly to Twitter? Without a doubt. I, I, I didn't realize, you know, here I thought on Twitter that I was so free to speak, and what, but what I found is only once I was on Noster that so much of what I was responding to and engaging in, so not so much my behavior, but what I was responding to and engaging in, which all of a sudden I really thought I cared about X, Y, or Z, and now that you know, I've been months away from it, I thought, why am I even responding to these things? I actually don't care about it at all, but I would get worked up, I'd see a comment on something that I didn't even, you know, it's not an account I followed, and I would engage. And I really felt manipulated, and that is something I never feel on Noster. Since I wasn't a major Twitter user, like active and stuff, I, didn't, I don't, I didn't get to experience like what Susie just said, but I, and I don't know if Noster's more like friendly to women, but I think for sure it's friendly to people that are very interested in things, like very curious. And um, that's what I like about it. I think uh, one of the biggest difference is the data gathering. And I think that we just don't understand just how much data is gathered on each of us. It's mind-boggling. So it's nice to know that Nostra is becoming an alternative, and I hope that that gets preserved over time. Because it also lets us be freer and funner at that time, so too. So um, I'm looking forward to that. I don't think Nostra's immune from a more, this sort of culture coming back in. I think it's just, there's just not that many people. 
as someone who's gotten a lot of hate on Twitter, it is very refreshing to not get as much on Noster, but in my mind, it just seems like it's a matter of time. The one thing is, hate comments and just any sort of engagement, you know, boosts things over on Twitter. Versus on Noster, if someone calls me a surfboard, you know, it's like, that's not going to boost it up in the Noster feed, right? I agree with you, Carla. <laughs> I also think that it might not be more women friendly, but I pick what I want to see. So I have back the power, and I don't know how often women have the power, but we don't really, we're not used to that, and it's refreshing. I mean, I don't think there's another word better to explain what Noster is, it's refreshing. We have the power, we say what we want to say, how we want to say it, and we see what we want to see. No one is pushing down what they think I should be seeing or what someone is paying that I see, so yeah. And you're not rewarded for being inflammatory. Do we have any other questions from the audience? Go ahead. Right Sneak on by you. Um, so, uh, this has been talked about some throughout this conference that obviously there will be tons of relays, and different relays may set up different rules. Like, some relays may incorporate algorithms, you know, to be able to control your feed, and um, advertising might be introduced. Like you said, more people will join, like all of the toxicity and addictiveness of these other apps has the potential to infiltrate Nostra as well. Do you feel, I guess, what makes you feel like Nostra is more defensible against those things? Or if it's not, like, what can this community and developers do to make sure that it remains a more positive space? If, if I understand that correctly, I think, like what Marcy was just saying, we get to, you still get to choose. You don't have to be on a relay that censors you or is censoring certain things that you disagree with. And, but at the same time, I do still see issues with that. If you, you know, want to be discoverable and you are highly censored, I don't know your options there. So I just hope that a lot of relay operators are more um, thoughtful and like their reasons to censor things and then censorship in the past is gone. I'm not like a super techie person, but I mean, I guess the idea of like, there shouldn't be some mega relay. Like there shouldn't be the super relay that everyone wants to join and then it's the big relay and then we have the same thing as we did before, right? So just, if I'm correct in saying that, like ensuring that there are a bunch of relays competing, distributed, like that's, that's the way to defend. Yeah, like, Earlier, they were speaking about that we should all run our own relay. Yeah, we're, I hope that Nostra gets so popular that that doesn't happen because I want a lot of relays, but I also want it to be popular, and I know that everyone won't do that. So I want a bunch of relays, and I hope everyone here... I said this yesterday, but we are all OGs here, and that's cool. <laughs> so we should look into it ourselves and invite people to join um, the same way we preach about Bitcoin. And then we can choose. We can choose what we see and what we don't see. And that makes the difference. So that sort of protects us a little bit on whether it will be the same. If I know, and that's the other thing, I hope that relays are completely transparent as well on how they work. So trans transparency is still important. And if a relay doesn't show me 100% how it works and makes it easy for me to understand because again, not a techie person, but GitHub has had really good explanations on Noster that I can actually understand. I was reading your one yesterday and I understand everything, <laughs> so that was great, thank you. Um, and that's what we need. We need to make sure that we pick the relays that we understand and that we agree with what they're telling us that they're going to do with our notes and other stuff. Yeah, I think choice is the biggest thing and not just in relays, but also in clients and making sure that there's enough support for developers and designers to continue their work and to be able to scale across time. So um, yeah, I think 
choice is the biggest thing. And I think it's something that we have right now on Nostra. And I think it's something that needs to grow and it needs to be protected. It's part of the foundation of decentralization of Nostra. And it's going to be very important down the road. Uh, to add to that, I would say it's going to be trial and error, right? Which everybody has witnessed um, over the last couple of months. If th if something's not working and you're feeling that you're uncomfortable or you know you are running into issues, you know, voice them, and immediately you're going to get a lot of conversation around it. And whether that leads to the end solution, it might not. I think it's going to continue to evolve, but it's important that those conversations happen as they come up. And just speaking to that, I, I like the idea of, let's say there's all these relays that come up that I'm against, you know, whatever they've decided, censoring or, uh, you know, it's seed oil maxi group or, you know, something. I'm like, I want nothing to do with that relay. What I love is I have the choice to, it's intimidating for me now, but I can run my own relay and really work hard to get it to be a popular relay and put my intention and work there. So if, if you're passionate about it and don't like the way it's going, then do your part. I think it's just important once you find the relays or re a relay that you, um, you support and that you support the people that are running it and that, that you don't like forget about it and then just just make sure that you, they're always in the back of their, your mind because they're always working hard 24-7 to make sure everything's running. I just really quick want to give Angela a shout out for all of her work behind the scenes. Can we get a round of applause for Angela? Because she's been doing so much, you know, from a cold weather state, watching us have fun here. So just shout out to you, Angela. You're coming next year, Angela, just letting you know. I think that's a perfect place to wrap unless anybody had anything quick. In that case, I'd like to give a shout out to all of you. Can we get a round of applause? Thank you. <laughs> Noster wouldn't be the same without you. We're glad to be here with you. And zap the nips. Zap those <laughs> nips. You heard it here first. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Nips for zap. <laughs> We're going to roll into another session here. Is, uh, is Matt around? So uh, next we've got Matt Lorenz. Um, he's going to walk us through a project that he's working on. And uh, I'll, let, I'll let Matt take it from there. He's getting set up now. But as he gets set up to get him in the mood, can we get a round of applause to welcome him to the stage? And I'm going to go see, again, if my foot is falling off yet or not. But stay tuned on that. Hello. Hi. Um, my name is Matt Lorenz. Uh, I'm the CTO at Planetary. We're building a Nostra client called NOS. Um, you may have heard Rabble speak yesterday. He's our CEO. And um, I just want to do a quick plug for something that uh, I'm starting up. Um, it's really an invitation to a discussion. You know, I think um, as developers, we like to focus on the technical details, as we should. Um,
But there's an important conversation to be had a level above that, uh, which is who we're building for and, and you know, what we want Nostr, the social network part of Nostr, which is not all of it, but the social network to feel like. So um, when we talk about who we're building for, we've, we've said a lot this week that we don't want Nostr to just be Bitcoiners, right? Um, and I think it's easy to be like, oh yeah, we're building for everyone. Um, and I think we have a long way to go to uh, build something that works for everyone. For example, we like to say Nostr is censorship resistant. And I think it is a great place for journalists to publish their work. But it's a horrible place for journalists to find sources and talk confidentially with them because all their metadata is exposed to relays, to network, uh, network providers and nation states. Uh, similarly for activists, um, you know, if we want to enable people to speak subversively uh, in the face of tyrannical government, we have a lot of work to do. You know, do we want to build a place where transgender people feel comfortable? Are we building clients where um, people with bad internet connections can have a good experience, like hundreds of millions of people do? Um, you know, you can ask yourself if your project works for someone who's hard of hearing or hard of seeing. This was something that, that Twitter did a great job of, um, of supporting. And I want to do that too. So, um, if that's something that you're interested in, um, I've made a, a Nostr account. I'm calling it Decent Nostr. Um, the idea being, you know, uh, can we make a social network on Nostr where people are decent to each other, where clients uh, are decent to their users and to the relay owners, where relay owners respect what the users want to do with their data. I think this is, um, this is a really interesting conversation to have. And part of my, um, you know, personally, uh, I've been on decentralized social networks for about 12 years now. And one of the things that's important to me that I, I feel like I've learned uh, being on Tent and then Mastodon and then Scuttlebutt for the last several years and now Noster is that the way we break Part of the way that we break the cycle of good decentralized systems centralizing and then becoming evil is by listening to the people who are most threatened, who are most vulnerable to those centralized systems. Um, so that's what I'm interested in, in discussing. I'm going to be setting up like a monthly call to talk about these things. If you're building something on Nostr and you want to be involved in that um, and you want to show up and, and do some listening, and uh, do some, some talking about what are the nips uh, that, that we need to write and that we need to adopt uh, to get to this place, then uh, give the account a follow. That's the nip five. It's a, the underscore is a little weird, but if you put that into the search bar of most clients, it'll pull up the profile. And uh, give it a follow. The, uh, I put the profile picture of the account is uh, Bill and Ted from the great film Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And the advice that, that Bill and Ted get towards the end of the movie is to be excellent to each other. And I think that's what a lot of us are trying to build here. Um, I know the pursuit of that is why I'm here. So uh, yeah, if that resonates with you, uh, come find me. Thank you. Okay, hey everyone, how's the heat going? Um, how many here have been developing since the HTTP protocol? Raise of hands, who's been here since? Okay, all right, so 20% in the room maybe? Um, so 
you know, when Elon Musk bought Twitter and that finally came true, you know, he uh, supported this quote that I think is coming from Jack Dorsey, actually. Uh, but, you know, how is Twitter going so far? And I think the reality and our suspicions about how Elon would be as a good public space manager have been borne out quite well. And so this uh, aspiration that Jack has and that a lot of us had about why we were joining the web in the beginning, in the sort of prior paradigm, um, were there. Kind of like what Matt, the CTO of NOS, was just saying. I'm the uh, product lead for uh, Planetary and for NOS. Uh, and I've been with uh, Rabble since Elon bought Twitter. I, Rabble was the first person that I DM'd. I was like, we should talk. I'm really concerned. And then a couple weeks later, I was working for Planetary and then just led us into the pivot into working on Noster. So part of the background that I'm coming from, and this kind of I just want to support the point that Matt's making about decent Noster, is that my prior work that I've been doing for the past maybe 10 years is what's called digital placemaking. So that is about the appropriate use of digital technology in the way that we create and maintain public spaces. And so there's a lot of analogies between how a really good park is designed to how is a really good, say, social media digital town square. Now, of course, digital technology is a communications technology, so there's more analogy that is useful than there is like direct metaphor. So you can kind of get stuck in the metaphor sometimes. But I think for the point today on this very tropical heat-induced environment that we're in, I'm just making one point and then I'm off the stage. So one of the key things in placemaking in general is this idea of the power of 10. And so there's the analogy here is for social media, for your clients, for your apps, for your relays, for your products, for your services. Um, sure, there can be microservices, and that's a specific tactic. But if you're trying to create a good digital town square, you need to have multiple activations. So if you think about this as something like any kind of great plaza or park in a lot of the world's great cities, you have a fountain, maybe you've got the ice cream cellar and the shaved ice guy, and you've got the coffee shop, and maybe there's some wine, and there's a thing for the kids, and there's also the people watching, and people dipping their toes in the, in the fountain. There's a lot of things to do, and that usually is a great public space because it's really good for everybody, right? It's uh, handicap accessible. It's good for kids that feel safe running around. It's good for women on their own to walk through. So that's another way that in public space design, in urban planning, one of the metrics that we use to determine a successful public space is, do women feel safe, okay? And there's other metrics like this that are kind of proxies for, is this a welcoming, open environment? So if we're talking about freedom to be, freedom to be free from harm, this is a really important metaphor. So in Noster, you know, part of one of the concepts that we've been kicking about at NOS is, what would be sort of like the minimum set of NIPs to make a good client? You know, how do we fix the metadata leakage? If we're about privacy and we don't want women or other vulnerable populations to be stalked, we should fix the metadata leakage, right? So, uh, and then there's other corollaries there in terms of an ecosystem play. So being part of the hard Yaka crew, you know, there's, you wanna have in a public space, you want 10 great awesome things to do in that or in your client, but then in an ecosystem or a, a district of a city or a region of a city, you want 10 amazing destinations um, to be in there. So that would be, of course, not anything that any one company can do per se, but it's gonna take all of us to be creating great digital public spaces as it were, um, with a lot of these protections that the big social media platforms have clearly not provided. So I just wanted to illustrate another kind of metaphor to kind of under, um, underscore the point that Matt was just making. Thank you for your time, stay hydrated. One, two. Well, that was less of a rock star entrance, but... <laughs>
we have our amazing MC Walker dealing with a little technical issue, you know, with his legs. Uh, go on Noster and uh, check out the pictures, boost them. But uh, you know how they say, you know, if, if no one opens the door, you open the door yourself. Um, so, first of all, guys, uh, we have Keith from Seed Signer. Please, a round of applause for him. And we have Pablo from Swan, but you're really from Noster now. <laughs> no, the protocol. protocol, yeah. And uh, we are here to talk about NIPS. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, we already had way better NIPS panel. Like this will, one will be more talking about uh, uh, protocol and all of that. So sorry if we disappoint, but uh, we will try our best. And uh, we were uh, discussing, focusing on like a on variety of NIPs because there are like a lot of a lot of NIPs open, but in the end uh, we only have like an hour, and uh, it's better to focus on NIP that all three of us are pretty passionate about and we think it's really important, which is NIP 26. Keith, you haven't opened NIP 26, but you have been very active on it and like uh, pushing it to the point of like being closed but then reopened. Can you give us like a little introduction for both like technical and non-technical uh, crowd on what NIP26 is, why it is important, and what, what was the work that you did? Yeah, so this will be more technical, but in as a friendly, welcoming manner as possible for anyone who's not technical. So if you hear technical things, power through it. We'll do our best to, for it to make sense. And then you'll be able to appreciate um, some of the, the further discussion that comes downstream from there. And if it becomes too technical, I'll jump in and translate. Right, because you're the least technical person here. <laughs> Absolutely. So <clears throat> uh, I come from SeedSigner, which is an open source Bitcoin hardware wallet project. And so if you know anything about Bitcoin, you know anything about hardware wallets, it's all about getting your Bitcoin keys away from danger, right? If you have your Bitcoin keys on your phone, in your Bitcoin wallet, you just have to assume at some point it's gonna get compromised, your keys are gonna get stolen, your Bitcoin is gone. So the Bitcoin ecosystem has spent a ton of time to reduce that risk, separate the device that's connected to the internet from the device that contains your private keys. Then comes this amazing Noster innovation, and we all copy and paste our keys into a web browser. Or we click download on this extension from this developer we've never heard of, and then we copy and paste our private keys into that Chrome extension. And we're like, yeah, we're doing it. We're great. Um, now, just very quick background. You need a Noster private key because everything you do on Noster, every action you take, has to be signed to prove that you were the one that executed that action. Even if you just hit the, the shaka, right? That is an action that you're taking on behalf of your identity. And so even the shaka, hitting like, hitting heart, that has to be an event that is signed, signed, it's a cryptography term, right? By your private key. So the question is, how do we maintain all of this amazing instant activity, this Twitter-like activity where like, 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 reply, reply, re, you know, repost, follow, whatever. All these events have to be signed. Um, but we shouldn't be doing it with our private keys hot. We call them hot keys if they're directly accessible to a, a web environment. Like the main key, that's, that's where it comes. And it also, would you haven't included, like not to scare us off, but the problem we have at BTC Pay Server and that I think every team will have, if you have a shared account, like company account, and you just can't allow to share that main private key with everyone, like this is where NIP26 comes in with delegating the key. But right, so what NIP26 tries to specify is a way for your main identity key to say, hey, this key, which we will uh, personify as the Pablo key, <laughs> I'm going to authorize the Pablo key 
to execute events on my behalf. So now... Wrecked. But only, only when I tell you so. Uh, okay, <laughs> I, I have control of the Pablo key. Um, but that would enable me to keep my main identity key out of these web browsers, out of the extension. They can stay safely offline in storage. And then I can take my poor Pablo key. He's the one I put at risk. I copy and paste him into the web browser. And so if my Pablo key is compromised, I'm sorry, you get kidnapped, you get taken away from me, right? Then whoever kidnaps him can start posting events as if it were, they were coming from me. But when I create this delegation, when I give my Pablo key the permission to post on my behalf, I can also put restrictions on it. He can only, let's say he can only shaka a post, that's it. All Pablo, do, all Pablo does is, is spread joy. Shaka, 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 <laughs> shaka, shaka. He can't, if he tries to write a you know, PV post in the morning, it won't work, right? It'll just get rejected because he's not allowed to create that content, create that signature, it'll get rejected. Um, we can also box him by time, right? He's only allowed to post on my behalf starting today and ending 30 days from now. And he can try six months from now, but again, it'll just get rejected because it's out of the bounds of the, the terms of this delegation that I created. Uh, One thing that I'm kind of missing uh, in, in those restrictions when it comes to NIP 26 delegated keys is like also, again, revocation. Yeah. Like you, you, the only restriction is by time, right? And, and even the, the time is... Un unkind. Yeah, right now it's two conditions. It's kind and created that. Yeah, yeah because kind is uh, what you were saying about like you can't Don't write a note. Yeah, you can only yeah, uh, like it. The other one is by date, but yes, and I, I think this is part of it starts to unfold the big problem that NIP 26 has, where the conditionals and, and this is where the new ones comes. The conditionals that we can apply to this delegation are not uh, specific enough. So y within one month of a key delegation, which from a user experience standpoint, if you think I have my main key on the seat signer and once a month I take it out and I create this delegation, it's, it's okay. It's not great if we have to do it once a month, but even once a month allows for a whole lot of abuse. If the key is compromised, you can create millions and millions and millions of, of events. You can tag people. You can create n a disaster under notifications. You can just write whatever you want. And this is where it starts to unfold the complexity that is hidden behind NIP26. Because we could say, well, you can only use this specific tag. So you cannot tag people. Um, you can only tag people under these conditions. Um, it, it starts to become quite quite complex. And I, NIP26 is probably the NIP that has the most hate. <laughs> it's a nerd thing. Well, yeah. maybe, Keith, you can give us a little like history on how you, when, when did you start working on it? Because you worked on it, you got it to the point where it's closed, implemented, and then kind of got reopened now. Like, what, what, how was that? That was like the last two months, three months? Well, I, 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 have to, I have to give credit. I did not create NIP26. I didn't define it. I, I'm a latecomer to Noster. I'm a Noster noob. I'm only, you know, two months in. Uh, but so this, this NIP26 st standard, in quotes, was, was already out there. And it was what I was looking for. Because, again, coming from the Bitcoin world, like, how do I get my key out of, out of the browser? And I'm like, oh, cool. Somebody already defined it. Great. All right, now how do I use it? Which, which client support NIP26? How do I create my delegation tag? And I'm looking, and I'm looking, and there's nothing out there. Nobody's implemented it, nobody supports it. Uh, the relay is just barely sorta yeah, not really right. support it. Um, and so, like everything else in Nostra, like, <laughs> like Pablo's been preaching, you just gotta build it, right? It doesn't exist yet, so you just gotta build it. So I built a very primitive, simple way to start creating these delegation tags, to start creating delegated posts. And again, I wasn't the first. Other people have you know, experimented with it. But I was just fairly noisy about it. You know, so I created a delegated post, 
And when I say the clients don't support it, that first post, again, using this analogy, it didn't look like it came from me, even though it had the proper delegation uh, uh, information in it. It looked like it came from my Pablo key. Nobody follows my Pablo key. Nobody knows who the hell this is. And when you look at my history, there's no sign of that uh, first post. And so uh, it was like literally that same day, I think, uh, Kieran had just opened his Telegram group and he put out the link to it. I clicked in it. There were like six people in there only. And I'm like, Kieran, Kieran, what about NIP26? And I think it was like two hours later. He's like, oh, hit refresh. And it started showing up as me, right? So he had patched it in like no time at all. I'm like, this is amazing, right? And so I'm trying to like be loud and get other clients to support it. And uh, now that it's like a month and a half, two months later, we're up to two. <laughs> two, two clients. What a, woo! So thank yeah, you, Kieran. Thank you. You're an all-star. <laughs> yeah. What is the second client now? Uh, gossip, uh, so I'm told. Gossip, gossip and Coracle. Coracle as well? Coracle as well, yeah. And I have a non-submitted PR where I made NIP26 work on demos. I don't code Swift, I don't like Swift, my code looks horrible. So I publish a note saying, I have the code working for NIP26, but someone that actually understands how Swift works should clean it up. But there was no uptake. <laughs> yeah, because it also doesn't work on Iris. I pinged uh, Marty from Iris. I was like, hey, I want to get BTC Pay server account up and running. But if we start using NIP26, like most clients will not display uh, our messages, which is where I now want to take this discussion in, in, in the direction of like, how, how do we coordinate better on NIPs? Because there are tons of NIPs that are now open. At one point, when you talk with Fiat Jeff and you talk with uh, William, when you talk with other developers, they're like, I could follow the discussion on NIPs, but now they're like 50 unmerged NIPs. Yeah. Which ones make sense? Which one doesn't? Like, well, what, is, what is your opinion on that? I, I, we were discussing about this before, and I, I think what's really cool about Nostr is that there is no consensus. So I, I can implement in a client support for NIP, whatever. It doesn't mean that Damos has to apply. So for example, market, uh, a NIP for marketplaces. Damos doesn't need to support that. But there are some NIPs that are kind of core to the functionality uh, of Nostr. NIP01 defines how communication is done in, in Nostr. A client that doesn't support NIP01, it, it's simply not a Nostr client, it's something else. Um, NIP26 is kind of in this place where it's, it's not core to the protocol, but if clients don't support it, it defeats the purpose because if, like what Keith was saying, he, he, he did the right things, but then the clients are displaying the information in the wrong way. So I think we should have a mental model of what's optional. I mean, we do have on the NIP, we have what's optional and what's not, but I, I don't think we're paying too much attention to that. Uh, I think we should split what's optional and what's not optional in a way that is clear because what, what Rockstar is saying, there, it, there are so many. It, it's just there is no way to keep up with, with all the different NIPs. Because right now we have uh, the applications that we want to build on top of Nostr, they are in the same space as what is core to the protocol. Yeah, and for any of you that aren't programmers, haven't you know, interacted on GitHub with programmers, it's a terrible experience. Like the, the stereotypical view of a programmer is we're like, we're quiet, awkward people, but then we get like savagely angry <laughs> about really tiny, stupid, stupid things, and that all comes out on these GitHub discussions on these proposals. So uh, I, I did have a couple small changes to the NIP26 uh, uh, spec. spec, thank you. Um, and on the smallest one, it just exploded into this ridiculous flood of like back and forth argument and debate. And what it all boils down to is, should we use commas or should we use ampersands? That was it. That was the entire thing. And it went on for so long that Fiat Jaff was like, yo, I'm out. 
Right? Because it's a pain in the ass. It's a pain in, nobody wants to sort through a bunch of obnoxious programmers arguing at each other about stupid, stupid, immaterial things. Uh, I'm just doing it, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> we even have a name, we call it bike shedding, where you just argue about the details to forever. Wait, I, I've always been confused by that reference. Can you explain the, the bike shedding well, Bike shedding is literally that. Is you argue for the, for the details and you fight for the most specific thing um, to the point of irrelevance and you just don't make any decision. Yes, like you're building a house but you're also building a shed that holds bikes and you spend 90% of the time talking about that shed and how bikes will be stored while not building a house. Because yeah, I'm, I'm looking at NIP, <laughs> yeah, programming term. Uh, NIP 26, I'm looking, yeah, 90 comments in span of, yeah, what is this, like three months. And I'm trying to find, because I read this discussion multiple times, and my favorite comment is, uh, like, Fia Jeff, again, he was like, I have no idea if this is working, like, should I merge this? Yeah, because it was like, it was fifth discussion, but this is where the, Pablo, like, what, what should we do with this? Because also the FIA, Jeff, and others were expressing, like, okay, should we refactor NIP, NIP process? Like, because at this point, it's just full-time job just to read all the NIPs. We also discussed, like, is everything a NIP? Or there are NAPs? They're, like, optional. Like, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I 100% think that we should have a split here where what's optional is very clear. It's a different thing. You want to be at the marketplace. You want to spec out how to do trading. You want to spec out how to do an Airbnb, whatever it is. It's, it's uh, we shouldn't need to it's read that. It's an application. It's not. It's, it's an application. It's, it's separate. So yeah, I'm 100% in favor of just splitting. Yeah, and concerns. I think the whole NIP concept is a little bit of a misappropriation from Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. everything in Bitcoin, we must have agreements. Yep. We cannot YOLO in our own separate directions if we want to all stay in consensus, if we all want to agree on what is Bitcoin, what is not Bitcoin. But then to pull that level of rigor where, where these long obnoxious conversations are just as bad, but they really matter on the Bitcoin side and they're unavoidable. Um, but to pull that over to the Noster side, like if I knew, na no, if I knew then what I know now, <laughs> what I would have done was I would have implemented my NIP26 uh, solution. I would have put it out there. Uh, I'm gonna pretend like I can just magically uh, um, uh, have, have been friends with Marty uh, two months ago and, and Kieran and Will uh, and everyone else out there, and I would have just DM them. Be like, yo, Marty, do me a solid. <laughs> Implement this thing I just built. Yo, Kieran, hook me up, man. This is a cool thing. You're going to love it. Let's do this. And I would just, I would just backroom negotiate the feature in. And then once you have like a quorum of the clients or the relays out there, sorry, y'all, I won, right? Yeah. So it's like using New York agreement model for Nostra development. I, I, Let's I, go. <laughs> I'm, also a, I'm also a Bitcoin 2017 newbie, so I, okay. uh, I, I was not around those Yeah, days. yeah, you, you don't know what I just said. You have no idea. I, I, I think it's, because we're talking so much about NIP26, I think it's important to um, uh, shed light on, first, what NIP26 was created for, because the idea wasn't to use it for this, it's just there, isn't anything else, so we ended up doing this. The, the idea was to be able to um, delegate uh, a key to do something like very specific. The, 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 so backstory, the reason. Originally. The, yeah. The, yeah, originally. The reason I came into looking into NIP26 was because of a meme. I created a website where I, I it's called nostreet.com, uh, where I wanted to be able to create an event and publish it at a later point in time. There is a use case, very obvious, that is like schedule uh, an event, post it in 12 hours or something like that. But there is also the, the um, when you don't know when the event should be broadcasted. My meme was I wanted to create an event saying some people get wrecked when Ethereum price goes to zero, which I thought it was funny. So I started writing it. And then I noticed that there wasn't, uh, other than NIP26, there wasn't a way to, to, to do that. So I started building NIP26, and I noticed that 
it simply there was no support. Uh, there was no way for an extension to sign for the delegation token. And there was no way to restrict the, um, the, the, the key in, in a very specific way. So uh, uh, going back to what I was saying before, once you have a delegation token that is very broad, you can just really abuse it. I, it's kind of like almost having the private key of the user. I don't want to have that responsibility. So, No, for, for me, it's all about being in consensus of what it is that you're trying to do. Because I can, for you, NIP26 is then that. For you, it's something else. For me, it's a way to get teams really onboarded on Noster. And that's where we need to have mechanisms to force consensus. Yeah, that's what I wanted to, to build eventually. My, my plan was to build something. Because I was talking with MBK earlier, and he told me, well, I can't really have a coin kite using, I, other than myself, I, and I have the keys, I can't have other people using the coin kite account because it's a security company at the end. And I can't have people writing just anything from the official coin kite account. Yeah, and the main reason for us here to focus on NIP26 is because it would provide us, like it would bridge the gap. Because when I look at everyone in the audience, like, including me, we're all screwed. Because we copy pasted our Noster keys in like tons of clients. Mm -hmm. One of them is going to get compromised. And then how will we migrate our accounts? Currently there is no way. And this is where we can start talking about, uh, there is no NIP currently that would allow us to do key revocation with option to like point to whatever is the new key. But that's, to me, like most important nip that we can create now. Do you agree? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, the, the way I see it, handling keys is the one problem that we still need to solve. All the other problems, the DIDs, the DID people, like MBK would say, the DID stuff, all these other problems we can solve in second layers over Noster. The key issue, we cannot solve it on a different layer. We need to solve it here. Well, and, and, and just to be clear, when Rockstar says key revocation, it's saying like, I, I authorized my Pablo key, and now I cut him off. I, I pull away that, I, I nullify that authorization. Yeah, because what I would really love if I was able to do after this conference is now that Ben came up with uh, that hardware signer. Like, I would literally migrate, like I would say, hey, my key that I pasted in five uh, browsers or 10 because I, I did it on mobile as well. Committed to GitHub. <laughs> oh, no. No, I, I wasn't as bad as Gandalf like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Gandalf tweeting out private key. That was epic. Uh, yeah, shout out to Gandalf. Um, no, but it, like everyone, like, it's not only for me, but for everyone to like, so you, you are able to migrate between keys. And then as you do, like Ben, again, he migrated to another key. Now I always like, whenever I try to mention him on any client, there are multiple bands. And like, which, which one is it? Like, I, I know I always will tag the wrong one. <laughs> and <laughs> that's something that, and there was some pushback on it from people that are like, well, how can you guarantee the, the, the point is like, you do not guarantee, but you provide people an option. And then there is NIP22 that does, hey, limiting how long like relays are actually accepting events because once your key is compromised, someone can write an event and say, hey, a year ago you said this. And it's cryptographically, yeah, like, hey, it's signed, but it's not true, it wasn't you, like key is compromised. Yeah, you know, I, I was talking with Fiat Jeff about doing some form of, of key revocation where if your, your delegation is compromised, you can go in and you can say, you, you can revoke it in some way, publishing an event. And what, what he was saying is that you don't have the guarantee that he, your revocation event is going to be served or is going to be seen or is going to be respected. But the fact that you can, it's not perfect, but the fact that you can create a revocation event and you can do an open timestamp so we can, we can cryptographically say this event was created at time X, even if someone continues to abuse that delegation token, you can show that I have the proof that I revoked this delegation token a week ago. Yeah, 
And uh, Keith, anything to add from your end uh, on NIP 26? Because I also want to take us a little bit to like other NIPs. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're blending two related concepts, yeah. right? So there's one is revoking, revoking the delegation specifically, right? But then Rockstar is also talking about migrating. So if, if my, we, we should all consider our keys dirty right now because they've been hot, pasted into a browser. Compromised. Compromised, right. But I've built up my Nostra reputation. I don't want to just spin up a brand new Keith Mukai key, zero followers, zero following, no history at all, and say, this is me now, everybody come find me. It would be great to pull that history forward into my new key, and like they were saying, if you visit my old key, being like, no, 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 this one's dead, to, you know, move on. Um, and go going back to the misery of working with other programmers, we love each other, but we're horrible people. Um, nah. Is, is that like, like... We love you, Keith. It's okay. <laughs> I'm a nice programmer. Oh, oh, but others are bad. Okay, my yeah, my bio says non-toxic. Okay, go, go on, yeah. Um, but that, like, like Pablo said, you're not guaranteed that all the relays would see your revocation. And so the, the nerd debates become, well, that's unacceptable. We have to find the perfect solution. And so then that just derails things further and further and further, and it forces more and more complication to find the perfect solution to it. Whereas we're just like, I mean, if 20 of my 22 relays get it, that's pretty damn good. Yeah, I mean. Must it. <laughs> I agree, and as someone that died on Twitter, like I volunteer, like I, Kieran, if uh, you supported Marty, if you supported with Iris, like I, my key can die, and I can move to another key, and I, I will be a tester for for this. I, I think it's important to to uh, present the, the steel man of why NIP26 is bad because I, I think it's a very convincing argument that NIP26 has uh, a lot of cost for relays, and the, the, the more costly it becomes to run a relay, the more it the network centralizes. So it, it's definitely something that is absolutely fundamental. So when you do a, a delegation and you sign, so the, the example that Keith was saying, he signs with the, with the Pablo key, that Pablo key shows up as a different Pablo key, entirely different Pablo key. So now relays have to know, okay, this key from Keith, Keith key and Pablo key are Keith key. And what if Keith is doing 10,000 delegation tokens? Now, that is, becomes more and more and more expensive. When a client says, give me all of Keith events, they need to check for his keys and 10,000 other keys. What happens, should the relay also apply? Because the conditional, the, the, the delegation token has this between these dates and this information, this kind. Should the, is that, it's a responsibility of the relay enforce that the delegation token is valid. Uh, yes. the, the, it's, yes. it's, a, it's a very slippery slope. Yes, but, but yes, it should enforce it. And then I also, when it comes to implementation, I would be really interested for relays that have implemented NIP26. And there is a great example, like I always pull up with Nostream from Kameri. It's, it's implemented, and this is where community can share the best practices, because like, how do you implement this? Is it another table that just contains the mapping between um, the main key and delegated keys? Are you just replacing uh, the key itself in your table? I don't know, Kieran, how did you do it um, in, in Snort? Can you, can you share that with us? Do we have like someone to give him a mic? Or you just say, and I can repeat it. So you just like replace the pub key, delegated pub key with the main pub key. So the, the relays are doing the work for you. You just have to retrieve the right piece of data that they're giving you already. Yeah, yeah. but for example, Nostar R, um, RS relay supports it and they disabled it. So it, the code it was, is written, but it's disabled. It was like too performance. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Huh. But my, so my understanding, uh, due to my intense investigation, uh, speaking with Kieran this morning over breakfast, is that 
it was probably a kind of janky implementation in the first place. And since nobody was using NIP26, it had never been battle tested. Yeah, but no, no, at the same time, because it's not supported, no one is using it. So yeah. what we know about how a relay performs with NIP26, we have no idea. Even for the ones that currently support it, it it's not at scale, right? Hey, um, not no one is using I'm using it, and I have a Nostra account for my dog, and she's using it. Yeah. And well, we, we, no, no, we can't have this, guys. Like, good, good thing we had this talk because I'm now disappointed. We need to like, improve those like, database queries. Anyways, um, I hope that this discussion uh, focused the light on NIP26 and that, that Relay developers, well, those that I know, like, there will be getting DMs. Um, <laughs> there, there will be support for that. But one thing that I love on Kameri's NOS stream is that there is a list of NIPs uh, that Relay uh, implementation supports. So it's like NIP01, basic protocol flow, like that one is the only required one. NIP02, 4, 9, 11, 11, 8, 12, 13, 15, 16, 20, 22, 26, 28, 33, and 40. And that's it, that's what Relay supports. And then if you do go to if you do go to Noster.watch, you have a list of relays and then you have uh, that meta information on this relay supports th these NIPs. Uh, for clients, it is a little bit extra. I know, Marty, you need to implement NIP05, right, on clients to like, show those badges and some extra NIPs. But um, what, what are really like besides these NIPs, like what are, we already said, hey, there should be a NIP for key revocation and migrating. Pablo, like, what is the NIP that should exist but that doesn't exist right now? If you can't the, think of any. The one you haven't created. Yes, <laughs> there we go, okay. Keith? I, I, I'm a one trick pony, all so I know is NIP 26. 26. Okay, well, I'll pull or more. Or something to replace it. I'll, yeah. I'll pull, pull more out of the sleeve. I know I have Nicholas from Galois. Which NIP should be created? Oh, actually, I have, I have another one. Uh, that might now be. you remember. No, 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 now Nicholas. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I talked about it earlier today. Uh, maybe it's an application NIP, and maybe there should be, like, it's not a NIP, it's an app, or it's something. But what is the idea for NIP? Um, I guess it's a peer-to-peer -peer trading, so the idea of uh, be able to use Nostr as a platform to buy and sell Bitcoin without exchanges. So today you have to use, even if you do peer-to-peer -peer trading, you have some platform where you have to have an account, you know, you think of Paxul, for instance, and the reason this platform exists is because there is a reputation system on Nostr, and Nostr is a perfect platform to I guess we move those centralization points, and I think Nostr is a yeah perfect platform for it. Now you know I'm I'm thinking about making a NIP. Maybe I can talk about about it today. I've I've talked with multiple people. It's like okay, should I open a NIP where it's a type one event and I just share messages or a kind one? Is it a, a dedicated kind? Like I think there is also maybe a standard to be created when you want to think of an application, like how to make it. As far as I know, there is no consensus about how to do it. But the reason it's probably important is because there will be, at some point, optimization for Relay about how to handle this type of messages. And the way you design it when you do your NAP, like your, uh, you know, Nostr application proposal, I guess, uh, you want to think about how to make it scale, and there should be standard practice on how to do it. So maybe there should be a NIP for NAP. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, when we were talking about this in preparation for the session, it was like, okay, will we have also, we have NIPs that are kind of protocol related, and will we have NAPs that are application related? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think Pablo. it's uh, super important so that we can have the signal in one place so make sure that all the stuff that is super important for the protocol itself that like I, I a few days ago I wanted to to add um, there is a there is 
th three ways in which you communicate with a, with a relay. You send an event, you subscribe to things, um, and then the event, the the relay replies with events that it finds, and it, fi it replies with notices. And the notice, usually the notice is a response to something that happened, like you subscribe to something, and you exceed the amount of subscriptions that, that you can do, or you are getting rate limited, or something like that. It would be very nice to know when a notice comes that it's related to something else that you said. I, from a developer standpoint, it would be nice to know that I'm getting this notice because of this thing I said before, so I know that the subscription that I requested didn't work, for example. So something like that is, would be very nice that we can discuss it without the discussion of all these hundreds and thousands of different applications that we can build in Noster. Uh, I think maybe the analogy with Lightning is quite interesting. So the way Lightning is being designed, there is like two form of spec. There is Bolt, which is like, if you implement a Lightning client, you currently have 11 Bolt that you have to implement. It's mandatory. There is a lot of contention on Bolt 12 because and, and the way you know, today you add a bolt in Lightning is you have to have two clients that implement it, which is a good way to uh, think about consensus because I guess the bar today to have a new bolt is very high, but Lightning has a, I guess, need consensus, like strong consensus. And you have also Blip, which is more something like, hey, I have an idea, I want to, maybe it's an application type of thing. And for this, you don't need any consensus, right? And the fact that there is two set of repository, you know, one with strong consensus, one with no consensus, or so very rough consensus, I think gives some signaling about what do you expect when you create something new. And right now, probably NIP is like no consensus or like very rough consensus which is great because now it's allow anyone to say, hey, I have an ID, I will open you know, a PR, and maybe it get merged, maybe it's not, but maybe there need to be a consensus as how the consensus for NIP works. You know. No, or, or you go with what Keith said, yeah, New York agreement approach. Yeah. You just like coordinate with big clients. Back from deals. <laughs> no, but back from deals. But I, I'm now looking at um, uh, PRs on uh, Nostra protocol NIPs, uh, 73 PRs open, and we have, yeah, some gems like supply ch chain Epix NIP 128 and 420. We have NIP 9000 AI assistance. I mean, <laughs> NIP 82 medical data. You were like, can we do trading? Like, when, if we could do medical data, we could definitely do it. But my point here is when I'm looking at this uh, list of PRs on NIPs, there definitely needs to be some structuring and categorization. And what you were saying about bolt, uh, bolts and like lightning development, we can take a page from that book and um, really help structure because at this point, yeah, 73 open PRs, thousands of comments. Fia, Jeff, I don't know how you're surviving, yeah, all this. But five more minutes, uh, gentlemen, yeah. Uh, yeah, let's let's open the floor to any questions that we may have. I see Reverend Hoddle is there. Boom. Uh, going back to NIP 26, I think it was you guys were talking about, right? Yeah. Um, Jess has a, a PR open for, um, I forget the number. I don't four two, know. 421. What is it? 421. 421. Four four two um, it's, it's like, it's for key revocation, but it's like, you're pre-committing keys that you're going to go be going to before you add the key. And I just wanted to uh, bring up that topic and see what you guys thought of it, since I don't remember if it was mentioned or not. Yeah, I think it, it's, um, it's a workaround on one aspect of the issue. Uh, definitely less than solve the issue where you want to grant certain permissions to certain applications. It's I, I don't think it's, I, I know he proposed it as a, um, as a way to get away from NIP26. The way I see it, it's a different thing. Sorry. I, I, from my understanding, it wasn't had, didn't have anything to do with a uh, server. Uh, it, it could be actually be used in combination with, with NIP26 because like if your root key w was compromised in that situation, you'd, you'd be able to go to another key um, 
in, so it's they are not really like a an alternative to it. It would just be an addition to it. There, there's been. I, I looked at this, let's say, a month ago, so I'm out of date and I'm not an expert to begin with. But there were at least two major competing concepts for this sort of key migration. Um, and they were both getting incredibly complicated mm -hmm. yeah. um, to, the, to the point where I, I read through them to the best of my ability, and I was just like, oh my god. Like, <laughs> either it's way too complicated and nobody's going to be able to do this, or these debates with the developers are never going to get settled because they're just trying to like take on way too much and again trying to find that perfect flawless solution. Um, and, but that's just my like ten thousand foot view of, of the rough conversation. Yeah, because even what was a um, topic in our discussion over past hour um, uh, key revocation. Like I'm now looking at there is NIP one hundred nine public key revocation that goes into not only. Um, obsoleting your key, but then pinging relays to delete your content. So I, I really think we need to go into the direction where we agree on the approach before implementing approach so that it's not expensive for relay implementations, clients, like we know that this will actually be useful. But thank you, yeah, thank you for the question. And yeah, you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I mean, the counter argument to this is oftentimes if you don't implement it, you don't really realize the complexity behind your data yeah. structure. So there is pros and cons of you know having discussion without implementation. Yeah. One final question we need to prepare for the next yeah, session. Yeah, it's, it's actually a little uh, tool that's a NIPS tool that actually Yella, who's sitting here, uh, built that allows you to look up uh, NIPS very easily. And you just go nips.be slash and then the number, and it throws you to it. So just a little pro tip. Oh, there's search also, but that's like that's how I use it, but it has a few other features, so just wanted to pitch that. Okay, yeah. Thank you yeah. for pitching that. So speaking of tool, I wrote um, create nip26.lol, which allows you to experiment. I also did the, um, the support for nip26 on NOS2x, uh, which is merged, and so you can go there. If you use NOS2x, you can, you can create a delegated event, you can, and you can even publish it if you choose. Um, and then I also write, wrote a PR for, for GetAlvi, so if you use the PR that I wrote for GetAlvi, you can, you can use NIMP26 today. Nice job. That, that's yeah. news to me. <laughs> hey. Did you know that? Uh, no, now I, I can pump uh, your, your nostertool.com, where you can actually uh, publish NIMP26 NIP delegated messages. Yeah, right? it's just a very simple toolbox. Yeah. Well. That's it for this session. It's obvious that we need to coordinate, but I see that uh, session was loved. Everyone is prepared to clap, so please <laughs> clap for all our panelists. No one is asleep. So. Oh, n and no one is asleep because the next session, Jack is leading. Walker, come on. I'd like to give a shout out to the paramedic, Sean, who just gave me a Z-Pack and some Benadryl. Thank you, Sean. Um, can we get a round of applause for anyone who has given medical attention this time? <laughs> Apparently, most things in Costa Rica bite. Um, this is news to me. I'm a Midwestern guy. Uh, so, yeah. But here I am, alive, not asleep from the Benadryl yet. I think this next, uh, next discussion is going to wake everyone up. It looks like we've got a full house. Um, you guys don't really need an introduction, so I think you can just come up on the stage here. Can, you guys know these people, huh? Can we get a really warm round of applause? How's everyone doing? I have, uh, I came down with an ear infection, so I can't hear anything in this ear. So I'm keeping everyone here. And if NVK wants to sit right here, <laughs> that'd be perfect. Here, come. Come. Come up on stage. We need you on stage. Um, so we're, we're going to keep this like super, super simple. And we're just going to do audience Q&A. Um, and I, do we have a Fiat draft as well? Yeah. 
He's right. Writing in question, Rockstar will field that. Okay. Rockstar is going to. We asked him also to not just write questions, but um, write critiques of our performance up on stage <laughs> in, in his very, very caustic way. Uh, <laughs> but before, before we get going, I just wanted to um, say uh, how much we're grateful for all of the organizers, first and foremost. So there's a huge round of applause for the organizers. And led by McShane, can all the organizers like stand up? Everyone who's organized and worked on this, please stand up. This was done in a very, very short time frame and everyone like pulled it together in an incredible way and it's a ton of work and really appreciate you, very grateful for you uh, and thank you so much. We'll give you a lot more lead time next time. Um, also, we have a ton of volunteers. Many of you have volunteered. I just want to give a huge shout out to all the people that volunteered at the gate. That is some real work. So huge round of applause to the gate people. All of, our, all of our vendors and food, and of course, Awake. Thank you all so much. This, this place is incredible. But also the people of, uh, of Costa Rica. This is a very special country. It's a very loving country. When I first came here 10 years ago, I got into a taxi and the guy asked me, have you ever been in Costa Rica? And I said, no. And he said, well, we don't own Costa Rica, we share it. And I just thought that was such a beautiful tone uh, to set. And I think it's also set the tone for, for what we're all trying to build and, and, uh, and what we're supporting here. So, um, so thank you for being kind to, to all the folks that you encounter uh, and all the people who actually live here and, and make it what it is. Uh, so round of applause for Costa Rica Puerto Vida. <clears throat> okay. I think you know everyone, so maybe we'll just start with questions. And um, I don't know how to best organize this, but do we have a roaming mic? Okay. So, raise your hand. <laughs> Any question goes, but Noster uh, related would be great. <laughs> uh, a common theme throughout the conference that I noticed was people talking about building marketplaces and then having like a reputation system. And I'm wondering where that's going. And that's something that's always been super interesting to me. And I've, I've built many prototypes that end up basically looking like Twitter. But I have ideas for how that would work. And I'm wondering what you guys are thinking about with that. Um, I'm not really thinking about that. Um, but I really hope that people are thinking about that and I don't know I just like I'm just I'm focused on Damas and I, you know I, I highly doubt oh, there might be I'm like a built-in marketplace but I'm just trying to keep it focused so I really want to see that and I um, if there's anything we could do to like help encourage developers to build stuff like that if there's like you know the bounties and um, but yeah I would love to see it but me personally I don't have a strong opinion about it I think <clears throat> I, I think there's a lot of interest to, to build a marketplace on, on Noster for the past few months. A lot of people have talked about it, especially having it built directly into clients, existing clients, but also an entirely different client where it is just the actual you know, marketplace for, for Noster. But I, I think that this gets us back to you know, reputation and building a web of trust because we, we can't, censor people, we don't want to censor people, but because of that, I think a lot of people are, are, are kind of hesitant about getting scammed, because this happens on centralized platforms already. So this is a hard question for us to kind of tackle on an, an open protocol, something that's open to everyone, and which we want, it, we want it to be open to everyone. So I think that getting started, I, I think a, a lot of that will be with us building a web of trust amongst ourselves. Like, I know as, as Bitcoiners, you know, we don't like to trust. And I, I think that that's okay. But at the same time, I think that, you know, we've had some, some trust throughout our community showing that, you know, we are a caring community. We are a trustworthy community. And we can build 
a web of trust with one another to do business with one another. And maybe that will spar into something that's, that's beautiful. And, and I'm, I'm sure we will have bad actors that try to take advantage of, of this in the future, but you know, they'll, if that happens, if, if that happens, then their, their web of trust disappears. They do not, they are not in that web. They're, they're outside the web. So I think we, we just got to build it and, and work on it together. Yeah, um, I think for, for Snort, it would be really cool if we could, we could build a marketplace. And I know Carnage has been like really begging me to build it for a while. So it's, it's great that we have like Diagon Alley or, or something similar there that we could potentially implement. And, you know, of course there'll be problems and, you know, but we'll work through them, you know. Okay, next question. Thank you. Uh, what do the panel think about wallet integration into clients? And uh, Jack, what's your thoughts on LDK as a, a part in that solution? Uh, <clears throat> I don't really have that strong opinions on LDK in particular, although it is a very flexible framework for building wallets. Um, I find the biggest issue with um, integrating a wallet is the liquidity and making sure that you have a sufficient inbound and outbound channels to, to do that. Um, and that's the hard problem. You know, just adding LDK is, is good. And, and, uh, but yeah, the harder problem is getting into the, the liquidity of the network. But I just saw something this morning which blew my mind. And you might have seen the post about it. But <clears throat> making it easier to connect to external uh, cust uh, custodial or non-custodial nodes. So there's like this thing called... Um, was it uh, wallet node connect or something? Um, and it's just, it would be as easy as just scanning a QR code and you could connect to your uh, self-custodied self wallet or like a custodial wallet like Wallet Satoshi. And I'm, I, I'm pretty convinced that this is what I'm gonna do, right, <laughs> as soon as I get back because it seems so simple. And it uses Nostra itself to, um, to send invoices or to pay invoices over using um, ephemeral events. So, I'm super, I'm super pumped about that, and I think that's probably going to be the way that, um, that we integrate a, a wallet, is just connecting to external wallets. You know, think of, like, division of labor. You know, like, people shouldn't be building all the parts. Like, you mentioned LDK, BDK, the, the new one from uh, Breeze that I forget the name now. You know, try to let other people focus on that, because building a wallet is a lot of work. It doesn't seem like a lot of work, but it is. And, uh, and, and, and then you're just busy dealing with the wallet and you're not building like awesome Nostra stuff. I have a difference of opinion there. I think that, yes, that would shift focus, but running a Lightning node is hard. Nobody wants to manage, like the average person, probably half of you in here even that are Bitcoiners, don't want to manage liquidity. You don't want to manage channels. It's not. It, it's not fun, it's not easy. So we have a long way to go to allow Lightning to get better for users, but I, I think one easy step is just having it built directly into a client. Like right now I know of, of one client, they were on stage uh, either yesterday or the day before, uh, Get Current, they're here somewhere. They, they're the only uh, client that I know of right now that has it, it built the, a wallet built directly into it. So they have to manage the liquidity, they have to manage the channels. They're the ones that need to be the experts. Users don't need to do that. Users can just focus on pressing the zap button and have that work. You know, they don't have to pull out phones or copy QR codes or paste things into other wallets, which yes, that's easy. It's easy to do. But you can, you can make it absolutely seamless and so easy by having it built directly into a client. A lot of us have probably used stacker.news you know, or something, something or uh, fountain.fm. If you want to pay, you, you want to send some sats to somebody, you just, you just touch a button, you just tap something, and boom, they have, they, the, the sats go right there. You don't have to pull out your phone, you don't have to copy invoices, create invoices, do anything. It just works. It's really easy. And that's, that's, what the, that's what the average user wants. That's what the people that aren't here probably want. That's what the masses want. They just want it to work. They, they want technology to be in the background. You know, they, they don't care about how the sausages are made. You know, they just know that they're delicious. You know, they just want, they, they just want them to work. So I think that it may complicate things. It may make things a little bit 
harder for some clients, but not all clients need to integrate a wallet. You know, maybe, maybe we'll just have some for the people that, for the normies, you know, for the no corners, for the people that are being onboarded now, for those people that need an easy to use one point solution. No, what I meant is just, in, oh. what, what I meant is just integrate like wallets that already exist, like BDK, LDK, okay. into your client. Uh, yes, so that is easy. Okay. And you're so not busy there. building a wallet. Yes, we're in agreement. I, All right, thank you. I just don't think it's scalable for every client to just become a bank. Exactly. And now you have to have a giant liability to like manage everyone's funds. And if your node goes down, then like all your users are going to be super pissed off. So if I can any way can outsource that to external nodes, that's going to be the priority in Domus. Um, yeah, because I don't want to be a, a custodial node at all. So I, I think it goes back to that Unix philosophy of do one thing and do it very, very well. And, and that remains true. The, the Spiral team has done amazing with the LDK. Um, it, its original intent was just to make it a lot more performant and accessible for mobile developers uh, to work with Lightning. And I think it's succeeding. It's still small. Um, but I, its its breadth is also impressive. Like we're using it for our SQLs uh, Lightning node that we just stood up, um, and you know the the roadmap as they continue to build is just it's, it's only going to make Lightning better and more accessible to more people. So that that goal uh, I think it will continue to hit. Next question. Pablo. Thank you. Hey. Um, You're building so, the NDK. I am, among other things. <laughs> yes. Um, so when Bitcoiners get together, we always talk about how Bitcoin will die and how Bitcoin will be killed. How will Nostr die? How can Nostr be killed? And what do we have to do to prevent that? Um, <laughs> I think it'll if if. The, um, you know, the way that I see it dying is just if there's just so few people caring about it. But th that the hardest thing with like these open protocols is that someone is going to find a use for it somewhere. And, it, and even if it's some niche use, you know, it'll still be used. So whether it's dead or like in a zombie like state, like that's maybe we just consider that dead. So that's the biggest thing if it just people lose interest. And um, but I, I don't know, I don't I don't see that trajectory right now. But maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I, I can't see it happening, but we'll see. <laughs> I I would agree it's probably, the number one is irrelevance, which is hard to stop. Um, like I, I said on, on, on your pod, podcast, we're still in this mode of like we're running away from the things that we don't like to build a lot of this instead of running to it because we need to have it. And I think Zaps is one of those things that we're running to. And I think as that grows, the more and more people will run to it and it becomes easier and more accessible. I also think, like going back to, you said this um, yesterday, I believe, maybe today, um, but if we don't do enough, if we don't have enough focus on micro apps and we have too many um, larger concentrations of centralized apps, that's an attack vector for the whole network and, um, you know, another, another gatekeeper. So, and if we're, if we're overextended into one use case like social, also it doesn't really, um, meet the potential that the, this protocol can bring to the world. So there's, there's many, but like I think just building something that you want to use, that you love, and you show people, and they feel it, and they love it too, that makes it relevant. And that's the thing I would focus on, because everything else will be solved. Like we'll, we'll figure that out. But like the relevance, the relevance thing is, I think, the most important. Yeah, I, I mean, thinking adversarially got Bitcoin this far. And I think Nostra will benefit greatly from that. So, you know, I still remember when people didn't like Blaster. Yay, Mutiny. Um, so, you know, any behavior that is possible will be done by good actors and bad actors. So embrace the things you don't like on the network and sort of like remediate them because they're coming, right? They don't have as much imagination like, as you do, uh, but they, they will sort of figure out ways of making our life difficult. Uh, that's kind of their job. So, <laughs> um, you know, embrace it and then try to, to build against it as if that, that was like essentially like free pen testing. All right, next question. Gentleman Yellow. <clears throat> 
So maybe follow-up question slash bounce. Um, one of the things I noticed, I will call it uh, maybe like protocol sprawl or something like this, where there uh, initially there was like three, five nibs, and it was like, wow, okay, cool. I'll build a client over the weekend, and I'll build a relay over the weekend. But now it's many more. And some of these uh, nibs seem sort of kind of ad hoc-ish. Uh, so it seems like we're missing some sort of meta nib, like how to extend. I cannot like automatically load in a nib and add it to my client, right? So I start sensing that maybe this could become a problem where the protocol gets very complicated because lots of people suggest very specific use cases and maybe we forget to sort of step back and look at like, hey, wow, we're getting all these nibs. Can we make maybe a process to make that easier or maybe even formal language for nibs that you can just load in your client and a sort of agnostic? I have ideas about this, but I'm curious what, you, what your opinion is on this. So. The, yeah, the sprawl of the protocol. <laughs> yeah, I find this really interesting, and this this came up when um, Vitor did the medical nip, right? It's, it was very ad hoc, like you said. And I mean, I loved it, because it was like, oh, this is just one kind of cool use case. Um, and it didn't bother me, because I don't see that as sprawl. I just see it as like, it's there if you want to reference it for some use case. But it's not like it's, it's, not like it's required. Like, the number of required NIPs in the actual protocol is very, very minimal, probably within like the first 10 or 15. Um, so you can pretty much just ignore the rest of them. So I guess the issue would be if more and more became so common that they were basically required, so that would be concern, and then you would need some organizational structure that says these are the important ones and these ones are just ad hoc. Um, so yeah, I think we just, but that's just like a, a small documentation issue. Um, but yeah, I, I think people should submit more NIPs. Like I think more NIPs are, are really cool. We should explore different use cases. And I don't think we should get too upset that there's like too many of them. We get overwhelmed. But yeah, anyway, that's just my. Yeah, I mean, all the NIPs are, are optional as far as I know. It's only the first one that's required. So you can implement whatever you like. You know, it's, it's not up to you. All NIPs are welcome. Yeah, I, 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 I think that, uh, you know, I think that all of the uh, other stuff with, with Noster, all the other things, that all the other stuff that people are working on is the exciting part. Like where we're at now is, it's exciting, right? But not as exciting as what's gonna be built in the future. So as, as Will said, you know, submit all the nips. Like that's, where the, that's when the real fun begins. So keep working on it, keep submitting them because we're, we're really, really early. And so the more the, more the merrier. I would like to know the opinion on how should a relay discoverability work for the end user, so somebody that does not know how actually Nostr works, and what's your take on local or super local relays in which uh, you could uh, get uh, information on where you are exactly, so here, for instance, in Nostrica, or when you travel somewhere or in your neighborhood, copying something uh, that could be like uh, next door. Uh, what's your take on that? Um, I mean, well, there's a gossip approach, of course, um, which I think everyone believes is, is the way to go where, you know, people publish their, their relay lists and, you know, you just read the data from those. Um, in terms of the, the, the local relays, um, I'm not sure how you would, you would do that. <coughs> um, yeah, maybe you have an idea. Uh, do you, it doesn't have to be by distance, right? It could be just by, like, uh, uh, exposure set. So, you know, I was, say, I was saying like earlier, if, you know, Microsoft decides to be a little bit less evil and they go like, hey, we want to run uh, Nostr instead of Jira or something like that, right? Uh, and they have a private one and you, you can use your same identity that you have on Nostr for your uh, shit posting uh, to go and, and receive or post to the the, the private relay that Microsoft has with the same pub key, right? So you can have this sort of like multiple places where you sort of belong um, and they don't have to be seen by the whole network that you interact with. I, I think that more specialized or, or localized relays will come. I, I think that we're, we're kind of early now where all relays basically host all the same kind of content but in the future, I don't see why that will hold to be true. Maybe it'll be, you know, I know, I know we're not Mastodon fans. On the, I, I'm not, but, but uh, I know that, that, that they have specific, you know, servers for specific t 
types of content, I don't see why we wouldn't have that at some point in the future. So yeah, discoverability of relays is a really interesting thing and a problem that's been since the early days. Actually, the kind two is a, a specific note. And so Fiat Jeff obviously thought it was very important because he, he did number two right after text. And, it, and I actually never implemented in Domus, but it's just a way of like broadcasting a relay to your feed and then they can click a button to join it. Um, but that was like kind of the first, you know, really dumb way to do this. Um, but there's uh, better ways such as, you know, collecting all of the relays across all of the people you follow and just see the most common relays. So Domus could do this and I've always talked about doing this, but um, you know, that should be a thing possibly. Obviously the gossip model moves away, away from that and says let's just do it automatically by looking at relay hints and following those. So there's, yeah, there's lots of, lots of things we could be doing to improve discoverability. Um, and just another, another way would be um, to make it even more useful is once we are able to discover all these relays, you know, you want to be able to um, see different views of the relays in your, in your clients. So that's a big uh, feature as well. I don't know how many clients do that, but... Um, I don't know. I was just going to add, like, um, yeah, I, I believe that there will be and there should be, you know, like, um, specific, like, groups of people on, you know, their sets of relays and, you know, you just have your, your small group that, you know, because, I mean, if you want to look at global, for example, um, and find, you know, related things to, to that group, then it, it's like, it's the only way, you know, so having those small clusters of, of people on, on relays and being able to, to get the content from those relays is very, really important for, for scaling, you know. I, I think the most beautiful aspect of this protocol is if you have a strong opinion on this, you can build it and, the, and either the people will use it or not. And like, it, it, you've seen this throughout the, the development um, over, over the, the two years of, uh, of, of this protocol existing and like, it, it's proving every single day that, that exact concept and um, I, I think that's amazing and unique. It's truly, truly, truly permissionless. You, you just have to have a great idea, have a lot of conviction around it and put it out there and people like it, it'll become a thing. Next question. And we'll try to, I, if you asked a question already, please let someone else go first until we have no more hands raised. Hola, como están? Hello everybody, welcome. Uh, thank you guys for setting this up together. As a local, I feel proud to have you here. So, guys, you are, um, you have a bounty for um, no subversion of GitHub. And, uh, you know, like 10 million Satoshis, you will buy Costa Rica with that money in the future. So, um, what are you looking um, for with it? You know, like, what's your, um, your main um, objective with that? I mean, uh, I know it's necessary, but I would like to, to, to hear from you, you know, why is it uh, important, of course. And uh, the second part is a request. We want this next year again. And if necessary, you know, uh, charge for it. I will pay for it uh, happily. So thank you and Pura Vida. Pura Vida. So, so the, the first question was around the, the GitHub replacement. Um, so yeah, I have a, I have a bounty for uh, 10, 10 Bitcoin right now for someone to um, uh, build a GitHub replacement, and both uh, Fiat Joff and NBK have scolded me over the fact that it's way too broad <laughs> of a bounty, and I need to rewrite it and make it more specific. Fiat Joff has had some really good points in one of his uh, his post replies to me, which I put in the in the bounty description. I think there's one team that I know of that's working on it, but the intent purely is um, we're I'm doing a lot of work to um, try to protect Bitcoin Core because it is a single point of failure. Um, who wants to join Bitcoin Core? Who wants to contribute to Bitcoin? Um, Craig Wright and all of his, uh, I don't know what to call it, but it's, it's terrible. Um, and of course, uh, the code base is, rely is relying upon a Microsoft product that can make different decisions tomorrow. So if we can self-host a decentralized protocol in Bitcoin on a decentralized protocol, like we, we, have, we have something that, I, that lasts and, and lasts beyond us and lasts beyond these generations. Um, so that's the goal, is to be able to get off Microsoft and, and actually have more self-hosting and, 
have everything that the core devs need to actually do their work and, and do it without a lot of friction or a lot of worry. It's just one piece of the puzzle, but I think it's, I think it's an important one. It's not to replace all of Git. It's not to add a, build every feature um, that you find in GitHub, but just the bare absolute necessities so that the Bitcoin core developers could say, yes, I trust it. I'm moving stuff over here. And it, it just takes a bunch. Breaking down the and because Git is already decentralized, right? Like it's you can host your own Git, whatever. What we really love is GitHub's value add, right? Which is like the issues, the all the metadata on commits, and all that other stuff. Um, but you know, like this bounty could be broken down into, hey, uh, can you just make a diff, uh, Git diff sort of like patch? thing that just transfers them around and then people choose if they want to add to their code base from there. And then another one that maybe replaces issues. And then another one, you know, that kind of stuff. But, and also I find that like big, big bounties attract people for the wrong reasons. So maybe, maybe the bounties should be small for the actual little things, but they come with a commitment to help you sort of develop it further if you are the bounty winner. So that we have continuance on, on the solution that, you know, like people through charity or, uh, or business need, right? Like sort of do it. I, I think that that would be fantastic. Um, yeah. So I need help. <laughs> so I think it makes sense for decentralized money and decentralized social communication to have its code repositories hosted on a decentralized manner. It, it just makes sense. Um, a lot of people might not realize that the largest software project on the planet does not use GitHub, <laughs> and they're like, when people hear that, they're like, wait, well, how does it work? Like, that must be, they must be using some advanced technology, but in reality, um, some of the project I'm talking about is Linux, and they actually just use email. They just send um, patches back and forth. And this was actually originally how Domus, I didn't, I wasn't hosting it on GitHub, but there's just so much demand for that GitHub interface, and this what, that's what like the modern developer, that's what they're used to, not these like neckbeards who are just like <laughs> had email and didn't have GitHub growing up, so they're just they're so used to that development model. Um, so my idea is like, well, if people just find email too hard to use, let's just basically use a very similar model that Linux is doing, but it's just replace email with Nostra. And that was like the first idea I had. So I actually wrote some scripts called the, the Git Nostra tools so that you can send patches over Nostra. Uh, I think the only, my only user was Fiat Jeff. And <laughs> cause just, it's, just, it's just so complicated. Like people are not used to command line tools. So when I saw that other team building the, uh, the Git Nostra, and they basically just cloned the GitHub interface. And I don't know, maybe we need, maybe we need that because dev, devs are just so used to that. But maybe we could also you know, still have tools that are lower level. And I think this is what Fiat Jaff was talking about. Like, let's have these like simpler tools that are more modular that still work with that other interface, but let's not just build another GitHub clone. Let's actually build proper t modular tooling. So that's my perspective. Rockstar, does Fiat Jaff have anything to say? Yeah, he does. I mean, you asked me to relay his uh, roasting. So he says, uh, I don't even know who are these people. <laughs> But he, he, he actually does have a question. He has uh, uh, asked, please, what strong opinions they have that no one else has, and not just opinions, but approaches on how to do things. You know, uh, I, I, uh, I promised Fiat Jeff that uh, we would try to interrupt each other more. That was his criticism towards all the tech conversations, is that people are just too polite to each other. And in a good Brazilian way, we should be uh, interrupting each other. <laughs> so uh, we'll try. Strong opinion? Uh, uh, I, I, I mean, listen, you know, Linux sucks. Use FreeBSD. <laughs> there is a reason why they, you know, use email. Like, I mean, you know, like it's, yeah, I mean. That was mine. That was yours. Well, then double it. My, my, <laughs> my strong opinion is iOS sucks and Everybody should use Android, including Thomas should be on Android. 
I am actually not even an Apple uh, Apple user. I just I built Domus because I was using a, an iPhone at the time. I'm actually like a Linux maximalist. I built my own Linux desktop, and like it's sad that I can't even use it because I just spend so much time working on Domus. But yeah, I mean, I think Linux is way better than Apple. I don't really app like Apple to be honest. <laughs> uh, I don't really have any strong opinions, so sorry. <laughs> I'm just I just build things. Hi. So, uh, you know, I'd like to bring it back. So, Jack, I met you at Personal Democracy Forum in 2009. So if I just paint a picture, it's like, civic tech will save us all and will protect democracy. And if you think about what's happened since 2009, that hasn't exactly gone that well. So I'm just wondering, like, to bring back, like, we've been here before, a lot of the protocol debates and quests for standardization that we all take for granted now in HTML and HTTP, that didn't exist at the beginning. We had to negotiate that and fight for that against Microsoft and to a certain degree Netscape. Um, but 2009, Jack, in, at Personal Democracy Forum versus right here and right now, I'm just wondering what kind of reflection is most alive in you about how can we not make some of the same uh, mistakes that we've made before or assumptions, so kind of assumption checking with you. Yeah, I mean, I mean the first thing, the biggest thing is the, the, permission, the permissionless concept, like it, it's not, when, um, when, we, when we started Twitter, I mean, there was, there was kind of one path for us, and Rabel talked about this, his presentation was, was beautiful. Where is Rabel? Oh, he's down there, of course. He's always in the background somewhere. <laughs> um, but when we, when we started Twitter, um, there was a feeling because of the simplicity that it was like a protocol f level thing. Like it sh wanted to be that, it wanted to be that. But we had, um, we had no clear path to do that. And we had no, apart from, from Linux, we had no um, kind of parallels that we could point to as a pattern of like, this is what we could do, as far as I knew. Rebel may have had, may have had a few, but it just felt like we we took this step, which was of graciously funding and buying the company back from the investors, but becoming an investor himself, and then taking on more investors. And suddenly, there's only one way to go there, which is you're either acquired or you're public, and you start issuing equity, and you have all these employees who need liquidity now, so that puts an urgency around it and pushes it, and you don't have a revenue model, so you need a revenue model, and hey, did you see what Google did with their revenue model, and Facebook did with their revenue model, they did ads? Bitcoin wasn't, we, we started before the iPhone, like the iPhone wasn't out, we were on you know, Nokia phones and text message, the T9, for those of you in the audience that are old enough to remember that. Um, and we rushed an ad model. And then you start getting trapped in these things and uh, one step leads to another and, and momentum builds and, and suddenly it's completely different. So just the fact that this is not starting with that intent, what, what Fiat Jeff did, which I, I'm so grateful for and I think is so beautiful, is like he put this in a very simple um, markdown document which I know he's got feelings about Markdown. But he put it in the public domain. And he had some opinions, he, he built some things, and then people just saw it and they're like, wow, like that is, that's it, that's the essence, that's what, it, that's what it wants to be. And in fact, it's not just the Twitter thing, it's like much more, but it solves for the, for the Twitter problem as well. So it's already had, it's already fixed all the things that, that we ended up, um, doing and and you know it, it was a very good vehicle for Twitter to build a company around it it was I think the only vehicle we had at the time and it's done its thing and it's influenced and I think it's influenced the reason we're all here in in probably the wrong way but nonetheless we're here and um, it's actually uh, Twitter's 17th birthday today this is the 17th anniversary of the, the first week on it um, which I would normally, I would normally have mixed feelings about, but seeing, 
seeing this, seeing Fiat Jeff's work, seeing all the work of this panel, all the folks in this room, and seeing the people in this room, how, how many of you are not developers? That's pretty incredible. <laughs> We're mainly talking about super technical things, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's pretty incredible that we're putting a conference together this early with, uh, with non-developers. Like Twitter was not that. It was all nerds and geeks for the first, first year and a half, two years. So there's something here. There, there's, some, there's some essence that um, has been found and discovered and, and now it's just pulling the thread. But there's no real barriers in the way. It's just, you know, back to the, the relevance part. Like how do you, how do we build something that people want to run to and like, they feel like I need to. Be, I, I want to be a part of this because it, it helps me be better. It helps me see more of the world, and um, and uh, and I, I think it's here. It, it's just you know we're going to be impatient because we want it to move faster and faster. But this has moved pretty damn fast, um, as evidenced by this conference itself. Anyone else? You always look at me like you want to say something. <laughs> um, you, you brought me here. Uh, <laughs> that's true um, you know it, it kind of goes back to Bitcoin I, I know like some people you know in Australia may not be super Bitcoiners but the reality is when you started you needed permission you needed permission from the carriers you needed permission from the DNS you needed permissions from everybody right uh, and if he sees everybody, uh, you couldn't just pop a company. You had to pay for bandwidth. Uh, it was a different sort of universe. And, and like when Bitcoin sort of introduced this thing, they're like, you can't do things without permission, right? Uh, you can come here, you can build a thing. And then Nasser sort of like coming in with the same sort of mentality. You can build a thing. You don't need permission to do it. And the protocol seems to be designed that way, right? Like some things are still open to to find out where it goes, but it's like, stop asking and just build. That was not possible then, it is now, right? Uh, uh, I, I think that's sort of like the main difference, it's like 20 years, right? A, a generation's passed and now we can do stuff in a way that, that we can do and win. <laughs> it was just not possible. So, next question. Yeah, next question is uh, more roasting from Fiat Jeff. He's saying, it should be opinions about Nostra. Come on, guys. Like, you're saying <laughs> random things. So, so, <laughs> strong opinions uh, that no one else has approaches how to do things on Nostra. Uh, well, I, I am a huge fan of no delete, no edit. I, I think, like, it, 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 mirrors, it mirrors real speech, like, you know, and I, I think the, I think it's very special. I know it's a little bit scary, but I think it's, um, I think it's very powerful because it's authentic. Like I like seeing people's mistakes. Like it's, they're human. <laughs> and I have the feeling, I have the feeling too when I make a mistake, and I know exactly what people feel when they, when they make similar mistakes, and it's just like one of those empathetic moments. So I just think it makes the world feel small. And um, we don't need to edit everything and, and make everything look perfect. It just has to be raw and real. And it's one of the reasons I love this country so much. It's super raw. It's super real. Pura Vida. Pure, pure life. I mean, that's it. So that's, I, I hope, I will not use a client that uses delete and edit. <laughs> I, I just have one that's just in particular going to trigger Fiat Jaff, and I will enjoy that. So. Um, <laughs> I think the gossip model is interesting, but I think it's somewhat of a prem premature optimization and it's not the highest priority, but yeah, that's my opinion. Um, I feel like, um, like having notes not be global, like you can just post notes anywhere and there's no global state. I, I really like that. I don't know if it's con controversial, but I just want to mention it that you can post something in, in your community and it's, it's only there and only the people that are in that relay can see it and it's kind of like a... It kind of brings those people closer, you know, to to you, and you can kind of see each other's posts, and it just kind of brings people together. I think so, even though they're separated, you know. I know that Fiat Joff doesn't like Markdown, but oh man, I love Markdown. I think all clients should implement Markdown. I want my posts to look pretty. I want them to be formatted. Like every at client devs, 
You can make you can make me happy and implement Markdown everywhere, and I will love it. I, I'll implement it when there's a spec for it. You know, uh, the best part is that uh, Fiat Jeff will appreciate this. You don't need Fiat Jeff's permission. Uh, so, like, you know, that, that's, that's the beauty of it. I have a question. So, Jack, you said you don't like edits and deletes, right? But we've been talking about this for a little bit. What about having a TTL, right, a time to live? Because for people who are running relays, I mean, having five million messages of Pura Vida is like something that probably does. This is beautiful. What's we'll wrong with it? <laughs> so, What's your problem? <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. But it's like good morning Pura Vida over and over again. You can help out some of these guys that are running, at paying the bills themselves, right? You can get some of that stuff gone. But if you had a TTL, I think one of the things you could do is maybe like allow them to save and just pay sats to save. So now the edit thing, it doesn't matter. Like the system knocks it out. But if you got a dope, um, like tweet, uh, not tweet, note, right? I almost said tweet. If you got a dope note, right? If you got a dope note, like you can save it to somebody's relay. And that's another way for the relay guys to make it. Because I know I'm running a little relay now. Shout out to Google for the freeness of it right now. Because when it starts charging me, I'm just going to be ridiculous. But what I'm saying is, is that the fact that it's, it's charging these guys something like, to get it gone, I saw Will saying, yeah, what about you, man? What you think? About the expiry? About the TTL, yeah, like having I mean, a TTL. So okay, for anybody who don't know what TTL is, <laughs> time to live, like so allowing it to dial. There's already a spec for this on Astra. I just, like, it would be very easy to add to Domus, and I, I was just talking about this the other day, and just like, we should just add that. It's like a self-destructing note. It's, um, yeah, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, there is an if for it, but it still doesn't guarantee that the relays will actually delete the event, so. But clients could just, I mean, yeah, it's not deletion, but clients could hide it. Also, there's screenshots, but just on the, <laughs> on the good morning, good night thing, one thing that would make VHF really, really happy is if all of you, at this very moment, if you can, please post GM <laughs> at VHF. <laughs> everyone, at, everyone at once, please, like just GM at VHF. Relays and clients are currently on fire as they're getting spammed right now with GMs. Let's, let's bring them down. Um, I think that potentially one of the issues Twitter had was with the, the, the cost, server cost of saving all that data. So then if, if you expect data to be saved and users don't want to pay for it, then one way in which they will pay for it would be advertising by the relay operator who's saving the data. Um, and I think there's another issue in that with the note type, it kind of simulates conversational speech. Um, and you're a thoughtful speaker, so you, know, you think about what you're going to say. And, and most people do before they put that on Twitter. But then what happens is you get this skewered, you know it's going to be there on there forever, so you frame things within a certain way, and you're, 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 you, know, you're, you think about what you're going to say, and you make sure that you know, it's going to be published forever. And then in society, you have some people who don't do that. They speak like someone you would meet down the pub, um, or they speak like someone you'd meet in the street, and they'll say stupid stuff, like we all do. We all say stupid stuff when we're relaxed and we're actually having a conversation. And then those people in that framework, um, they seem more real. And I think it gives them power. So I think that actually having ephemeral uh, qualities to notes uh, de facto, um, and maybe the user wants to pay to have the luxury to store those notes on a relay, I think the ephemeral qualities actually shouldn't be overlooked, I don't think. No, I just got to chime in, but that just crashed our network. Yeah. Uh, wait, what, what network? The Wi Fi network? Oh, damn. S Sorry, remote people. <laughs> the dangers of centralization right here. But Ben, you're right. I, I agree. Uh. So um, you mentioned how uh, with Twitter specifically, um, in the early days, there was a lot of developer involvement and not as much non-developer involvement, um, and compared that to this conference where there's a lot of non-developers here, myself included, and I was just curious um, what you all thought of how that's going to affect the future of this protocol um, and the pros and cons of that. In my view, it seems it only gets better because everyone here is really close to the, the customer. I, I know that's the wrong word, but... Um, like, 
you really get to hear exactly like what people are, what people love and, and what they're suffering with in terms of like trying to use it and you get to see it um, first go. Like I have, a, I have a bunch of friends here. You've probably seen them. Where's, where's Dora and Lulu? <laughs> so these guys, they're completely new. Stand up, Dora and Lulu. Lulu. So, th so these guys are, li uh, are with me where I live in Costa Rica, and Lulu is from Bordeaux. They're both surfers. Never, um, I, don't, I don't think really used Bitcoin before, and this, this whole protocol was super new to them. And like, they, we, I, I got them to test it in like two minutes, and they just kind of like felt it and fell in love with it. And a lot of it was having to do with, with zaps, and like just being able to, to hear and see how they use it and how they want to use it. Um, and everyone being this close with, with developers and um, designers, we, we need a lot more designers. Um, that, that's a population we need to, to definitely increase um, and, and integrate into the development workflows a lot more. But I think it's a net positive in, in my view. Uh, absolutely. I think that the fact that there's so many non-developers here contributing in various capacities from you know, your, your memers, your shit posters, your people that are helping people out, every, everybody's building, not just developers. You, you might not be slinging code, you may not be building clients or building you know, at the protocol level, but you're building one way or another, you're part of the community one way or another, whether it be engagement or creating content for people to consume. But the fact that, that you're able to have this, these conversations with, with developers when things don't work right because you have way too many people DMing you and following you. You can DM your client developer like I used to tell Kieran all the time and tell him things aren't working right for me. And then they start working right, you know, in the very near future. And everybody has this type of voice now. So I think it's only going to make Noster that much better and that much more robust in the future to have everybody contributing in various capacities right now. Yeah, I'm like, I'm very used to just only being in like technical communities and you know, in the early days of Nostra it was, it was mostly technical people and like some dishwashers you would talk to occasionally. Um, that's an old reference, anyway. <laughs> um, I saw but, that screenshot for the first time <laughs> yesterday. Yeah, so it was very quirky and sometimes it biases your, your uh, the w things you're, you work on and sometimes it's like you focus too much on the technical aspect. Like I was really into like, I was like the proof of work spec. I'm like, yeah, we're gonna proof of work on all the notes. But it's like reality is like no one really cares about that. <laughs> um, so yeah, just having like real people that you can talk to that are just like non-technical and then they can give you their perspective. I'm like, wow, I'm like, I did not expect that at all because I'm, I'm like way too at the low level. Um, and just, you know, just like, yeah, just being everyone telling them your opinion like in real time and you're able to give the, just get feedback in real time has been absolutely incredible. And I just like, it just, it makes development so much more fun because you get to see the things you push out and that you get feedback in real time and it's just, uh, it's a magical thing. So I hope we have more and more of that going forward and uh, yeah, just that's the huge part of the network that I enjoy also. Um, and then there is more than just the clients, right? I mean, there is, when you're trying to sell an idea, right, the zeitgeist of, of the, the thing that's happening, you have things like Elodie who went and built this beautiful Nostra.com and like all the like the, the t-shirts and like there's like all this art helps sort of inform users of what we're trying to do, right? Like and and they convince people to try this new idea. Uh, it, it's like incredibly important. And you know, you don't need to like you know build a client. <laughs> you know, go build documentation. Go make an awesome video about it. Go like. I mean, look at Jaeger with all the, the like the, the AI art, it, it, you know, like that was being posted all over Twitter, and, and people was like, "What the heck is going on?" <laughs> right? I mean, there's nostalgia, right? Like, every, like, what is this? Right? Like, all this stuff is sort of like the, the art around it. Uh, it it's uh, without that, it, you really don't get anywhere. Uh, um, and and uh, I don't know, super grateful that that we have this like amazing people doing that stuff. Yeah, it, it's been amazing to just have like so many real people like using the app, giving feedback. It's like we're not just building like cool stuff for developers or, or whatever anymore. It's like you, even when I started, you know, I, I kind of I, I built it as like a like a learning project to learn about Noster, and it's just like I had immediate like real users giving real feedback about their experience, and it was it just helped me, like, it just propelled me really, you know.
Uh, I'm fairly new to Nuster. I'm like one month into it, maybe six weeks. Uh, I had a ha -ha moment where I went to demos and I start, you know, digging into this. And then I put my keys and I put it in Snort. And then I realized, oh shit, you know, all my data is here. Therefore, it's portable. And, and this is when it, I guess, a Bitcoin muscle memory uh, click for me. And I'm like, this is huge. And yeah, I'm wondering what is your ha -ha moment that makes you want to dive into this. Uh, I, I mean it for, for freedom tech. I mean, like, it's, I was saying this earlier, like, you can have freedom money, but, you know, without freedom of communication, you can't trade, right? So that that's to me. I mean, there's going to be people that, like, you know, the, the hate Bitcoin, whatever, right? Like, but uh, it, it, it's, you can't exist, right, as, like, a free person without those two things, right? You need to have private property and you have to be able to express yourself uh, and and I always felt like in the, the the Bitcoin sort of like solved one of the biggest problems right but we needed to solve the second part which is how do I coordinate with you you know it's like the, the radio stuff you know like like it's just how, how do we talk to each other if they close the pipes you know or if they don't like what we're saying right I mean like, can we still trade can we still exist can we still interact um, and, and I think like, sort of like Nasser was like this perfect thing that just fits right there. In the, in the white? White? <coughs> yeah, just piggybacking on the last question in terms of, you know, having people who are non-tech, like coming into this space, because this is new for me to be here. I wouldn't, I just found myself here at this conference and teaching yoga and talking on mythology, and yet there's such an amazing integration where I don't think sometimes when you're so in a world, you don't realize how many more people are rallying behind the world that you're building. Like there's such a deep hunger in what's happened in the world now, and they're looking for people with the courage to build the more beautiful world that our hearts know is possible. And it seems like with a laptop and powered by the right currency and philosophies that you can start build these things and people need to see this. Like, people need to see more of this. And I don't know how, but there's people who are deeply hungry knowing that it's happening because there's so much out, like despair and alienation looking at what's happening in the social media space and the financial space and it's hugely inspiring to be here, actually. Like, I feel, as I come here, I'm more like, how can I contribute? Because by contributing, I get to participate. I'm part of it. And people want to contribute because they want to be part of this thing. And just for everybody here who's building it to know that from people coming outside, that, that that's what we feel inside. And that what you're doing is very, very important. And people who just start to get a glimpse of it want to be part of it and learn more and to trust that and to, to ask for our support or involvement because we're, we're in it together and it feels that way here. So thank you. Well said. I, I, think, um, I think what's so important about this and what's allowed it to move so quickly is the open nature and, and, this, and this reliance on something that's public domain and open source. And it's an undeniable secular trend that more and more things are becoming open or forced to become open, and you, you know, this our our generation is seeing so much of what was closed, you know, re open for the first time, which is just like incredibly inspiring. But allows for that feeling of collaboration, participation, and and, and that we're all actually building this uh, building this together. I, I think the the openness and the the open collaboration allows everybody that's here and everybody that's watching back home to feel like we're winning because we're all contributing and that's what makes Nostr so exciting because it, even though you, you may not be a developer, you may not be building something, but because it's so open and, and your voice is heard and you can participate and collaborate with developers, whenever they win, whenever they push a new feature out, whenever they add, add a new update, everybody wins. Everyone is so excited and everyone's clapping, everybody's rallying behind it because you're participating in it and you, you feel part of that community. You feel the close-knit community that we have. And it, it, it just, it, it feels different because we've never, 
maybe unless you're around, you know, Twitter in 2007 or, or, you know, or early days of social networks, you didn't feel that you were part of the community because you, you know, they were rolling out features and you weren't actively participating in that type of capacity. Since it's completely open now, everyone's participating in some type of capacity. So I often say that, that we all feel like we're winning as developers win. I see Nostra as, uh, in some sense, we're building this new structure in like cyberspace of like human connection that is open and free. And that is, in the same sense, what the web, like the web represented this idea where you can put your, your footprint, like just put it out there and no one can stop you. Just, you know, rent a server, buy a server. And, um, but that was just in some sense limited to just a, a document. It's like you're putting like you know, a piece of paper on a wall that everyone can see. Whereas what I see Nostra is like a parallel web where you're not just putting like a piece of paper, you're putting like your consciousness um, and then everyone else can kind of tap into that and follow that, that feed. And that's something that the web um, was lacking. Um, so we have this new social web that's open and free that, that is linking people that has, have never been, have never seen before. Like I, 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 for the most part, I haven't really seen or know any of you before this conference. And just, uh, and I've just met so many interesting and fascinating people. And just the fact that a piece of technology can do that. Um, and it's just like, wow, like this is just, this is like, it hasn't even been that long since this started. Like what's next? Like what can this technology do um, going forward? It's just, I don't think we're even ready to, for that, so. Okay, um, I think we have time for one more question because the next panel, the next session is going to be the most important of this conference for the conference because it's the retrospective of the conference and how we want to move this forward and, and what we, what, how we think about the next, uh, the next conference. So, I already stole the mic. The last question. Uh, Our, yeah, okay. I think that uh, the replacing uh, GitHub with Nostr is very, very exciting. So I'm curious, are there any other products and services that we use in our daily lives um, that you know, we could benefit from replacing with Nostr or just with any other open source means? I mean, I, I think everything should be open source, basically. So <laughs> uh, I don't really have any, anything specific. So at, at the base layer, Nostr is just text communication and authentication. And that is the basis of pretty much every application that we use every day from Uber to Yelp to LinkedIn, right? It, it, you sign in with credentials and it's messaging data being pushed. So every, in my opinion, maybe not everything needs to be built on Nostr, but a lot of things absolutely could be. A lot of things that we use from day to day, popular applications absolutely could be, at least the, the messaging and the authentication portion of, of Nostr could be used for it. Everything, we'll do everything. I'm sorry, apparently, <laughs> no, so, apparently everything. Um, I, except binary data. Um, anyone try to push binary data into Nostra, it's like, no, just don't do that. The, the thing we're looking at is, um, I know there was a panel about it, is uh, music. It's, it's always in the background. And it's, uh, it's locked up in a really terrible state right now. Um, and it, it, really, it, it really wants to be free. Um, and easy for people to both contribute to and also consume. Um, but that's, uh, it's, it's mainly controlled by lawyers and accountants at the moment. So I think this definitely has some benefits to, to that and one, one I'm focused a lot on. Um, there is a list, like there is now another bounty site that was made on Noster too, which is kind of cool. I forget the URL we can figure out for everybody later. Nosterbounties.com. There you go. Uh, and uh, so there's a few, people are listing ideas. Uh, and, and if you have ideas for things that you, you think should be built, like even if it's not a lot, just post as a bounty, even if it's a tiny bounty, because somebody might read it and build it anyways, not because of the bounties, just sometimes people are just looking for ideas. Uh, and I just wanted to address one little thing, is that like, stop asking for permission. If you wanna do stuff, like in any of these networks, just, just do it. <laughs> you know, like it, it, it's, that's kind of the whole point. Um, and and I, I feel like people always sort of like just trying to ask for permission. You see this in like development forums, you see this in the network. Like, can, can I do this? Like, no, just do it, break stuff. And, and, oh, and if, it's, you know, if it's meant to be, if it has a market fit, it will happen, right? Uh, so, so stop asking for permission. Okay. 
think that's it. Thanks to our panel. Big round of applause. <laughs> round of applause to you all. And okay, Shane, you come up. Okay, we'll rotate people. You have to get off the stage now. Oh, no, you're on the stage. No, you're still on the I'm stage. Okay, you're moderating this one. <laughs> yes. Really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We're gonna we're gonna start now the next uh, the next panel, um, and uh, 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 what what uh, what was the title we ended up having for this 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 panel? It's uh, go ahead. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Retrospective and next Noster planning session. That's right. Um, a lot of us, I think. Uh, uh, okay, guys. I think I think it's uh, hey. Yeah, is everybody here? Are you are you here? Yeah. All right. Are you really here? Okay. There you go. So this amazing line of folks here put an incredible amount of work, t and and like please seriously. Um, like more, 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 more. Seriously, like more. It, it's uh, it's like it was pretty cool. Thank you. Yes. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. That's great. Um. So so, you know, what are the things that that y you like the most? Why? Why did you come? Like, let's let's start this line from Lee. Hey, everybody. Uh, first of all, I, I did this mostly to shill Bitcoin Jungle. Not gonna lie. Thank you for coming. Uh, but secondly, you know, more importantly, uh, most of my adult life, I found myself. Uh, pretty close to a free speech absolutist, and Noster uh, gets us there. So it's really important to me personally as well. Thank you. Well, for me, it's been a rather interesting journey. I've enjoyed every minute of it, I think, and it's been so interesting to work with this team. Um, I think I started with Bitcoin, and somehow Nostra reflects so much of what happens in Bitcoin, like a lot of the foundation that we understand in Bitcoin is shifting to Nostra. And I think we have Fiat Jeff to thank for that and all of the developers. I hope that that continues. Uh, that's kind of what brought me here, Bitcoin and Nostra. And now with the apps, it's all coming together. Um, if we're talking like just here in Costa Rica, I came because I wanted to help out with this conference. I thought it sounded like a cool idea and I'd never been here before. And I think it's been really awesome. Um, and volunteering to help out with this was kind of an amazing thing. I got to spend a lot of my time doing something that I felt like was a positive thing. So it was really fun. Well, I live here. <laughs> Just kidding. I, I love free speech. I think I talked about it in the previous panel a lot. And I love organizing events. This is what I do. And you're it's good at it. Me. Thank you. You are all amazing at it. <laughs> I am so humble by just having the chance to work with all these people. Like 
what the heck? Why am I sitting next to a rock star? <laughs> so yeah, this has been an amazing journey and I am super thankful and just, I'm, I don't want to say blessed, but I guess that would be the word, definitely. As long as you're not melted, right? You are? No. Yeah. Yeah, Angela. Oh, we also have Angela. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's coming. Woo! Yeah, so are we doing Angela first or I'm talking? I think we can hear her. Go ahead. Okay. Try. Angela. One, two, Angela. You can hear me? Yes? Say something, Angela. Come on, X Frog. <laughs> Keep going. Yeah. Uh, as for why I'm, why I am here, uh, I got drafted, I guess. Right? So I was just minding my own business, working on strike. Uh, Nonprofit stuff, uh, working on BTC Pay server, and I just got added to the channel. And Thank you for your service. No, I mean, you, you saw, Hi. like, they asked Jack who to add to planning channel, and he said uh, Rockstar and NVK. So once I saw. <laughs> I don't know why he did that, but. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, so for me, like, as I always say, like, I'm not motivated by tasks. I will, Maybe I'm I'll motivated by just, people. Just for the reason that there's a little bit of a delay. And, and this is so funny right now. I can <laughs> see myself. Can you hear me? <laughs> we can, Angela. Can you hear us? Oh, yeah. She has like a minute delay. So, yeah, <laughs> Th this will be fun. Angela, can you hear me? You should be able to hear it straight away. Okay. Woo! Woo! Yeah. Can you say something, Angela? Why, why are you here? Why did you get added to Nostrika Planning? Oh, is the, I think I can hear Rockstar, and I'm going to put the computer on mute because there's a little bit of a delay. I just think it's so fun. I've never heard the word unconference in my life, and I usually work a lot in events. I like being uh, a wing woman. That's like my favorite favorite planning role. So it's just been tons of fun. I really also too wanted to like wrap the outside Pura Vida vibe. I'm in Michigan. So like my voice right now, I might be like shaking. It's because it's like freezing here. And I decided to like sit outside just so I could like try and be there. But I'm, <laughs> I'm happy to be here. I love you all. And I think that's all for now. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and again, motivated by people, not by tasks. I saw it's a great group of people, and yeah, let's put my skills to use. Uh, I have been in Oster for, since early on, and again, like uh, two people I really want to thank are uh, Fia Jeff and Ben Ark, because immediately when I saw this conference, yeah, please, round of applause for them. Get up if you're around. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I just wanted to help set up that uh, environment to tell the story they did, like that first session. And uh, yeah, that's why I'm here. That's what I'm motivated. What about you, Alex? Yes. Um, as a non-dev, I wanted to find a way to help. I was uh, getting a bit dissatisfied with Twitter and a little bit complacent. Maybe some burnout in Bitcoin. Nostra came at just the right time for me, a novel thing a beautiful like human first freedom thing. I love stuff like that. So this is a natural, you know, fit and attraction for me. How about you, Jack? I'm here to support and I'm so grateful that y'all came down to this beautiful country and see it for yourselves and feel it. But you know, come on, there is more than that. I mean, <laughs> seriously, I mean, you know, you kind of like build Twitter and then you're like, hey, you know, I'm going to just fund this awesome thing and I'm going to get all these people here. Why? <laughs> I, I didn't hear the question, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, okay, guys. So th what we really want to do here is try to figure out, like, you know, what we did right, what can we do better, and, and like, what to do next, right? And, and how to do the next thing, and, you know, the why, the what, and the how. So... Um, should we, should we go with the audience? Do you guys want to sort of like give a little bit of an opinion first? How, how do you feel like this, this should be uh, uh, addressed? Let's, let's go with the review first. So 
Um, Marce? It's on Alex, it's not me. Okay. <laughs> yes. You want me to review the conference? Yes, right. do a post-mortem <laughs> right now. Quick post-mortem? Yes. Um, for me, it was a success. I met so many amazing people, and you know, the, my condensed to three second version memory of this, like 20 years from now, it's just gonna be a beautiful, lush jungle, and like so many of you, very helpful people, and I hope we continue to meet up and grow this not necessarily yearly, but when Noster needs it most. Would you feel like the stars were just aligning? Yeah, I think we took action and brought this together. There was like a perfect fit, and it, it, it was a, it's a passion project for not just us on stage, but dozens of people that, that helped build this. So. Well, what are the, the events that just happened all at the same time you were mentioning to me just now? Oh yeah, so the, um, over this weekend, we had uh, an earthquake, which was incredible. Um, the spring equinox. We have a new moon. Um, and 21, of course, is the number of Bitcoin. Um, so everything, it, it definitely was auspicious. It def the stars definitely aligned with, uh, with this conference. Um, I must say, I mean, like, it's going to be very hard to, to top something like this up because having a river behind the property for you to bathe yourself and come back and be on the stage. And then, you know, coconuts with straws, fantastic. I mean, like, you know, the food was incredible. You, I, I mean, you know, like you guys bought all the meat of Costa Rica. <laughs> Everything in Uvita, 100%, they're sold out. Um, yeah. And I like the coconut water was your trademark. And yeah, that's, that's like right. every panel, there is like a coconut thing. But uh, review, like for me, uh, this conference was everything I can expect it, but like time stand. Um, I, in our panel with Will, like I all, often like harp window of opportunity because it's, it's the big single biggest variable that in my startup experience, like I've came up with, like is you need to hit that window of opportunity. And I like everything is aligning for Noster because this, conference it's like it's in perfect time it like it's another push for the protocol and like i already know there is a next one but that next one will also be a push because i don't know if you all saw the gm uh, fiat jeff we all did right that we crashed wi-fi it's amazing like he posted his screenshot of the feed and now it's like another boost to the nostr and yeah boost for the conference itself so for me yeah would Just you amazing. say that, like, because this was so short notice um, and, and, you know, quite hard to get to compared to many conferences, there was sort of like a filter? Like, it yes. was like a high signal, high intention to come here? Yes, yes, it was like for all of us. Like, it's, it's just when everyone was applauding, like, I'm sending it back because like, this is also about all you. Like, you have inserted this into your plans and I already like see like when I'm talking about it, everyone is smiling in the audience. So uh, thank you as well for coming. And yeah, I, I can't wait that we get to Q&A and talk about your you know, review of the conference. Maybe that's where we should go now. I think, I think we should, we would love to hear comments. Oh, no, go, go ahead. <laughs> now I don't know if I should do it, but let's do it. <laughs> do it. Okay, so I am just, Happy to have so many people come and see my beautiful jungle. Thank you. Um, thank you for supporting Noster and supporting us. To me, it's more that I am so thankful for all of you. Every time I get a DM, it's someone saying like, thank you, you guys did amazing, we are so happy. And I'm also like in awe that we managed to pull this off in such little time. Um, Magic. So Magic. Two months to the day. Oh, I mean, yeah. it is. It is impressive. <laughs> Thanks, Stuart. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's amazing. I, um, you know, Lee. Just another thanks to Lee as our guy on the ground, like in Uvita here, promising that it was all going to be okay <laughs> when we show up. Because it, and it was, which was amazing. We had, I don't think any of us had seen it before. Yeah, so we got here like less than a week ago and 
found out that it worked out really well. Um, so that's, that was really cool to me. I love the like rushed planning. I love that it had that natural filter. And um, I loved experiencing this part of the world and it's just been awesome. Well, I think for me, it feels like a way to be grateful that Nostra exists and that we're all coming together in this event, not just here in real life, which, we're, which I'm very grateful to be a part of, but also out there in the virtual world. And I feel like it's this community coming together and being able to share ideas and to share uh, hopes for the future. Um, and I have an idea for this, but for all of you, but also for the people in the virtual side, because I know you may not get a chance to participate as much as here. Um, if you have a thought on it, what Nostra is right now and what you hope for it to be in the future, uh, and you could post a note with the hashtag time capsule, then perhaps we could come back next year and review some of those. Uh, yeah, I think the conference went pretty well. I definitely liked the lunch, so thank you to our food vendors. Um, but more seriously, I just want to thank all of you for coming and seeing our home here in Uvita. Uh, usually when I travel to the U.S. and people ask me where I live, I tell them it's a dangerous, terrible place and they should go to Santa Teresa. Uh, so you're now in on the secret and uh, thanks for coming. <laughs> Thank you. I, I really want to get uh, the, 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 and, and um, Angela, can you hear still us? Yes, MVK, it's so good to hear you. <laughs> do, do you want to tell us, like, what you like the most and, and you know, and, and uh, maybe, like, you know, like, what you want to see? More work from Alidi. Is my answer. <laughs> uh, but I mean, I loved everything. Like, it's been so fun to watch virtual. Uh, and, and yeah, see, why did I go on, right? No, it was more work from Alidia. I think she's phenomenal. She just told us to hashtag a time capsule, guys. So, and but what more can be said? <laughs> I mean, is this thing? Yeah, it's on. Sorry, I couldn't hear it. And I think I've got some. Okay, here you go. Um, I know a lot of you don't necessarily know about Angela. Maybe you do because she's been helping everyone who's been coming here and she's been amazing at her work. She couldn't make it here today, but she just spent all of these days behind the scenes making sure um, everybody had help and, and posting on the Nostrica account. She's been amazing. Thank you, Angela, for your work. Thank you. So I I want to include like you know the audience and like the attendees and like I, I want I want to get a sense from you, um, you know, what what maybe not everybody, <laughs> but some of you like you know what you like, uh, what was really special, what do you want to see next? Because we need to figure out what do we do next and how do we do it uh, and and the right formula to do that. And th yeah, things to improve and, you know, what went wrong and, you know, be honest. I mean, you know, that's, that's what we need. Uh, so, so let's start there with uh, Mr. Paco. Hi, everyone. Thank you. I really love the showers and the river. It got us out of our comfort zone to just appreciate what life really is. And walking barefoot on stones was a good feeling, you know. Otherwise, we are walking in a good life. Everything is wonderful. We have electricity. And so this was really good. I hope we can do this next year too. So thank you. I guess rivers are a hit. Um, uh, over there, uh, Richard. So for all of us who live in Costa Rica, we know it's a really special place. And for us who live actually in this area, we know it's an incredibly blessed place. And um, so when Nostrica came here, it was no surprise because, you know, a lot of us really believe that this place here now, Costa Rica, and especially this place here where we are, 
as, as really special um, um, karma, for want of a better word, that's going to change the world. And it's really amazing that you guys have come to here, and then you can really appreciate like that this is the new world here, this is the future, and this here is the place where we can change the world, and we don't have to go to the old cities designed on the old ways and come into places like this, and I've really believed it strongly that uh, Costa Rica right, has a real potential to really, really, really change the world, and there's a lot of reasons to that that's the case, because of the freedoms we have, and because of the, the nature, and because of the, the blessedness of the earth. So I'm glad you came, and I'm just really interested specifically to Jack, like, does he see that as well? Do you see the, like, the, the potential of Costa Rica to have been a, like, a place to change the world? Or are you just here for the surf? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm not here to surf. Like, I'm here because I, I fell in love with the people and, and just what this country means. It's literally a bridge. It's a land bridge between two continents. And um, I, I think it speaks to like in the abstract and conceptually what what it what it can be and what it can do for the world so 100% I'm I'm down and and the people the people here like remind me of that every single day and like yes you can build something amazing in the jungle you don't need to be in a city um you can be anywhere in the world you want wherever makes you happy and whatever inspires you and that's that's why I'm here because this place inspires me every day and I feel healthy with the exception of the ear infection it gave me <laughs> on Wednesday Everything was going great. Um, but yes, Costa Rica, 100%. Um, so I think we really want to hear now some criticism. Like, like tell us some we, stuff. We, 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 have a, we have a bunch of decisions to make together about like how often we do this, where we do it next. It's not always going to be in Costa Rica because we have people all the way around the world that weren't able to come because this place is so hard to get to. Um, what we want to see in terms of format um, it's obviously going to get larger and larger and larger as time goes on and as, as everything becomes more successful. So we really want to like get feedback on how to iterate this and, and make sure that we're doing it right for the next step and the next step and the next step and, and turn it into um, something that can, that can live. Not, not be like a well-oiled machine because part of the beauty of this to me is like it did just kind of come together and we all kind of made it. Um, and I appreciate that like everyone's been super respectful and like like, we haven't had any issues, really, that I'm aware of. Um, maybe one we or two. We keep you away from the issues. No. <laughs> no. There, there's been small issues, but some conferences can have some significant issues. Um, and it's a function of this team, but also I think it's a function of all the people intending uh, to do this. And it started with that tone of the, the Google document. Like, anyone could have gone in and just, like, graffitied that whole thing, and no one, no one did. Um, so... It started with that tone of respect uh, and desire to build something together, and we just want to understand how to continue to do that and make it f have this feeling uh, long term. Maybe we can get some suggestions of uh, locations yeah, in the world. So, so I, have, I, have, I have a mic over here. Yeah. Um, oh, perfect. All right. So for um, so I'd say probably being here the the best thing I've gotten here is I've met a ton of people, and. I think a way how that could be optimized even further is to, like I've noticed we have this arrangement here where we've got the talking here and we've got like the, you know, hanging out over there. But if we had some type of thing where it was kind of like a hybrid between the two where you can, um, I don't know, maybe put something on your shirt or something that kind of indicates the, your topic of interest and then we can kind of divide people into sort of cross-functional groups where, you know, if you're interested in clients or you're interested in other person's interested in protocols or maybe UI or whatever it is, then, you know, I could just look at somebody and say, oh, you're a UI guy. I can just, you know, maybe go and talk to you about UI. And, and I think that would, would have improved the, the number of people because, I mean, I can't go around to every single person and say, what are you interested in? What are you interested in? What are you interested in? I mean, it's, it's, it's too much overhead, right? But, you know, if I just had the ability to just, you know, find those people like super quick, I think that, that could have been, um, could have been quite a bit better. So more yeah. topical breakout sessions and more yeah, like coordination so, so something on the ground. That's a, something that, like I said, is, is in between the, um, uh, the, 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 the conversation or the, the, the like speaker format and then just sort of like hanging out in the breakfast area where I sort of just divide people up by like, maybe, maybe it's not topic, maybe it's something else, but some way how I can identify like, you know, these are the 20 people that I need to talk to, right? Versus just trying to talk to, you know, shoot the shit to like, you know, a whole bunch of people trying to hope that maybe there's something there. And then maybe after talking to them for 20 minutes, it's like, oh yeah, I, I, it was a good thing I talked to you because, 
you know, but it'd be nice to just be able to draw that out from people right away to just say, yeah. oh yeah, you're, a, you're working on this particular technology that I need to know about, right? I, I think that's a great suggestion because I, I've done it informally. I mean, a lot of people from the audience know, like I was approaching people and say, yeah, what are the type of people you want to be connected with? And then I was connecting people because, yeah, for me, the more obnoxious it is, the better because I'm rock star, you know, just interrupt people, talk with this person. But it's a great idea, yeah, and like if we have a way to signal topics of interest and then connect people, I, I think that's, that's a great suggestion for the next one. W would, you. You, would you like something like, say, for example, people put a post-it on a bulletin board somewhere saying, hey, I'm going to be at this location, you know, corner of the left tree on the right. Uh, you know, I, yeah, and I'm going to be there for like, you know, the, say the next hour talking about clients. You know, if you want to talk about clients, show up there. W would that be something interesting? Okay. Um, where, where's the mic? Okay, yeah, there. over here. Um, yeah, well, so you went look for the mic. There was one that came in, too, from the web that was interesting, and it said that wherever it would be next would be nice if it was, like, another economy that could benefit, uh, like, or just that we could you know, actually be in a community versus something that might be like in Austin or Toronto, as much as like I would love Toronto, just something that's more community folk, a community town. Yeah, that's a great point. There are other places in the world that need no stir. So I think we definitely should branch out and look at Asia, look at places that are totally oppressed, look at China, look at Japan, Korea, you know, try to grow from there. So um, I live in Hong Kong and, uh, and, um, <clears throat> I've lived in China previously. And um, anyway, there's a lot of interest from China uh, and a lot of interest in Hong Kong. Uh, it was a 48 hour journey to get here. Thanks, Jack. Um, but so it'd be good to, to do something in, in Hong Kong and um, we can actually do it in Hong Kong. There's not any political problem with that at the moment. Um, anyway, I, I just want to plant a flag there see who's going to gather around it. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, yeah, the point about some tags or something would be amazing. I'm from Europe and introvert, and like we are not used to doing like, hey, how are you? What are you doing? You know, so this would be really cool. Um, also, there will be a Bitcoin conference in Prague in June called BTC Prague, and Czech Republic was under communism, so we really appreciate privacy and freedom, and. From Czech Republic is the first hardware wallet, first mining pool, first Bitcoin ATM. So we have a great Bitcoin community and the, um, there will be definitely a Nostr segment. So BTC Prague in June. Uh, we know the organizers. It will be amazing. We would love to promote Nostr there. So if you want to come to Europe or someone who is watching the live stream, um, feel free. Uh, it would be really great. Um, I, I think it's actually a pretty good format if we have just people go to the mic over there. If you oh, yeah. Go ahead, Tatum. One suggestion is I think the food should be a lot better next year. I'm just kidding. It was great. It was lovely. <laughs> I, I couldn't stop raving about it. God, that tuna tartare. Woo. Anyway, but on a serious note, um, one thing that I think would be beneficial no matter what location uh, we end up at uh, for the local community, for also bringing people in to want to come is, I know there's limitations on this, but the amount of stages and keeping them maybe topical uh, to maybe maybe a, a non-developer specific stage that's just like, what is Nostr? Like straight up just like 101 stuff for onboarding. So it's easier to, you know, like I would have loved to bring my girlfriend to this conference, but she did not want to come. Uh, because she's just like, oh, that's computer stuff. I don't know about that. And I need to work on my purple billing. But um, it, I think that like having these topical stages that are more specific to developers and then having stuff that's non-developers, then maybe having some off-topic stuff like Bitcoin integration, stuff like that. Uh, and again, I said there's limitations with, you know, the amount that we have. But that was just something that I thought would be uh, having that good divide would be very beneficial in my opinion. Thanks, Tatum, and definitely, for sure, more 101 content and 
Maybe a few more stages, you know? Workshops. Yeah, workshops, workshops for are sure. great. Yeah, I have a comment on the, like, kind of being able to connect with everyone. We didn't do the conference, tele like, in-person telegram until the last minute because I guess we were really trying to do as much of all of it on Nostra as possible. So I know that that's in the works. There's, like, a telegram-type thing for Nostra that has already been talked about here this week. So I think that'll be much better next year, and we will have more like, communication before um, would be nice. Yeah, so, like, are there a lot of parents here with kids that brought kids? Um, like, how many of you, like, did you feel like it was, like, safe and, and like, it was, like, uh, like, a friendly spot to sort of, like, you know, let your kids run loose? <laughs> and, and so you can talk to other people while, like, what, was it okay? Like... Was it okay? Yeah, it was, yeah, the, can, can more be done so families can go? A pool. A pool. <laughs> we have a river. <laughs> we will need the parents to be on top of the children if we have a pool. Yeah. <laughs> Keep that one That's in right. mind, please. Like, to me, this was very nice. It was, it was one of the first conferences I brought my kids, and it was, like, awesome having them, like, uh, and... I, I like this idea of having families coming because it takes a lot of the, some of the stress from, you know, parents just going to conference. Hey, I'm going to Costa Rica. See you in a couple of weeks. Pura vida. <laughs> yeah, MBK, I, I totally agree, MBK. Um, it might just be because I'm here in the virtual world and all I saw was our awesome Damas ambassador, Mr. E, and uh, Brian's Super Vols, um, the family experience looked great from afar, so I definitely hope more people and families will join in the future too. I was going to ask, while we were on the topic of stages somewhat, thank you Tatum again, um, scale, how did you feel about 300 people? I know, thank you everyone who joined us virtually, there are so many more who wanted to come, but just out of respect for the venue, didn't want to totally, they've never held anything of this size before, so... It's a lot of first here. What do we think about scale for a Nostra conference? It was nice, like having a smaller, tighter group. I mean, you know, th there's a limit. This is the first one, of course. Second, things grow. Like we can't hold this awesome, tight little thing forever, but we should try to enjoy while it lasts. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, maybe the next one is still like McShane, not too big. This is December Nostra, but yeah. it'll be. Yeah. I think that I think that what you're like what you're asking about scale is very like it's going to be very venue by venue and I think that it's like like you said there was tons of people who wanted to come now but the the scale of it I think it could be big and I think it could be good as bigger um, but like the intimacy has been very nice but I think that like just exploring different locations might affect that in a positive or negative way can I ask did everyone who wanted to participate in the planning and execution and the talks, feel they had an opportunity to present ideas and, and have them considered and do so? All right, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, oh, no, I thought, sorry, I just don't know for a moment there. Um, yeah, I think the, the biggest uh, issue for my, like, I love this place. Like, Bitcoin Jungle is awesome. Um, I think Awake is awesome. This has been fantastic. Um, the, another really important part of conferences, I think, are like the uh, extracurricular activities, just, getting out and going doing activities, you know, around town with people. Um, that's how you get to know people in your industry. And uh, um, I think that, uh, like, the transportation was, like, the biggest obstacle for me. I, I, do, I do wish I'd rented a car. Um, so I think just for, for me as a foreigner here, uh, that, that was the biggest challenge for me. Um, I, I felt like kind of every, every outside the conference venue situation was kind of like, okay, well, this person has to go here, and this person has to go here, and this person does or doesn't have a car. So there's a lot of, like, um, logistics there. Uh, the flip side of that, though, is that if you, you know, take it to a place that has, you know, 24-hour Uber and stuff, and, you know, then you're probably looking at, like, a big city, and you're in a giant conference venue, and it loses its intimacy. So I don't really know what the, the right answer to that is, but s some kind of balance would, would be awesome. Um, do you, like, y you guys organize conferences professionally. Um, so do you think that maybe having, like, two kinds of events, like, like, you don't just, it's just not like one or the other. Maybe there's like just 
like one is like hey it's like it's kind of like nostrica right it's just sort of like a smaller harder to get to you know the people who are into that go and then maybe there, there's like another track another conference that happens maybe a little bit bigger and, and, and closer to an international airport or something like that because it does dilute right i mean like the easier well, it is to get the less committed people will be to well, for need me, to be to go for me it's all about like what is the goal and to me for this conference like from my perspective, the goal was to bring people together and provide that push for Nostr protocol like, to, to go forward. So uh, also, like, this is why I've uh, pushed so hard to have developers come is that they create those in real life connections and now cooperate together because it is so much easier to cooperate when you know other person, person on the you know, other side of the monitor so yeah, for me, like that was the goal of this conference and us as organizers, like next conference, okay, like what is the big goal? Because if the goal is to onboard more people onto Noster, sure. And Rockstar. Yeah, <laughs> Rockstar, yeah, uh, rent me a stadium, like I'll go on the you know, stage and just absolutely rock and then we get more people in. Like just decide what is the goal and then organize based on that. I think though, we're just starting, right? And Noster is just starting. Like we are a percentage of what Noster is. So yeah, of course it's tiny. Um, as time goes, other conferences come, it's probably gonna get bigger. Our main goal right now is to learn how to make Noster better to onboard mainstream, right? And we can do that in huge quantities because there's not a lot of people that know how to do that. So. I do see that eventually we're going to have to be more mainstream, maybe go somewhere easier access eventually. But it, like everyone has said, it depends on the goal. Right now I think the goal is to be able to make Noster a better place for people to feel that they can come and they can use it. And we need developers to meet, we need to meet, we need to make connections and make it a space that's attractive to everyone. Can, can we do anything else online? that maybe scales this so that, you know, maybe the, the track that is in the small jungle somewhere uh, maybe has some, some uh, uh, that scale happens online and, and like that bridge between the two like is a bit better. Of course, it's not gonna be the same experience, but the, the people doing it, watching it online, maybe get like more from it. Uh, uh, you know, they, they really sort of, you know, it's maybe not the talks, but like there's just more interaction or, or something else that, you know, that we could do. Oh, I mean, I would think yes, as Noster grows, because I, I think at least my sense from others, and y'all correct me if I'm wrong, is that we want to do a lot of this on Noster, the pl planning for this and um, an organization of this. So my hope is that there will be way more things built in the future that we can do that. I don't know how to build those things. I don't know what it would take to do that, but I know that people are super smart here and I've seen amazing things happen. Um, yeah, and also my opinion on the location is that I love it. I know it's really hard to get to, but I, I liked the challenge of that. And I also know people, I won't like, call them out because I don't know if they want to be known for doing this, but that really work to get specific people that are very important to the Noster world here, um, like made it happen for them if, you know, which was amazing. So um, I hope that we could continue to find ways to support those that really should make it here if they have a trickier situation in the travel. Um, but I, I enjoyed the kind of <laughs> the challenge of it. Yeah, um, I think that this was planned so quickly and that we had um, an amazing team. And But thinking about what Steven said, it's like, um, I think maybe what we needed to do or a part that was missing was this thought of community outreach. Because we came here because it's a Bitcoin community and that is a big strength. And yet not many of us got a chance to go out there and actually spend Bitcoin or see what the community is like and how to onboard them onto Nostra. You know, that's part of it that we could have done because we already know it. And I wish we would have had more of a chance to reach out to the local community and do that. 
and when it comes to like the people who are watching, um, more of the ability to be able to tie in even to the local community. I mean, how many times have we not seen like the the lightning invoices? If we went to a place and could showcase it, um, some kind of an organization that was helping like the coral reefs or the lifeguards, if we could have done more of that, obviously there wasn't <laughs> too much time, but I think to tie it into the people in the community would be important too. Would you say more like a, a longer conference, a shorter conference? Like was this enough time, um, just perfect? I think that this is perfect, like duration, like three days. But because for most of us, like yeah, you come day earlier, day later, unless your plane gets turned in the air like mine did. Uh, but no, I think duration-wise is perfect. It's just, again, for me to repeat, it's like, what is the goal? And then based on that, we decide on the venue and if the goal is mainstream adoption, sure, like rent a venue next to the airport. But because, no, but online portion, I actually, for amount of planning that went in, because this is on conference, conference style, like there shouldn't be a lot of planning. Like I love the comments of everyone, yeah, now on YouTube, because yeah, people are even suggesting countries. Yeah, Bolivia, El Salvador, Brazil. Brazil is my favorite because we gotta get to Fiat Jeff. And That's right, we're gonna have to go to him. Yeah, but, but let's, let's hold the country vote until the end, yeah. Yeah, I've got a plus if one If we do Brazil. it in Brazil, we're gonna call it Nostril. Yeah, so do we change the name? You know, Nostro is going to be great, but like, do we, do, you know, do we yeah. change the name? Do we run the same? So I do we keep the Nostrica one as the conference one here and like run? Yeah, you have to change it. It's going to be a different relay. I have, I have a suggestion on like the time or the days. I'm okay with three days of content. That's cool. I think maybe could have been, again, very in conference. So. We had, I think we did a really great job, honestly. I, I'm not myself, because I wasn't part of this necessarily, but getting the content in the three days that we had and um, putting out great stuff, but. She was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think that. Um, Magic. I think that like it would be super cool to have a conference, because I think this with all Bitcoin conferences that I've been to, or now my first Nostra conference, is that like a random day in the middle of the conference where there's not anything on the agenda except for like getting people together to go experience the community. I've always wanted that because it's hard to coordinate with people that are leaving the day after or only got there the day before, et cetera. That's a great idea. I love that. I hope you all do take time tonight and you know, in the coming days to go explore this wonderful community. Like, it's insane all the places you can spend Bitcoin here. Everyone at the market takes it, the restaurants take it. And uh, we need to get them on Nostra. We need to get them a profile and show them love through our network. Hey, I want to say we did do some work. Uh, Jorge in the back here, someone purple pilled him. He's the owner of the Uvita Gastro Park. Thank you, purple yeah, pillars. Let's go. And uh, this Friday, I hope you visit our farmer's market in Dominical. Kena Aguilar here is the founder of our 100% organic farmer's market here Woo! in Dominical. Yeah, Ali, thank you for mentioning that because I don't know where Randy is, but me and Randy are coming to your place after to like start drinking. So Okay, I'm going to ask a question. I, I love all you guys, but there's so many people want to ask you questions now. And um, everyone's putting their hands up and you're not seeing. What I want to say is, 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 there, is there a world where Nostrica is not proprietary and people just organize their own Nostrica events all over the world? And may, maybe you just have a super Nostrica when, they, when the stars align, right? That's my point. And I know there's loads of people want to ask questions. A hundred percent. It's both a commons and a free market and it's open source. So everyone builds your own meetups, builds your own conferences, builds your own small nation states i don't care like we gotta <laughs> the keep small doing nations, it, you the know? Nostrica nation state yeah. just don't print your own money that's the death of it yeah. <laughs> um, um sorry go, go ahead if you guys want to ask questions it'll be good if you go to the mic yes. in the middle so yeah that uh, one okay. i think it works does it work x frog where are you if we're scaling uh, this here one yeah. All right. so hold yeah. on guys there's actually a queue of like five people in the back yeah yeah. Um, okay, we have a lot. How do you guys feel about, like, you know, say this... Yeah. Um, I Go have ahead. a question. I start? Go for it, and then we'll take it back. 
Oh yeah, perfect. Nice. Um, like Meilim, uh, I know that for this first conference we were very focused on developer stuff, but maybe I was like, I had the opinion that for the next, like no streak or whatever, maybe we should have like some content creators or something like that to learn also what they are looking for. No, because like sometimes it's difficult to build things without knowing, because we have talked a lot how to hit the 1 million users, the 100 million users, but maybe we were missing the other part of the equation in order to know what they need in order to use this in a more mainstream way, something like that. Um, do we have the next person? Uh, until we get that, how do you guys feel about funding <laughs> as this grows? Like, do we charge tickets? Do, like, you know, like, things need to be continuous. I mean, this is you and me panel from yesterday again. Like, yes. <laughs> making profit. But, no, I, I, I would like to hear from the audience because, like, uh, what you observe about content creators, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like, thumbs up for that. And let's incorporate it in planning for the next one. But let's, let's hear the next question from, there is Randy. You hey, and me, yeah. Um, I just want to thank... Big uh, applause to Randy because he yeah. has been on the gate on top of everything. So everyone, please give a round of applause yeah. to Randy. I just wanted to say uh, thank you to Angela, uh, to uh, Mads, to, to uh, Lee, to... Uh, oh, my God, everybody here. A rock star, Jack... MVK, Marcy, um, it's been a pleasure coming from Nashville, uh, Bitcoin Park. We're going to have a Nostra event in November. I know that was a previous question somebody asked. Everybody can have events everywhere. Um, there's still going to be a big one, but don't be shy. Look at, look at your communities. It changed the way I looked at things by just reaching out and finding other like-minded people in your area, and you'll be surprised what you could do with that. So I just want to say thank you. This this changed everything. And one last thought, one complaint. Let's get a tarp over the gate because it gets really hot. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your service. Randy Randy was in, in sun, you know, opening the gate. So tarp, thank you, man. Next question. Hey, I want to thank you guys. and Everybody here in this idea of a place, uh, whether it's yearly or... Uh, my vote is so strong uh, for a smaller thing, and I propose a uh, nostrum in the Tulum, uh, Cancun area because <laughs> the planes are from Europe, South America. It's a bridge. It's a strategic airport. So I'm inviting everybody here, please. Uh, there's beautiful places in the jungle there. They're cheap. They have cenotes. So we could have an ongoing place, uh, a practice that's... Uh, Man, that was a great pitch. No, I'm yeah, sold. That was, that was good. I'm sold. Like, that was good. Nostrum in Tulum. Oh, That's my true. God. That's hey, my new um, favorite. I've got a kind of a crazy idea, maybe. Um, Let's go. <laughs> Nostra is a centralized, and we love um, being able to be in communities. And there's so many people that weren't able to make it because they're in a different part of the world. What if this event next year could be in like three, five different communities at the same time. And that we could somehow link them together. And that way, and that way more people would be able to participate. It would be more scalable. There could be different organizers depending on the location. People could participate, maybe coordinate, even across the locations. Maybe we could have live streams that showcase what's happening in a different part of the world. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I know we're in like a building phase of NASA right now, and I feel like if there could have been a way for VC, designers, developers, founders to all meet together and whether it's, you know, a, a speed dating round or just some kind of mixer for everyone that is working on something or needs a resource, in person it's just so much faster than putting it out on Noster and hoping someone sees it or the right person relays it. Mixers and dating like things like that are actually pretty cool. 
uh, they, yeah. I love it, yeah. Next, okay. next question, yeah. Okay. That, that, that one you. also goes into what we said about badges, so great idea. Next question. Yeah, thank you very much for organizing this, and uh, I had just two things to say. Uh, just uh, referring to a friend of mine, they always say we need to accelerate, and uh, this is a great way to accelerate. Uh, but looking at the Bitcoin community as well, and who has been growing the past few years, I see a lot of communities popping up uh, like mushrooms everywhere, so I don't see why the Nostrica community can do the same. And uh, for all the people that is not a developer, they worry about, you know, oh, I need to learn about this. The best way to learn is actually driving other people around, bring your community, as we already say, few people probably. So create your community around you instead waiting for someone to create the community for you. As Mark said, just, yeah, just do it. Don't wait, don't ask for permission, and pura vida. Well, let's go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Again, thanks. Thanks uh, for all the organizers. Uh, and I have a sort of a reflection on, on both the talks and my experience here. Um, so I think a car common tra theme from the talks, whether it's the micro apps by Pablo or the history of Twitter by uh, Rebel, is that the culture is super important, um, for, especially for something that it's growing in its early stages. We want to protect the culture. Uh, like, uh, so for, for example, in the micro apps, uh, we want to prevent like a super app, uh, even though it's probably more convenient for the mainstream, but we still want to preserve the, the ethos of, of Noster, this um, intangible thing. And as event organizers, I think uh, people have a lot of their previous question was saying like, uh, it, communities pop up everywhere like mushrooms and like organizers have this uh, extremely important power to to shape that, to shape the ethos of the communities, and just want to highlight that. And uh, yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah. No, I I, I think this theme of um, using this inspiration from Nostrica to like kickstart your own community, like is is a good one. And then Elodie, I don't know if we'll be able to like tie in multiple conferences at once, but maybe Nostrika 2 is two conferences. You know, Bitcoin had a lot of that, right? I mean, yeah. the meetups were the thing. It's like a bunch of crazy people talking about magic internet money. Uh, it was very helpful to bootstrap the network because you create sort of strongholds, right? I mean, look at Bitcoin Jungle. <laughs> it's a Bitcoin stronghold, right? So you, you can probably, like, you can definitely develop that. Maybe, maybe part of the, the conference sort of... Um, a leftover sort of uh, like efforts and, and and extra energy goes into sort of like helping people bootstrap those those Noster like smaller networks and and then communities. Yeah, I just had some feedback observing the the conference as a non-developer coming here and and noticing there's a lot of amazing things working and that nature is doing so much work on behalf of creating that sense of I don't know connection. It's almost like a conference slash retreat. And I heard a lot of people expressing just how good it felt just to be here. And often you don't get that from people who go to a conference where just being in the environment is something they enjoy. Um, and so that was amazing. I felt like in my experience with conferences, just bringing people together or having good, um, good speakers or good topics is not sufficient to access the level of intelligence and contribution that's in the field. And that comes down to some facilitation. And so one thing I noticed is that there wasn't as much facilitation. And like if I looked at people's engagement through some of the talks, that you know, that it, I think that there could have been more engagement of all the immense intelligence. I met some of the most brilliant people I've ever talked to in this conference. And some of it is just this rhizomal network that's happening and people are interacting and it's amazing. But I've seen the power of good facilitation. And so if there was able to bring in some more facilitation on specific problem solving, you have such a, prof I'm, I feel like what this stands for is so much the power of collective intelligence and decentralized organization. How do you access this more with good facilitated process? I would be, I think it would just take the roof of the kind of solutions that emerge from here. 100% yeah. man. And you're going with me and Randy to that beer park. Like, 
Stay, stay close. Rockstar. No, no, no. I'll yes. Have a, if the juice. person isn't is if the person isn't anonymous, what was the name of the person who just spoke? Zamir. 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 I know I'm on Noster. Thanks to someone. So. <laughs> you loved his session, Angela, right? No, anyways, no, thank, you. Thank, anyways thank you. Anyways, you're right. We're connecting. Adding on to that, I maybe some of the topics that we have, like he said, could be just focused on on creating something specific, and that may happen tomorrow and the day after, more with what's happening with Ravel and what is, what's happening with Ball Fun. But yeah, that would be more interesting. Maybe more like a round table of working on something. I also want to say that if you don't get the chance to give us feedback, um, use the time capsule hashtag maybe, or uh, just tag us. Or the channel in Telegram. The channel in Telegram, that would be great. <laughs> so please do that so we can just read it over and then sit down and put our little brains to work. Thank you, guys. This, uh, are we... One more. One more. One more. Hi, everyone. My name is David. I came here as a guest from Alex. Ernesto, my friend, invited me. I'm a proud Costa Rican, so first I wanted to thank you all for coming here. It's a, it's a pleasure seeing all this beautiful energy and what's happening here. And uh, second, um, I just lost my train of thought, but I will find it. it so a suggestion on the uh, community outreach, I think uh, a lot of people forget that uh, internet access is, is limited, so connectivity, I think, is, is key to enabling uh, connectivity to Nostra. And uh, I actually specialize in tech infrastructure, uh, networking and routing, so it will be a pleasure to collaborate in that sense, because that's the first step. And uh, yeah, that's all. Thank you all. We love your help. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say one thing before, I don't know if we're wrapping up or not, but the AV people that are not able to be on stage with us right now because they're running around, they are amazing. I, I don't know how they do what they do, but it's awesome. Thank you. And also, yeah, it's been amazing to be part of this team um, of, of production specialist and to work with people who know exactly what they're doing. It's been really special for us here at Awake. And um, yeah, I just want to say thank you. My name is Drew LaPlante. I haven't uh, met everybody yet, but uh, I've been wearing my audio engineer hat here in this stage. Um, but I also co-founded uh, Awake here, and we've built it over the past three years um, with Govinda, who's in the corner. So I just want to acknowledge Govinda, my, my co-founder. Thank your host. So it's been super powerful. Uh, just a little over three and a half years ago, walked down this road to the river for the first time and sat down in the river and looked at my partner and said, is this the space? It was the very first space. And, and for, for it to go from a dilapidated farm to, um, you know, the, realizing the, our true intention here to be a seed of the new earth. And in order to make a new earth, we need communication and we need ways to decentralize and open source it and so this fits so beautifully into the spiritual aspect of what we explore here and it's been such a beautiful cultural not clash but mix um, and I want to say thank you for everyone for bringing such beautiful vibration here and all of your knowledge in sharing it in this way and I hope so many beautiful flowers of this new earth come from what has happened here so thank you thanks Drew. everybody Thanks for the shout out, Mads. Uh, it's, it's not just the three of us, me, Reverend Hoddle, and Rob back there, but there's also a whole team of people back in Vancouver who are live producing this for the live stream. And uh, I don't have, do you have their names? Yeah. This is, this is Reverend Hoddle. Not only did he do the cameras and the stream for the other stage, but he also emceed the entire thing just kind of because. Yeah, thanks. Uh, back in Vancouver at Control, Patrick, Nathan, is Stanny. These, uh, these people were up Pacific time very, very early, working extremely late nights, hopefully creating the energy that was here and uh, sending that out into the, uh, into the world. And uh, so, yeah, they, des they deserve a huge amount of... Uh, uh, <laughs>
Thanks. So I've been here uh, at Awake for the past two weeks, uh, at least 12 hours a day working. Uh, I've run 1,500 meters of Ethernet cables, set up 18 Wi-Fi access points, uh, brought you all the food, plates, forks, cups, cutlery, water, you name it. Um, but really the most, the coolest thing was last night. I came over around 8 o'clock to do a little cleanup, and I saw some of the people here at Costa Rica in the Cora having conversations with Awakeners that live here at Awake. And, you know, there are people that live here at Awake, like 20 people uh, full time. And I, they were maybe a little nervous uh, when I told them 400 people were going to show up to where they live, uh, tech nerds, right? And, uh, but the connections I saw happening last night were, were incredible. And uh, it really was a, a good mix of uh, these two worlds combining. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. We're gonna have to thank you too, man. I know you don't, you're not into that, but you know, you kind of like, you know, you got the vibes going on the internet first, and you then did the whole Walmart greeter thing. <laughs> you know, you, you brought the vibes, and, and then you, you really helped make all this happen. So, like, seriously, thank you. Thank you. My one ask, I'm, I'm very grateful you all took the time away from everything that you do to come here. Let's leave this place better than we found it. That's just my one ask. So if there's one little thing that you could do, it could be the tiniest little thing to improve this, this, uh, this location or where you're staying or the venue, please do it. That's, that's the tone we always want to set and that's the tone the, the protocol sets as well. And, and that, will, that will mean success and that will mean global adoption ultimately. <laughs> I mean, I think I think that's it, guys. <laughs> this this was fantastic, and yeah, close it. Sunset. Sunset. Everybody to sunset. Wait, wait, wait. Hermosa wait, wait. Beach. There are yes. shuttles. There are shuttles. We wait, I want to thank all the volunteers first, but I want to thank two little boys that have been amazing, that are in the back. Brian, please tell your boys to stand up. Give them a round of applause. They are amazing. Bitcoiners, <laughs> best yeah. T-shirts, everything. Love them. Thank you. Now, let's go watch the sunset. Okay. That's it. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Alex. Pura vida. <laughs> there you yeah. go. I'm down. Um, I'm guessing you have some stuff to do. Uh,
hard to come here. You're in my Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, that's very good. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just Yeah, yeah. 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 Hello guys. <laughs> so, good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> How are you doing? Very well. Mm -hmm. Really welcome to Costa Rica. Yeah. Well, as you can see, it's very beautiful here. <laughs> okay, so um, I am here to uh, tell something about the people behind Bitcoin Jungle and to get like a bit of an overview about what it is and probably about your mindset a little bit. So I would ask you to introduce yourself first and then we go a bit deeper into questions. Okay, so my name is Richard Scottford. Um, I'm one of the co-founders of Bitcoin Jungle. Um, and I also run a school here called uh, Jungle Academy. And um, yeah, I've been in Bitcoin since 2017. And um, yeah, I kind of just noticed that this whole area was primed to be, have a Bitcoin economy. And then we were fortunate enough all to connect together. So none of us knew each other before Bitcoin Jungle. And now we're all good friends and creating a community project. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I'm Hans Berg. I'm from Holland. I live here now eight years full time. And I built a little uh, boutique hotel, uh, Bali Bosk. And I'm into Bitcoin similar to Richard and they were actually starting up and I hooked up pretty quick like after two or three months I helped onboarding it was kind of my job a little bit mm -hmm. onboarding uh, the people here and uh, yeah mm -hmm. that's who I am uh, <laughs> what I'm doing within Bitcoin journey yeah so uh, let me ask how Hans did you came to Bitcoin so what was your journey there so I realized you are a very wealthy man. Oh, uh, no, very well. I'm healthy, uh, wealthy. Yeah. <laughs> healthy is wealthy, right? Okay. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, uh, how did I? Oof. There's just a lot of Bitcoiners around here. And uh, I worried a bit about the financial system. And uh, then it's very easy to, that is one of the first things you stumble on is Bitcoin. And if you then see, how people kind of join in and, and like Bitcoin is from nobody and from everybody and then, then it's very easy to uh, yeah to jump on the wagon that is that is how I joined Bitcoin and then, uh, mm -hmm. then I met like Richard and Lee and I already had like Bitcoin and when then they showed me what lightning is and how you can pay payments. That was, I always say for me, that was the mouse moment of the internet, you know, like when Apple mm. invented the mouse, yes. then you could use the internet. And when I saw lightning, I said, wow, when this was is that? it. Around what time? One and a half years ago, I think. Yeah, so um, in October, I'll give you a backstory of how Bitcoin Jungle yeah. came about. So okay. in October of um, 20, 20 what? Um, we, we decided, we, we've been planning to create a school and what I wanted to do was I wanted to create a school on the Bitcoin standard. I wanted the, the, the parents to pay by Bitcoin because we were working in a school previously and there's a lot of friction for parents to come and pay for the, their ch children's tuitions. So one of the ideas was I'm going to like make a school which is based on Bitcoin. So I convinced my wife this is what we're going to do. And, um, and but then I was like, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> so I, I'm not a tech guy. And so what what we did was I just sent a text out in on Twitter and just said, Hey, does anyone know can help me? I'm making a school. I want to accept Bitcoin. I want to pay the teachers in Bitcoin. I want to like get the parents to pay in Bitcoin. Can anyone help me? And then the Bitcoin community just started responding to me, just like, Oh, you should do this. You should do that. You should do this. And then just helped us to connect with people. And so through that through that initial tweet, we ended up connecting with people, and I connected with Lee. Excuse me, and um, yeah, and then Lee came on board, and he's a tech guy, 
So what that meant was that, that then we suddenly accelerated. We were able to make our own wallets and I went away to El Salvador in 2021 for the first adopted Bitcoin conference and by, to make connections. And I was going around El Salvador saying, hey, we're going to do this project in Costa Rica. And they're all like, who's this mad guy? Who's this crazy <laughs> yeah, guy yeah, yeah, yeah. doing this? And, and, and so, and then when I got back from, the, from that, that, that um, conference, the, the, the wallet was made. So Lee had hard forked the Bitcoin Beach wallet. Mm -hmm. So whether you know like Bitcoin Beach, the project there, you know, they tried to create that project and, that, and they were using other wallets. Mm -hmm. And then Nicholas Bertie from Galoi, he went down there and he created their wallet for them. And then the, the, the thing about the Bitcoin Beach wallet is it's easy to onboard people. Mm -hmm. It's very, you, you know, they don't have to hold their own keys and stuff like that. And it's really about getting people who are not non-technical to get on board yeah. with, with Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin Beach is like exi existing like six years, I guess, mm -hmm. around that. Yeah. So, so you learned a lot from them? I we didn't necessarily learn a lot from them in the sense that we just read about them and we wanted to copy that model of being able to onboard people really quickly. Mm -hmm. And so then by the time I got back, you know, Lee had, Lee had hard forked the wallet in like um, three days. And Galois had always said that they wanted the wallet to be hard for, they wanted people to take up their, um, their software, but they were shocked. Mm. When, when, we've, when, when, they rele when we've, we finally hard forked it so fast, I, I think they were shocked at how quickly it was done. They were like, well, where did these guys come from? <laughs> and so that was it. So then, in, that was in November, and then in the December, we started to sign up people. So what we would do, You know, it's like then how do you create a project? How do we get people to come and, 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 and work with Bitcoin? And what I noticed when I was in El Salvador is the project's different. El Salvador is more about helping the unbanked, whereas here in Costa Rica, our, our project is about helping uh, foreigners who are coming here, who live here. How do we like, ease the friction of their money? Mm -hmm. And because they're, they're bringing in a lot of money, they're building apartments, they're building houses, they're buying land, they're living, going to restaurants. So how do we, how do we reduce the friction of that? You know, foreigners, you know, their expenses could be thousands of dollars a month. So how do we reduce that friction? So Bitcoin's a solution for that. But what we need to do is we need to have places for them to be able to, to spend their money. So we started with the markets, and that's where I met Hans, we met in the market. So I, we were there, basically just getting people to sign up. I would wait outside the front of the market. So we signed up the, um, the, the market owner. We got her involved. And this is how like the connections work here in this system because Lee had spoken to the market owner. He said, hey, I want to do a Bitcoin project at your market. And then, um, and then she was like, okay. She was you know, maybe you know, kind of interested. And then he said, oh, I'm working with Richard. And she, well, I've known her for three years. I used to teach her children. So suddenly that connection is like, okay, right, mm -hmm. right so it, it makes sense. So then we, we went there, she knows Lee, mm -hmm. she knows me, she trusts us. So, yeah. so then she tells the markets, the store owners, hey, these guys have got Bitcoin, they want to help you. So, so immediately the store owners, mm -hmm. right, will trust listen to us. Right? They'll listen yeah. to us because yeah. they trust, trust is, us. Trust yeah. is a big question. Because so. they trust Kena. She knows us, yes. right? And so, and so we were able to get on, I don't know, like first day, 60% of all the market vendors we, 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 we got, we onboarded. Mm -hmm. And then I would be standing outside the markets, getting people to download the wallet. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and Cashing people out. Cashing people out. You know, in like the that. beginning so, they wanted to have yeah. cash. So, but yeah, and so, that, so that's how the project is. It's like, how do we get, so it's like a trickle down project. In sense that the more, places we can get for foreigners to spend, mm -hmm. the more the, the locals become exposed to it. As opposed to, let's try and, um, you know, like bank Costa Ricans. Because yes. in reality is Costa Ricans, they're kind of happy with their financial systems in a way, right? They, they, lots, of, lots of Costa Ricans have credit cards, they have bank accounts, they have SIM pay. Uh, uh, you know, of course there's poor people here in Costa Rica, but a lot of people are not questioning the system like we do now. They're not questioning that system. Okay, I got a question for you. Just let me interrupt that because there was, there was one point I'm, I'm curious about. So how did you build trust? I mean, this is like, I think the biggest topic these days, mm -hmm. trust in every kind of sense. And how did you build that? We built trust by co-opting the gatekeepers of the places that we wanted to get into. So first of all, we did the markets. So we, we like I said, we get, go to the markets, we, we 
approach the owners of the markets, the people who run the markets, and we, we speak with them and then they introduce us. So we don't just cold call into the markets and asking individual owners. The market people, they introduce us. Mm. They say, these are guys are good, they've got a good reputation, Bitcoin's really good, it's going to really help you. So we are, we are, we are, we are tapping into the trust that's already there. And plus, then, plus, basically, it's a small community, what we said yeah. earlier, you know, like perhaps three and a half, four and a half thousand people, and a lot of people know each other. Mm -hmm. So for yeah. us, it was like, Hey, you want to, you know, know something about Bitcoin, you know, about the app, and then they hear something about it, and, and then based on trust, they, they like, like what you said, the app is very easy, they're up and running within 10 minutes, but because it's such a small community, which is, which gives trust, and then if you onboard, like you say, the, 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 the markets, then the restaurants, then the guy who repairs your your lawnmower, and and you know then then, then it becomes like it, it, it carry the project carries itself mm. and, and like a trust network I would say yeah and, 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 and we have one of our ambassadors like mm. uh, Eugenio in San Jose he said okay I'll, I'll copy it there and then it turns out that in San Jose where half the population lives mm. it's much more difficult to build this trust than in a small community like here. I would I would say if you would ask the people here, perhaps 25-30% knows about Bitcoin general. Mm -hmm. Hans has been super modest here because what happened was after we, we did the markets, I mean, we 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 had um we'd um signed up all the markets, we then were like, okay, now we want to do restaurants. This is because this is where foreigners are spending their money. Now we want to do restaurants. And then Connecting with Hans, and Hans knows everybody, every owner of restaurants, every owner of this thing, this, this, this. So a lot of so, so it's about it's about. So when you're trying to build a, 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 a Bitcoin community, it's about connecting yep. to the to the the the, 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 the uh, gatekeepers. So once we wanted to get into the restaurants, someone like Hans opens all the doors. So opens the doors. Oh, I know this guy. I can set up a meeting. Oh, I know this guy. I can set up a meeting. And they've known Hans for years and years and years, and so they trust him. So that Lee and I would go, or Hans would go, and he he'll introduce Lee, and immediately the trust is there, right? So it's about creating that. so and it's, it's building on strata so you know, the, the the markets and the individual store owners and then the bigger restaurants and then now we you know we're looking at you know we have systems in place or, or being coming online soon that will help us to like you know pay bills um, and then uh, transfer Bitcoin into dollars and that will help us get even bigger clients so it's not like you know, we, we're immediately going to get the supermarkets, immediately going to get the big ones. But as we build up, we build, we find the gatekeepers who give you the entry in, into into the space, and that's that's you know, for me, I'm really into the the concepts of like when people talk about Bitcoin citadels, right? And they always make them vertical. You know, like, oh, and these vertical, and all the whales are at the top, and all the plebs are at the bottom. But the reality is, the Bitcoin citadel is horizontal. And, and what we're building here, we're building a Bitcoin citizen from Dominical to Ubita down to Ochal up to Tiedemaste. There's a group of people, we have shared ideas and shared um, views and it's going to be powered on Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's based on trust. It's okay. based on trust. That's what a Bitcoin citadel is. So we were talking a little bit about um, the difference between, let's say, Europe and the first world and uh, like people here in Costa Rica or in Africa and um, what um, yeah what um, their knowledge of the financial system here had brought to them you know what 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 makes that uh, a difference to the people there in Europe because I got the feeling nobody really knows about the financial system there and, and they sometimes they don't want to know so what do you think about that? I think in, in if that is Europe or the United States or you know people have like four or five bank accounts they have three credit cards and they believe in the system and that this will go on forever they don't even think about it and if you talk about you mentioned Africa but but even Costa Rica here people earn two hundred dollar a week and not so much here but like in Africa you know they they, they, they have like 20-30% uh, inflation 
and, and, and there I think is where the adoption will start that people are more open to, to a system where they say how I, can I secure my 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 proof of work or my energy and and even here uh, the salaries are not that high but but people are, are open there they are you know they don't have this like base when when you are 10 years old your father starts saving for you and then you have one bank account and a second bank account and here they are kind of it's it's like it's literally like the jungle and they are more open to this if i can give an example like like our gardener or, or the people that help uh, run the hotel when we first told them about bitcoin jungle they of course everybody heard about bitcoin but if you then um, onboard them in the app within like basically five minutes and they see what it is and you say here you have thousand colonists they're very open to it and and then they very quickly get it because they they don't have these four five bank accounts and ten thousand dollar behind so they, they just say okay we try and, and we trust you so yeah mm -hmm. that's my take on it mm -hmm. so the adoption here and in africa will be bigger than in the states and in europe yeah and I heard that Africa is like the um, the main use case for Bitcoin, you know? People like saying, okay, in Europe or probably also in America, you can play around a little bit with that or you can have, if you are smart, can make easy money. Mm -hmm. But in Africa, it's like a necessity. Um, they, their, their lives are based on Bitcoin because they don't have uh, any banking system there that accepts them. Yeah, plus they, they earn, let's say, $50 a week. Mm -hmm. They buy shopping, and if they wait till next week Wednesday, that fifty dollar, you know, is, is worth twenty dollars. So they they buy what they need, and whatever is left, they, they they want to kind of preserve it. And I think like Bitcoin is is a fantastic uh, um, uh, tool for that. You know, like we are not used yet. We are getting there now with twenty percent inflation, but we are not used that our money that we earn this week uh, loses thirty uh, percent of the value within a week. Mm -hmm. So that's why the adoption there is bigger. So Africa perhaps is extreme, or Turkey or Venezuela, but here, you know, people don't. They are not caught in the system. You know, like save till you're sixty-five years old, and then you can live. They, you know, they are open to alternatives. Mm -hmm. I understand. Um, the volatility of Bitcoin, do you think that does something to, you know, to the mindset of people in general and also to probably the Costa Ricans? Because um, as I first started dealing with Bitcoin, you know, I got a heart attack. <laughs> was it like falling, the course was falling. Then it came with up again and stuff like that. So it's, uh, I don't know, I think yeah, what do you think? What kind of mindset do people should people have to deal with Bitcoin? Is there something I they always can... say to people look at it like like your house or a piece of land. Put five to ten percent of your income in it and don't look anymore. Don't 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 it, it's it's like a long term investment. Well, we are also not looking at, at, at what this property is worth every month or two months. It's like you know, it's like a, Put it aside and look in five years and I think that is how I try to explain it to, 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 to the staff here also and they get it and, and, and perhaps I'm wrong but I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm not far off from the truth. If they ever want to really afford like a new car or whatever, you know, saving little bitcoin every, every week, every month uh, may be a good way, a better way than uh, put colonies in your bank account. Mm. And what would you say to them? Um, in the, the whole general question, I don't think we need to really compare like the West or the traditional first world countries. Like, because just because it's not getting traction there doesn't mean that it's not getting traction. I mean, we're talking about a complete reinvention of, of the system. We're not talking about tweaking the system or making it a little bit better or adding on something. We're talking about a complete reinvention of the system. So, obviously, the system itself, which is most uh, present in, in the first world countries, it's going to be harder for them to change. It's going to be much harder to change. There's less motivation for a person in Germany or a person in the UK to change because the system serves them really well. Whereas um, in, in a system where 
you know, like you know, like Costa Rican dollars pegged. To, I mean, Costa Rican colones is pegged to the dollar, or or you're actually like in El Salvador where you you don't then been dollarized. Right, they're much more motivated to look for something better because the system hasn't served them, and so that's why you see uh, Central America for me, um, and possibly um, South America is is the center of where Bitcoin is really starting to, to, to get traction. And that's why you know everyone who, who's, who's interested in looking at the system and the people in Central America, they want to reinvent the system. They want to reinvent the system. They've been colonial countries forever and it hasn't served them well. The do, you know, whether it was part of Spain or whether it was part of the, now the, the, the colonial dollar, it hasn't served them. So that's why you'll see traction happen here. And so we don't need to look, oh, well, you know, why are people in Costa Rica accepting Bitcoin and people in Germany aren't? It's because, well, we have a, we have a, we have a much bigger upside to do it right right and I feel like you know you know in the, like in the future you know that the Central America is going to be the, the, the heartland Costa Rica is going to be the spiritual center of Bitcoin and Vita is going to be the pounding heart. We're, we're, and yeah and Vita and this this the golden triangle here yes yeah. it's, it's got it's the heart of you know Bitcoin we feel that we, we really truly believe that and that's why we're doing it right people come here to you know there's no no, it was, it's not surprising at all that no streak is here. Why is? Why wouldn't it be here? There's nowhere else. Why should it be anywhere else, right? You know, and, and, and it'll just become obvious. And people will come to move here because we're building like decentralized communities here. This is everything that people talk about is happening here, right? And it's not planned. You know, I was at the a Bitcoin conference and they're talking about making this island in Honduras. Mm. About, but I was, I was watching the presentation and I was like, seems kind of centrally planned to me. Mm. Kim's going, oh, you can come here and hang out, but we own it all. Whereas mm. here, this is a completely decentralized project. Yeah, and what would you say, what kind of people are coming here? All kinds of people. So Costa Rica has been pulling people from around the world for years. Mm. And my story, I don't know about Hans's story, but so many people's stories are, they come here and they go, I came to Costa Rica and I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I was called here and I turn up and I don't know why. And these, these are all types of people. And this is definitely my story. And I've met many, many people like this. And so there's this, there's this pull to bring people in, P bring people in who want to create an alternative way of living, an alternative lifestyle. And, and now that's starting to happen. So this is happening with it more the like a uh, healing, new age community and now it's starting to happen with people who are you know like who, who are programmers and coders and stuff and people coming in thinking yeah you know what I think my life in Central America in El Salvador in Costa Rica it will be better for me to do the work here than back home and that's that's going to be a trend that's going to be a trend people will move here because other people are moving here and 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 the environment is set up for that and there's space to breathe you space know, to you breathe have, yeah you, you can flourish here you know yeah, like exactly. not everything is so over organized yeah. that's mm -hmm. it. It, it it's it's don't get me wrong costa rica is has a long sophisticated history and sometimes people make the mistake of thinking this is an empty palette here it's not an empty palette costa rica has a very very strong culture but it's very accepting of other people coming in here and letting people be who they are and, and live the way they want to live and and also costa ricans really want to to see their country in the forefront right central american people are very proud and they and i really believe that you know central america is just like the new world this is the new world this is the place that people are going to want to live and don't want they want they won't want to move to paris or london or new york or hong kong or all these cities now in the future people will come here live here this is this is the decentralization the the, the bitcoin citadels that everyone dreams about this is this is where it's happening right it's only a small at the moment it's just a small amount of like uh, people coming but it'll be more and more I mean I know like El Salvador wants to bring in lots of people and it'll work for them it's already working for them right and it'll happen here as well also Guatemala right and, and all the other countries will just look there thinking this is the new way this is where the, this, the, the, it's, it's going this is where we want to go right it's really we, we have to do it and the government steps a little bit back, you know. Uh, taxes are affordable, so you have a little bit more financial space to do that by yourself. And we kind of create our own world here. Mm -hmm. Don't tell that to the president. <laughs> We're going to cut this out. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs>
So, okay, let's yeah, be let's, ready. Let's answering my wife. Okay. Turn the ringer down as well. She's, my cleaners has been trash. The light is changing a little bit, but it's okay at the moment. So, okay, so I, I would say let's come to the last questions. Um, I got to have a look. Mm. Okay, so let's talk about um, the disparity in the reception of Bitcoin. Why do you think Bitcoin is portrayed so negatively in the press and everywhere and people believe that? So what do you think is behind all that? Ah, I don't know. Let me think. Um, the people that we encounter generally don't have a negative opinion of Bitcoin. So we don't... When we were first signing people up to Bitcoin Jungle, the, my biggest problem when I was standing outside the markets and signing people up was always uh, um, basically get, getting somebody who would want, then want me to talk about their latest shitcoin. Mm. And I'd be like, okay, no, 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 I'm not interested. <laughs> so, you know, like, I would ask them if they know about Bitcoin and um, then they would want to talk about Ripple. And I'm like, oh, I don't have time to talk about this. Mm. So I think it's more in general. So, it's so like but general generally, the, you, know, so, you know, because we spend all our time here in Costa yes. Rica, we, we don't come across people who have negative opinions of it, right? You know, you, occasionally, but, you know, if we talk to, a, a, you know, a local person, they might not want to sign up to Bitcoin, but they don't have a negative opinion. Oh, this is really bad. This is all whatever. This like so we don't we don't we know that exists out there, and, and obviously we can see now what's what was happening with like um, the, the banks and stuff, and that insinuations that they're closing the the crypto um, um, onboarding and offboarding with the SVB Bank and Signature Bank. I mean, we we feel so far removed from that. Right, that we, it's almost like we're spectating that, and that's very real out there in that world for for them. Whereas for us, you know, in our daily life, you know, trying to get on restaurants on board, speaking to people who've moved here, you know, speaking to our families, and trying to get them to on um, pay Bitcoin for their school fees, it's always just a positive aspect. We we get that, so um, it's 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 not something that we like dwell on lots because like for us it's like really positive projects and we don't get much pushback on it mm -hmm. we do it here plus so. plus there's a lot of narratives out there like you know the narrative where where people say oh yeah but like bitcoin the the, the story oh somebody paid 1500 bitcoin for a pizza that's a story that's out there the other story that's out there is that you you cannot pay with Bitcoin because the transfer fees are higher than a cup of coffee. And what we are doing here, we are building an economy where we can see that you can buy a cup of coffee at zero fees. So it's kind of the the, the comical, media, right? the mainstream media has kind of a monopoly on what Bitcoin is and they write something but we show that it's not yeah, always that way. The, the, the other narrative uh, that it uses so much energy. Yes, it uses a lot of energy, but it could be the alternative banking system for for the banking system that uses a hundred times more energy. If you really see what it does and how much, but then you have to have an open discussion. And and what we try in very small is is show here what Bitcoin can do and what it means to not just uh, hodl it, yeah. but spend it and and spend it with your you know like the the the, the, the guy who, who repairs your 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 your, your uh, how do you say it lawnmower or a, a nice story I like to tell you that you know I, I I was with like I wanted to buy a new quad and I took a mechanic we drove to San Jose and of course it's our passion and so I start talking about Bitcoin and he heard about it and. You know, I had to pay him for the day. I said, you know, 5%, 10% of your income in Bitcoin. I'm driving. He has his telephone. Within five minutes, he downloads Bitcoin Jungle. I don't know what I owed him, but it's also not important. I paid him 20% of what I owed him for the day in Bitcoin while driving. He's very enthusiastic. Talks to some of the other, his, his friends in the car. Immediately, he is orange pilling other people and uh, 
Then, later on in the, in the discussion, he talks about other people that also have a quad and a side by side. I said, but that's also a Bitcoin. So you can also do it with him. Ask him to pay. You know, it's so it's so easy to onboard. And, 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 and the, to the, use it here. That, that's what we are point, doing against that narrative. The, 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 I guess the point to Hansi's story is if we go onto Twitter or if we see like, you know, some super famous person talking about there's no use case for Bitcoin and, you know, Bitcoin doesn't get used and it's never going to, you know, and they have like you know, hundreds of thousands of followers and everyone's like, not liking, no use. And, you know, and for us, we do using it every day. We go to you know we go to the shop. We buy stuff. We go for meals. We, you know, so you know, for have somebody who's like supposedly no, supposedly knows what they're talking about, telling us that there's no use case for Bitcoin and Bitcoin can't be used and it's not practical. And it, it, how do we even respond to those people? How do you even other than say, come to Costa Rica and we'll buy you a meal in Bitcoin and it will be easy and we'll show you how easy it is. I went for well, a meal. The waiter can show them how I, easy you know, it is. I went out for a meal super two days ago with a bunch of Bitcoiners. And and they're all hardcore Bitcoiners, but none of them had used the Lightning Network to buy food, right? They because they haven't been in that situation. But for us, it's you know, it's just second nature. You hear the monkeys? Yes. Yeah, those are monkeys now. <laughs> yeah, <I hope laughs> yeah, you know, even the monkeys agree. Yeah. This is even the monkeys monkey. agree. Yeah, you hear it? Proof of monkey, I would say. <laughs> and so okay. you know, so you know, we go out for, for a meal. And you know the traditional way of going out for a meal, where everybody puts their credit card in. Oh, can you put fifty dollars on here? Can you put twenty dollars on here? That just seems so clunky to us now. Like we go out for a meal, and then one person pays in Bitcoin, and the other people just send the other person sacks. Yes, it's that quick, and, and that is second nature to us. So, so when we hear people talking about you know like the the fud that exists out in the real world. It's 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 almost alien to us because it's for us it's just like we're just doing it. We're living, living it. it. We're living we it. It's it's, it's a it. thing. So how can we tell? How can we talk to someone who says there's, there's no use case for Bitcoin? Bitcoin's too clunky to use. And it will be one area after another after another. And I think so, so we're it, yeah. So it's hard for us to respond to that because it's it, it's just natural now for us to just like I said to to go. Play. Of course, it's not everywhere, but it will be. This project's only a year and a half old. And as, as, as more Bitcoin has come and didn't ask in other people, so they're actually our ambassadors now. So they come and they're going to help and help people to accept Bitcoin. And it will just become more and more. And as, we, as our processes get better, we'll, we'll be able to get bigger companies because often the companies, the, the larger companies, they, they, they need the dollars to, to keep paying their vendors. So we, we have systems in the pipeline where um, we will be able to transfer the Bitcoin straight to cash and we'll be able to get bigger vendors. I mean, even three days ago, I paid a guy, I paid our accountant in Bitcoin, right? Through the SimPay system. Yeah. Super cool. Yeah. Just like boom, like that. So for us, it's like, it's like normal. We're paying bills with our Bitcoin. My, my par our parents at the school, they pay their tuition in Bitcoin, right? I paid my teachers in Bitcoin. You know, and then and then somebody in I don't know New York or Germany says there's no use case for Bitcoin. We're like, <laughs> <laughs> on which planet are you it's living? Like, like, well, <laughs> come here. It's just it's just normal for us to do. It's just a normal thing for us yeah. to do. Okay. Yeah. Thank Nos you. Nostra. Because Nasara, where he lives, and I think his brain was like Nasara, Nostra, oh, yeah? Nostra. Oh, I didn't Maybe, I don't know, I'm not, I can't speak for yeah. him, but no. I think he was connecting all those dots there and thinking that'd be cool. But everyone pointed out there's not actually any Bitcoin infrastructure up there, right? So there's Bitcoin jungle down here, and then he wanted to have it there. And so there was a, a series of emails went past through to Jack, and he, well, from what I understand, he, he hasn't been down here for a while, and he thought it was not as developed. But he was able to be convinced that this is my, this is his only second hand, so I'm not saying this is true. Yeah. I'm not speaking and on it. And he kind of off. voted, and then he and then everybody, but well, everybody was like, you know, just like <laughs> everything in Nostrica, everybody was best. like, no, it has to be in Bitcoin jungle. It has to be in Bitcoin yeah. jungle because because and, and the thing is, you know, people can come down here, and they can go to all the restaurants, and they can eat, and they can pay their Bitcoin. I don't know how what they, whether they could do that there. This is one on one street. So this was really the place. To and now, you know, as far as I'm concerned. We'll see. I mean, I'm sure that the conference will be a success, but you know, Nostra Rica is like in Costa Rica now. It's like that's it's going to be a thing that carries on, and you know, and, and then even even Uvita, you know, because we the the, the, the amazing thing about um, Bitcoin is you you, do, you don't have to be 
in the centre and what you're seeing is a decentralisation from the cities. We don't have to have all the major major conferences and stuff in the major cities, right? It doesn't, it doesn't need to be like that. You, you know, it can be in a little town like Uvita, right? Where people are trying to live in an alternative way and not trapped by all the systems and like, you know, like Bitcoin's trying to break through these huge, like, structures that are already in place. Come down here and basically, you know, we, we have a lot more freedom to be, to, to be able to express ourselves. And so, yeah, what was the question? <laughs> you gave the answer already. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, we, you know, it, 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 it's, it's here in, us, in Uvita because it was, where else would it ever be? It, it's it's, yeah, it's destiny. Yeah, I mean, it's beautiful here. I cannot totally understand why. And um, do, do you guys actually use social media? Yeah. Not me. He's missed the social media. I mean, oh, yeah. I, mean I, 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 I don't use Facebook anymore. Why? Why? I, I was very well connected on Facebook during the Hong Kong protests and I had a very large personality on Facebook. And then as soon as I left Hong Kong, I kind of put that behind me. And But now I use Twitter a lot. I'm, I'm obviously in Australia as well. Um, but yeah, I'm on Twitter a yeah. lot. Have you been concerned about getting cancelled or censored? During the Hong Kong, Hong Kong protest, was it something you thought about? Yeah, of course, of course. That yeah, that was it, 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 when you when you were when we were posting on Facebook. Yeah, that they they were doing a lot of um, um, a lot of that. The police were closing us down and stuff like this, and and like you have to be careful what you wrote about. So especially, I was writing about um, the, the the hardcore protesters. So yeah, it was it was dangerous time. It was definitely dangerous yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. It was another life. Yeah. yeah another life. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, used to, I'm used to being like, you know, at the front, and, and, and so I don't mind pushing things that are that are believing. Yeah. So but, I haven't. But now you have a protocol which fixes this, right? Exactly. No. Yeah. I mean, like, I've been waiting to to get off those social media things for a long time. I, I still think, you know, Nostra's got a long way to go. You know, it's really is like, you know, like, but it's it's the only thing that's you know everyone else has tried to reinvent social media on the front end but not on the back end what Nostra is doing is reinventing the back end and that's exciting that's super exciting yeah and, and like communities here because we're all so con connected the stuff that Nostra can do is really exciting you know everyone has like for each road everyone has whatsapp groups where, where we organize yeah. stuff yeah. and eventually we'll be able to sh w w once the, the platforms are really you know, user friendly we'll be able to shift people and people will shift fast once the platforms are up in, in, in communities like this boom they'll shift really quick they're not quite there yet but once they're there boom. And, and like here we build those communities because we do our own water we do our, our own electricity we maintain our own roads you know so you kind of have to have a community you have to have the communication mm -hmm. the government kind of finds it okay you know of course you have to follow rules but you know it, 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 yeah. it really builds the community more or less automatically and bitcoin fits in well and Nostra fits in also very well mm -hmm. okay. okay well fine yeah I'm, I'm like a really practical guy so i understand that not your keys not your car i understand that and it, it makes lots of sense but also for me the future of bitcoin has to be that everyone can use it in a way that they 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 need to right so i'm not like an extremist where like you know if you you have to be, you have to be fully you know like off the system what i would like to see is systems that really work for people and what we saw with you know like things like celsius and 3ac and uh, ftx is that the system failed they promised to create a system where we, you know which was better and what they did is they just basically failed at that so that was really disappointing for me to see that and I hope that you know what will come from the future is, is a future where like everybody having all their Bitcoin just on the, hot, uh, on the cold wallet is not going to be the future. Bitcoin needs to be working and, yeah. being, and moving and being, so we haven't got there and met hopefully you know last year. Excuse really me, but does that mean to having it on a cold wallet? Because not everybody understands that. Okay, so you know, having your Bitcoin taken out of the system and and untouchable. What we need to have is is, is our systems where you can, you know, someone like me, I only own Bitcoin. I don't have it. I sold all my shares. I sold. We crashed up all our pensions. We don't have anything else. So when we were building our school, we made loans using our Bitcoin collateral. So there has to be systems in the future that help people to be able to interface down, because, right? 
So that's the kind of the future that I'm looking for, is a future where, yeah, it's, it's underpinned by Bitcoin and there are, there are systems that are, that are built that really help people to live and be able to function without, without having to necessarily sell their Bitcoin. And last year proved that there's not, definitely. So, you know, I, I, feel, I feel like that's the kind of future I'm looking for because, I, you know, we're not all Matt, Matt O'Dell and we you know, can all pull our stuff off like that and then you know, just like protect ourselves. And, you know, I don't know where he's getting his money from and how he's interacting, but, you know, we live as much on the Bitcoin standards as we want and it's still not 100%. It's still pretty hard to do. So we do need the future needs systems and maybe this is why Nostrica and Nostra is so important because we need systems that can be built on Bitcoin that are fair and not centralized. So that's my that's my dream. Hans, what would you say? Yeah, I I, I, I would keep it very short. Yeah, not, mm -hmm. not your uh, not your keys, not your coins. I look a year back. That is uh, that is proved to be true. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, before a system is built, and I would put it in there, then uh, I think we need need quite a bit more time. And I uh, agree with uh, Richard also that um, the future for Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Or now I'm already going to your next question, right? That's yes, of course. Okay, you have no, to ask the question first, you can yeah. cut it out, right? I, It's no problem, you can talk, because yeah. I can cut that, it's not yeah. a problem. But yeah, the future for Bitcoin, what do you think about that? What does it hold for you? Yeah, I think we just have to use it, and, and if I make it, uh, I just make it very small for myself, you know, I'm like, uh, at the age where I can spend my pension, and I just transfer it every month blindly, I buy Bitcoin at any price, and we just spend it here in Uvita. Just to, you know, of course we also hodl part, but you know, we, 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 we have to spread it around, and, and, and you know, that, that just feels good. And, and if more people do that, and if we create more, you call it citadels, where we do that, then it's, I, I think it's just the best money system in the world and, and the future for Bitcoin. I think if you buy Bitcoin, I sometimes say you buy a part of the new banking system of the world. We, we, the last two, three weeks has shown us that the, the safest securities in the world, like treasuries, are toilet paper. And, and so if you buy Bitcoin, you buy uh, a piece of the new banking system in the world and, and part of that is that you can buy Bitcoin and then spend it so that everybody gets Bitcoin. I mean, mm -hmm. there has to be a, a point in the, there is a point in the, in the Bitcoiners journey where, first of all, they need to learn to hodl, which is not easy. And then once they've, once they've learned to hodl, then they need to learn to, to share it. And you have to look at your stash, how, however big that stash is. And you have to understand that if you really, really want Bitcoin to become the thing that you want it to be, you have to start spreading that around, right? You have to start sharing that, right? And whether that's like, you know, 1%, 5% or whatever, how committed are you to making this the reality? And the reality is that it has to be moved around. You have to give it to other people, you know. And the systems are in place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lightning is fantastic. Yeah, as, exactly. as I said before, it's it's yeah, it's the exactly. mouse moment yeah. of Bitcoin. Uh, Spending Bitcoin. is next level hodling. Yeah. Definitely. And, and 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 that's where you know places like El Salvador and also if you come down here to Costa Rica, um, you, people can do that in a really beautiful space and, and really enjoy themselves and feel good about the fact that oh my god I'm actually giving other people my Bitcoin and I thought I was going to keep it forever and, um, no. yeah, and then they have to copy that model and do it at home uh, yeah. you know what we do here I think a lot of small communities citadels how you call it we yeah, do it can. it will take time but we can do it we prove it yeah that's our dream our dream is like people will copy what what's happening in El Salvador because we copied what it has yeah we, well we didn't copy but we just went okay we want that and we want people to do that. And you know, just by identifying your community, identifying the gatekeepers who who, who hold the, hold the spaces in your community, and getting those involved, that's how you start to build your citadel. You know, is that's that's you know, and then what happens is all these citadels will just join up together. 
That's mm. that's the future of like how how the space. There's not going you know to rely on you know like making it legal or stuff like that. That's not how this is going to happen. It's mm. grassroots. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's going to happen anyhow. You know, <laughs> yeah. for us, for it's us, here, right? for us, yeah. the projects. Are, you know, the, are the most important, right? I mean, it's, we need the developers and we need the, all the, the user experience, but the projects are the most expo- important. Mm. When we spoke in our, we've spoken now, um, El Salvador at the adopting Bitcoin conference, and the last thing I said was, you know, I want to come here next year and I want it to be like 50 projects, not six, mm. or 50 projects here, or 100 projects, or even a conference that's just projects. Just projects comes together and we have a big conference and we all share mm-hmm. about like h- how we're doing it in one from every you know all over the world, right? That that's how it's gonna work. That's how Bitcoin will you know become like mass adoption, right? Through all the projects. Okay, another question. <laughs> I'm sorry. <It's laughs> fine. Okay, it's one fine. more then. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. No, it's fine. It's three more. <laughs> three, three more. No, just okay. It's like the sayings, be your own bank. Just two sentences. True or false? your own bank yeah I mean Bitcoin jungle is a bank don't let the government know that but what we do is we 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 hold the, the, the money and we do instant settlements for all the people that want to spend on the thing so at zero fees at zero fees so in, in reality in reality Bitcoin jungle is a bank so yeah don't let the Costa Rican government know that okay uh, so we believe in that <laughs> It's um, Bitcoin fixes this, of course, I have to ask, because everybody knows that, and so true or false, and what the hell does it fix? <laughs> I think because Bitcoin is, is really going to the fundamentals, I'm going to get really spiritual on you and stuff, but humans have a really uh, um, toxic way of sharing value, and this has gone on through like millennia. We don't know how to share value in, in, a, in, in a non-toxic way, and because Bitcoin, Bitcoin fixes that, it fixes everything else because it's fixing like the root cause of stuff, right? So, I mean, it's a roundabout, circuitous way how Bitcoin fixes this, but you know, when people say war or financial system, how, how can it fix that? But you know, it, 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 because you're fixing the root of the problem, the root of the problem is that when I do an interaction with you, right, it's not a pure interaction because there's somebody else involved in the transaction. So it's a toxic reaction, it's a toxic relationship. So once we fix that, right, everything else starts to just fall into place. So does Bitcoin fix everything? Yes. It that was such a wonderful answer. I just have to breathe. <laughs> Because now I get the feeling finally I understand it. And if I understand it, probably the people outside understand that too. So, yeah, fix, Bitcoin fixes it. What always amazes me also on, on the... On the um, conference we were in El Salvador you hear what people are building on Bitcoin like use cases really use cases uh, I, I, I remember a guy f- uh, where he connected electricity companies with miners where they put lightning in between and they pay the electricity bill every 10 minutes yeah. so the electricity bill of the miner goes down and, and, and the electricity company doesn't Uh, run very big risk with very high uh, outstanding, uh, outstanding bills. It's amazing. And they build it on Bitcoin and nobody ever thought about it and these are young, very bright people that do that. You know, where they say Bitcoin is using too much energy and actually it's a battery for, you know, they, 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 for, for, for uh, it peaks in, in it. actually it's the opposite and they're building it on Bitcoin so Bitcoin, the use cases for Bitcoin which we don't even know will fix this there's so many nice use cases okay. so this was my last question actually Good. because you, you more than answered everything I just wanted to know and I thank you very very much it was such a beautiful talk no problem And ich hoffe, everything comes out fine. Ich hoffe, das Mikro hält. Ich hoffe, der Wind ist nicht zu stark. Ich hoffe, I don't know, whatever. Oh, we have Look the where people. we are. Yeah. Not yes. Look where we are. <laughs> genau. Vielleicht komme ich auch noch mal zurück und ähm, frage euch dann noch mal in einem Jahr oder so, wie es gelaufen ist. Gerne. Immer Aber will. Happy about that. Thank you. Thank you, Berta. No worries. Happy to talk.